Good afternoon, Right Side Broadcasting Network viewers. I'm Matthew Alvarez. We're here in Dayton, Ohio, alongside another great patriot, Vanessa Broussard, right now. Vanessa, tell us your thoughts about the uh, area. It's windy. It's really <laughs> windy today, but that's okay. Uh, the line is long, as always, at a Trump event. And the people here, they're excited. We all bought uh, hats, so we'll be putting ours on here shortly. So don't mind us with hats on because it's very windy, but the, the sun is out, the sky's blue, uh, perfect weather, and we're at Wright Brothers Aero, and we're expecting Trump Force One to be landing here pretty soon. And so it's going to be a great day as President Trump stomps for Bernie Marino for the Senate here in Ohio. That's right, and the U.S. Air Force Museum is actually about 10 minutes from this location. I uh, actually checked it out earlier this morning, uh, posted later on Truth Social, but uh, there was the Air Force One there from uh, JFK all the way up to uh, President Clinton. Uh, pretty cool stuff to see uh, that here in Dayton. Of course, the home of where the Wright brothers did so many good works for uh, the airplane. And then uh, uh, those of you watching out there in North Carolina and Kitty Hawk, of course, the first flight back in 1903. So a lot of history here in Dayton, Ohio. It will be great, as you just mentioned. Trump Force One to land right here. We'll see that live on Right Side Broadcasting Network. Yes, absolutely. And we want to show you the crowds because the lines are long. People got here in the early morning hours, if not yesterday, to start lining up to get front row seats like they always do. It's the same situation every time. People come early to make sure that they can get in. And so we're going to whip the camera around to kind of show you uh, what it looks like out here and all of the people uh, ready to See President Trump, J.D. Vance, of course, from Ohio, is expected to be here today. Uh, and they're hoping to get Bernie Marino elected into the Senate on Tuesday when Ohio votes. So, Ohio, you vote on Tuesday. Make sure you bring out your friends, your family, your neighbors, your church members, and go vote Bernie Marino Senate. All right. Lots of kids out here today. Hello. Is this your first event to see President Trump? Yes. How excited are you? I'm very excited. What's your name and how old are you? I'm Naomi and I'm 11 years old. Awesome. Hi, what's your name? My name's Faith. And how old are you? I'm nine. Nine years old. What's your name and how old are you? Uh, my name is Edwin and I'm seven years old. All right, and this is the future of America right here. Parents, good job bringing them out and making sure they uh, Learn some history today. Why do you love President Trump? Because he's so cool. <laughs> he has cool hair too, right? Yeah. yeah. Um, he, like, okay, I don't really know how to say it, but, like, he's just really a good guy. He is really a good guy. We agree. Thank y'all for being here. Enjoy it. Have a great time. Bye. I love, bye. I love seeing the kids out here. More kids here. Hello. Yeah. First time seeing President Trump? Yes. What's your name and where are you from? Um, Indiana. What's your name? Aubrey. Aubrey. All your siblings here? <laughs> yeah. Oh, there's another one. Wow. Like, it's it's birthday. Happy birthday. What's your name? How old are you today? Uh, I'm eight and my name's Cameron. What a great birthday present to see President Trump. How awesome is that? You're the cool kid today. Yeah. You sure are, huh? Yes. First time to see the President? Not my first time, but their first time, yeah. Awesome. We'll have a happy birthday, best birthday present ever. Bye. Go Trump. Go Trump. <laughs> That's awesome stuff, Vanessa. I mean, it's great to see uh, the younger generation out here. And before we put that hat on, I wanted to show it to the, the people here. Obviously very windy, so we're just going to throw the hats on at this point. Uh, but we uh, also wanted to thank one of our great sponsors, the Birch Gold Group. Uh, as you know, the situation right now with the devaluation of the dollar, it's happening uh, at light speed. Unfortunately, uh, that's happening because of those BRICS nations and many other countries that are trying to use their local currency. So why not have a backup plan, a tax-sheltered IRA? You can Text Trump to triple ninety eight. Now we're talking about gold, silver, and precious metals. Always good, Vanessa, when it comes to the fact that you have to have some peace of mind out there, especially while they're trying to devalue the dollar. Absolutely. Uh, a lot of people are struggling right now. They're wondering about their future. And this is when the experts can come in and help you and, and turn your IRAs, your 401ks into precious gold. Uh, let them get you on the right track. Uh, 
that can come up with a plan that's just for you. So it may not be the same plan your neighbor's on or your friend's on or someone uh, in the next state over is on. It's going to be a plan that's right for you, your budget, what you want to put in, and they can give you some peace of mind. So contact the Birch Gold Group. Text the word Trump to 989898. Who, you have, who do you have here? This is cool. Well, it is cool. I mean, could you put, turn the hat around? Let's see what it says there. I, I wonder, I guess. <laughs> I can't see under there. There you go. Where'd you get that hat, man? Uh, I got it online. What, what are some of your concerns right now for uh, the country? Uh, well, let's, let's take this off and talk, do a serious interview here. <laughs> no, but seriously, what, is the, uh, what are your concerns about the country right now? Yeah, safety. I mean, that's more than anything. Uh, I like to be able to afford to eat in five more years. So I think there's a lot of people out there that can't. So... It's not going to get any better. We don't get something changed. Right. What, is it, what did it feel like when you were uh, under the Trump administration 2016 to 2020 and then now under the Biden administration? What, tell us the difference of the feeling. Uh, it's polar opposite. It's the polar opposite. I don't, I, don't think, uh, I don't think anybody's happy about what's going on. They're not talking about it, but they don't want to talk about it. They don't want to get confronted. They don't want to deal with that. But it's completely the opposite. Everybody was happy. Everybody was working. I mean, there were some people that weren't happy. Obviously, they were all over the news, but we're burning places down and everything else. But we fear that that's probably going to happen again if he does get back in. Right. All right. Well, thank you for talking with us. Enjoy that hat, man. <laughs> nice hat, man. Vanessa, as he was just mentioning, I mean, people are just upset at this point, you know, of the current administration. I was thinking about that, you know, the concerns that Americans have right now and what it felt like, you know, under a Trump administration. So how happy would you be? I mean, what would it really be like for you and your family, Vanessa, just in general? For a Trump administration? Oh, yeah. I mean, everything's better. You don't have to worry about I live in Texas, so the border, the immigration is a huge concern there. Um, also, to go to the grocery store and buy groceries for my family now, you're paying triple the prices as you did three or four years ago. And so that alone. So safety at our border, close the border, uh, being able to afford groceries and gas and electricity and you name it everything life in general would you know be better and so it's just you know our, our military our you name it go down the list everything's better under trump we could be here all day talking about what all is better it's everything exactly you name it it's better exactly and, and vanessa and i will get to uh, agenda 47 and all the policy issues uh, that president trump is, is talking about and what it would look like if president trump wins and what that would mean for our country and we'll be getting to that in a little bit but you know the crowd here is awesome and uh, i love ohio o-h-i-o yeah. uh, the buckeyes of course uh, in columbus ohio uh, also the the motto of this great state is uh with god all things are possible how awesome is that can't get any truth truer than that absolutely and that's another thing with trump you know it's going back on a trump administration he kept god first look at christmas under the obama administration uh they were wanting americans to say happy holidays president trump came in and said no we're going to keep christ in christmas so we are one nation under god the president firmly believes that and he wants to stick with that and uh, Congratulations to the great state of Ohio who has that as their motto as well. That's what we need to stick with. Yeah, exactly. And, and I couldn't say it better. Let's take a live look here at the uh, crowd. I mean, you can see, Vanessa, just lines of people right now. Uh, thousands of people will be here uh, we're right near the Dayton International Airport. So uh, it's kind of fitting uh, that we're at this uh, fixed base operation and FBO, the Wright Brothers Arrow. Uh, it, it is an outdoor event, and we know it's kind of cold, but it's... Uh, not too cold but it's very very windy it's very windy you see everybody with their hats on because uh we look like you know remember the trolls where their hair stuck up <laughs> yeah. yeah that's what we all look like if we don't have a hat or a hoodie on so um very windy out here today but it's a beautiful day here in dayton ohio as we start making our way uh yes you can tell by the flags i'm gonna walk with you you can come with me uh you can tell by the flags just how windy it is today and for the vendors they've had to secure uh, their merchandise because everything was blowing away. So uh, very windy, but that's not stopping the crowd from showing up here today. And you can see as we continue to walk. Hello, how are you? I'm just dandy. How are What's you? your name and where are you from? My name's Rusty and I live in Cincinnati, Ohio. Cincinnati, Ohio. Have you voted yet? I have not. Tuesday's the day. It is? Okay. Well, I guess we're going to have to make our minds up here in the next couple of days, huh? Yes. Uh, first time to see President Trump? Yes, ma'am. What do you love most about the president? I think that uh, 
I think he actually tells the truth. And for a, a, a rich man, I don't know that that's the most. I don't know if you'd really expect that, but I think he's been more truthful with us than most of the professional politicians have been in my lifetime. Yeah, he's an outsider, and an outsider understands the people. Yes, he does. I agree with you there. All right. We don't want to hold you up in line because the line is moving right now. Thanks so much for talking with us. Hello. Good to see you. So, yes, you know, it's the same thing you hear from different people, Matthew. Everyone loves President Trump. They love that he loves the American people, uh, and that's why they come to support him. Yeah, exactly. And it's outside of, uh, you know, his personality and how, how cool of a guy he is. It's, it's a real situation that we're dealing with this in this nation. When you, when you start to deal with uh, the possibility of your freedoms to be infringed upon, whether that's the First Amendment, the Second Amendment, uh, you know, you've got you, the third. Exactly. Let's go to this guy. I mean, let's talk a little bit about that. Um, what are your thoughts, man? The fact that they are trying to infringe on that stuff. That's fucking bullshit. No, 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 bro. No, yeah, yeah, yeah. No, no. Oh, Not going to roll like that, oh, but... My bad, my bad. Um, I, I don't think it's a good idea um, because, like, it's our rights, you know? Like, why are you trying to infringe on our rights? There's no reason for it. No. Uh, so outside of... Uh, I was just saying, outside of President Trump, you know, his personality's a great guy. He's fun, right? Mm -hmm. But what is your concern about the country right now? Um, probably... The spending on, uh, what is it, $200 billion on Ukraine, I think that's uh, ridiculous. Um, I don't like how he got out of Afghanistan. Um, I, like, I don't like how his borders are just completely open. Um, I just don't think it's right at all. And the fact that President you know, Trump is saying he's going to... Oh, there's, there's so many things that are wrong with Joe Biden and, and the government right now. And it's not just Democrats. It's re some Republicans, too, that vote on this crap. Um, like uh, they just voted for a what was it like a three hundred billion dollar deal that was like yeah that, that was full of just crap um, you know our gas is three dollars and forty cents it was at five dollars he goes and uh, you know he says that like inflation was here then it's at eight percent but it hasn't moved like it's just stupid crap like that that I think like people just are finally realizing like you have more black people now finally waking up and realizing that like yeah i mean uh, my bad like they they we like, i'm black too so i mean like they're finally everybody's finally waking up to you know the democratic party and how how ridiculous they are 100 percent first of all sir where did you get this this hoodie man i was in the parking lot and i seen it i was like okay trump finally gets some swag about himself <laughs> you know so i, I like it i like the lettering so i like the, the, the so my hat and that that would go good okay yeah the presidential uh, seal on there. oh man yeah you got money let me borrow your wallet <laughs> <laughs> you're the one that i guarantee that this was more expensive than my hat buddy <laughs> no it was probably about 25 bucks okay, this is 20. <laughs> <laughs> no but for real though so he was just mentioning you know all all people let's be real everybody no matter who you who you are is, is supporting someone that is for freedom are they not they are yeah I, I'm, I'm always about freedom you know it should never be no uh stipulations on freedom you know and i mean i, I don't really like support either party i just like to come you know get a little experience in there see what he's talking about i actually like trump a lot you know i don't have no animosity or anything like that towards trump yeah, politician. yeah, yeah I, politician. I, just, I just think he's a good dude you know he's just somebody to speak his mind and people misread him sometimes and i like what you just said sir you just said that he is not a politician no, he's not and a politician at all and like now all of a sudden like all these all these allegations and all these court dates and everything like they just pop up out of nowhere they could have done this in 2020 2021 probably nobody would say anything about it but now all of a sudden in 2023 2024 he's going up to court you know he's getting written off the ballot and stuff which supreme court i think they said they can't do that i mean you literally can't do that and yet they still don't try and you know uh screw him over on the election I mean, I, I think it's completely ridiculous. No matter what party you are, you're at, Democrat or Republican, you shouldn't be taken off a ballot. I mean, that's ridiculous. Exactly. And, and the fact that uh, he's an outsider and that's what we're looking for. Like the bar has been set, hasn't it, for, for the future of our country when it comes to who is sitting at 1600 Pennsylvania Avenue. I, I agree 100 percent with you that the bar definitely has been set. And I feel like whoever get in there, I just want them to do what's best for the people. You know, and I feel like Trump is going to do his best for the people. But it's not like this man knows the answers. Amen. Thanks, Thank, you so Thank you so much. Thank you. Don't forget to vote on Tuesday. All right. So 
more people who love the president as we continue going along the line here. And if we'll look to the right, this is this is where the merchandise area is. Just giving you an idea. You have hats, you have shirts, you have pins, you have flags. Look, summertime, spring, it's all coming up. If you have a boat, uh, just want to fly this out at your house underneath your American flag. Tons of flags for President Trump. Freedom loving flags. So, uh, hats, teddy bears, scarves, you name it. This is the place to come get your merchandise. So, they're always lined up at a President Trump rally. Glasses. A lot of fun. You can spend a lot of money out here on all of your, your Trump merchandise. So we're continuing to see the line as people uh, walk up. The president doesn't speak for another couple of hours, but we have a long line of speakers. The pre-program starts at 2.30 Eastern. Right Side Broadcasting Network will be here covering everything for you live. All right. And I always love seeing these hats. I'm going to try to stop and talk to these guys right here. I don't want to scare you. Hello. Love the hats. Love the hair. It's a little windy out here. Did you have to spray your hair today? Oh, no. Oh. Looks good. That's that's the dawn look. Absolutely. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> just let that blow in the breeze. That's how we like it. Just let it go. Hey, so what's your name? Where are you from? I'm, uh, my name is Richard Troop, and I'm really from South Dakota. Uh, I moved here, so. That. President Trump's going to be stumping for Bernie Marino today, a uh, big MAGA uh, candidate for Senate. Uh, tell us about how important it is for the people of Ohio to get out and vote for Bernie. Oh, they have to. Absolutely have to get, you know, Republican all the way. <laughs> Absolutely. Yeah. yeah. So have you all voted yet? Not yet. Not yet. On Tuesday. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Bring your friends, bring your family, bring a group of people. Absolutely. Absolutely. Yes, thank you for stopping here and talking uh, to us. Matthew, I love being out here with the crowd. Always a great time. It always is a great time. And, uh, you know, it's a packed house inside, and we're seeing a lot of people uh, out there as well come, come this way. So it's, it's pretty awesome stuff. Uh, we do want to thank a, a great sponsor right now, Prepper Beef. Obviously, Americans are concerned about their security, but also when it comes to food security. Think about it. I think I was actually just talking about this with uh, my family the other day about the bioengineered junk that people put in our food. So we got to have a, a plan where it's, you know, people that are uh, patriot owned businesses and, and knowing that there are no MR, MRNA, you know, in, yeah. injections into any kind of, uh, of our products. So prepper beef. Uh, new on the scene uh, with us here at Right Side Broadcasting Network, but they're not just giving you some of the basic uh, kind of beef. We're talking uh, the uh, store, the long-term storage ribeye and New York strip sirloin and tenderloin. Uh, it has a 25-year uh, shelf life. Yeah, and I think that's uh, what's key to remember: long-term shelf life, 25-year shelf life. So what you just mentioned, the ribeye, the New York strip, the sirloin, the tenderloin. I was actually on their website last night. You can look it up on your screen right now, prepperbeef.com. And I was thinking, okay, what all do I need to put in my cart? Because what if there's another pandemic? What if? And there's nothing wrong with just having this in your house stored for 25 years, <laughs> just in case. And it's perfect. You can't go wrong with it. So definitely add this to your cart. And when you do, put in the RSBN code at prepperbeef.com. Um, you'll get a discount on your order. But uh, I'm a Texas girl. They're a Texas company, Texas-based, uh, raised cattle with no mRNA injection. So this is definitely the company to go to. Definitely. I mean, that's 25% off an order. So use that promo code RSBN. You just mentioned Texas. Yes. I'm looking for those uh, cowboy and cowgirl hats that you said you weren't going to wear. I said, I said, I, I said, you got to go wear, a, a, you got to wear a cowgirl hat. She says. I can't do it, not today, because I was worried, too, that it would fly off, and this is more secure. But it's really windy out here. So, uh, yes, I <laughs> love my cowboy boots and my cowboy hats and my buckles and all the things. But today, I think the cowboy hat would have fallen off. All right, well, when we walk by over here, we might have to still try one on for you. Okay, well, <laughs>
So anyway, so uh, Right Side Broadcasting Network, thank you guys so much for joining us here. This is uh, probably a good time to uh, check out our newsletter. It's rsbnetwork.com backslash newsletter. Uh, get a lot of uh, exclusive content and uh, interviews, that kind of thing, uh, in your email inbox as we uh, take a live look here uh, at the crowd. Uh, you can see, I mean, the doors open, what, the hour and a half ago. Right. Uh, so a lot of people are in there. Uh, it's kind of nice to see a, a full-on outdoor rally. I know it's kind of windy today, and I thought that it might be like in a hangar. But still, at the end of the day, we're going to see Trump Force One probably circle the crowd and, and land and uh, you know, land right in behind the stage, which will be an epic, epic backdrop, Vanessa. Oh, yes. I have been at an event where Trump Force One lands and the people can spot that plane when it's just like a little dot in the sky they know it's coming and they're you know all looking up eyes to the sky phones out and they play the theme song from top gun and it's just it makes you just get, it gives you chills it makes the hair stand up on your arms because it's just so magical is the only yeah. word i can think of yeah. about how amazing uh that feeling is when president trump uh comes in and, and the people spot that plane uh, when it's just a little dot in the sky, there's those cow cowboy hats. All right, I'll do it for Texas. I'll do it for you, Texas. All right, so Vanessa's from Texas. This is the hat that I said she should have got. There she goes. All right. Houston, okay. I'm Beaumont, so not far. All right, so yes, but see, it's already... Oh, it's already so, Yeah, so that's why I couldn't go with the cowboy hat today. But next time, next time. Next time. Good stuff. I could just go after the show, get one, yeah, and, and yeah. That will be good. Have it for next time. So the, uh, the Wright-Patterson Air Force Base, as many of you know, uh, here in Ohio, it employs about 25,000 employees. It's one of the largest employers in the state uh, on the base and free to the public as well. Uh, it was that U.S. Air Force Museum. If you've never seen it, it is quite the gem. Uh, again, if you're uh, on Truth Social, at Matthew Alvarez, I'm going to post later um, a couple pictures or videos from earlier today. It was, it was really awesome uh, to see all of the aircraft there, military aircraft, uh, Air Force One from, uh, for, for eight presidents from JFK to, to Clinton. So, um, But you know what? I was inside that Air Force One, and I'll tell you, Trump Force One on the inside actually looked a little bit obviously nicer <laughs> in some ways. You know? Absolutely. Everything uh, the Trump family does everything president trump has you know i'm sure trump force one has a lot of gold plated everything yeah, no, totally. inside so uh yeah i can't wait to see uh, trump force one today and um matthew just mentioned uh some photos can't wait to see those from you You actually showed me a couple of those photos on the way here that looked really amazing yeah. um, but while we're walking we want to remind you that we'll have a list of speakers, long list of speakers here for you momentarily when the pre-programming starts. President Trump will then land and take the stage here uh, in Dayton, Ohio, stumping for Bernie Marino for Senate, a huge MAGA candidate. MAGA first, America first. It's a tight race in the primaries. There's three Republicans running, going up against a Democrat incumbent in November. So we need to make sure that Bernie Marino who is a MAGA candidate endorsed by President Trump, makes it to November and then, of course, wins in November, Matthew. Yeah, definitely. And so on Tuesday, we'll get to this a little bit later, uh, the primary, there are five states uh, taking part in that primary, including Ohio. So we're going to uh, head towards the uh, entrance here at this event. Uh, but you mentioned uh, that we're here in Dayton, Ohio, right? So it was here in Dayton uh, that the Wright brothers, of course, worked on creating the first airplane to later have the first flight in Kitty Hawk, North Carolina in 1903. So what a better place to hold an outdoor rally here at the airport uh, to see Trump Force One. So back to that primary information. Yeah, I mean, obviously, OHIO Ohio will have theirs on Tuesday. Uh, Florida, uh, Arizona, and we'll get to the other states and, and get in there here soon to look at some more of the polling that's happening, and, uh, latest Rasmussen polls and, and others out there to see that not only in the polls, not only boots in the ground with all the people, uh, and on social media, you're seeing a massive uh, swell of support for uh, the freedom movement, for, for liberty. Uh, and the leader of MAGA is Donald J. Trump at the end of the day. So 
Uh, so it's going to be great to see uh, everyone here and see President Trump show up a little bit later. Um, this is what? This has been a week since his last uh, event. You guys were in Georgia. Georgia last week. Yes, we were there in Georgia in Marjorie Taylor Greene's uh, district. And it was a huge turnout inside and out standing room only overflow crowd outside uh, the arena where we were um of course everyone there was uh, just wanting to remember and honor the life of lake and riley who was murdered by an illegal immigrant uh, president biden uh, still has not said her name representative marjorie taylor green urging him in the state of the union yelling out at him to say her name and uh, when he went to say it finally he said it wrong he said Lincoln Riley. So in Georgia, a lot of si signs, Matthew, of people holding up her picture, say her name, remember this beautiful college student, a nursing student who uh, lost her life at the hands of an illegal immigrant who should not have been here uh, in the first place. And uh, we'll go over it later, but there's been more crime in the last week of uh, people, you know, getting raped, uh, assaulted by illegal immigrants people who should not be here and so um georgia that was mainly the focus there a lot of talk about um illegal immigration what's going on at the border and also the northern border you know we talk a lot about the southern border but the northern border has its own share of of illegal immigrants coming across as well with that being said i would like to as we look at the crowd i want to tell you a story about what happened to me last night i took an uber ride here in Dayton and the driver Matthew was from Pakistan and he was really really nice guy we had a great conversation the day before so two days ago he just got his US citizenship he's been here in the US for nine years and finally got his US citizenship and that's the way it's done um, the legal way I congratulated him, told him welcome home officially, great job, and that's what it's all about. It's the people who come here and they work and they want to live the American dream and they want to contribute to society and they love America and this man has been working at it for nine years and he finally got his U.S. citizenship and I couldn't be more happy for him, but it's the illegal immigrants who should not be here. Exactly, and if you remember in Richmond, Virginia, uh, when we were actually in Richmond together, uh, there was someone from Sri Lanka who was really, really excited to talk to us and be a, a supporter for, for freedom and for President Trump. And he said the same thing, that he is a legal um, immigrant, so very happy to be in the country. And that's obviously the way to, the way to do it. Uh, as we know, there are IDs needed for all sorts of things right out there. Well, interestingly enough, Vanessa, um, voter ID and then uh, an actual ID at the border. Like we, we don't even know who the people are, right? And then how about a voter ID, just to, whoever is voting, that they have an actual address in that precinct, in that county, so you know people know exactly who it is. So we have no issues with a bunch of other people on the voter rolls that haven't been cleared off or, or anything like that, um, you know, voting. So. A lot being done. You know, there's a lot of things being done for election integrity out there to prevent election fraud. We know that. Um, but hopefully this year, uh, as President Trump's campaign has put out, too big to rig, we're hoping that uh, will be what happens and uh, get our country back. It's it's very simple stuff. I mean, we're not talking rocket science out here, right? It's a, it's freedom of speech and uh, freedom of the press and freedom of religion and, and uh, not infringing on our Second Amendment rights, that kind of thing. Absolutely. It would sound pretty easy, right? Just right. to keep our freedoms, but the Democrats are definitely making it Making it hard these days, but that's all right. We can see here, as we do every rally, every event, that the people are fed up. They want this country saved, and that's just what we're going to have to do. Too big to rig. Make the crowd so big at the polls that it's going to make it hard for the Democrats to try to cheat this time. So uh, get out and vote. Make sure your voices are heard. President Trump is already the presumptive nominee uh, for the Republicans going into November. He has to be voted on, uh, confirmed, actually, at the RNC in July. Uh, but, yeah, we're well on our way. And uh, now he is here again stomping for Bernie Marino. So we have President Trump with the delegates needed to be the nominee for president on the Republican side. Now we got to get these candidates in, uh, these senators, these representatives who are MAGA. So when he wins and he gets back in office... 
He has the support needed by these wonderful representatives and senators who will back him and make sure Americans are put first. Exactly. And to your point, the presumptive, presumptive nominee, we know President Trump is, is winning in, in every state when it comes to the primary, uh, except for the swamp, of course, in D.C. But there's another level of government when it comes to the state and local government races that are happening across America, including uh, you know Senator Marino here in Ohio. So just because President Trump already is the presumptive nominee, go ahead and show your support and go ahead and vote uh, the conservative way and vote red and, and vote for uh, someone that is uh, that did great between 2016 and 2020 and then uh, would do great again under a second administration. But my point is, there are a lot of other races locally, uh, especially in my home state of Pennsylvania as well, that I have to uh, go go to the polls uh, and, and not kind of think, OK, well, President Trump has a huge lead. We don't really need to do anything now. So how important is that for people to just kind of really keep 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 the Trump train going? Absolutely. And President Trump will talk about that as well when he's on stage. He'll say, you know, if you look at the poll numbers and I'm ahead, pretend that I'm not, that I'm down a couple of percentage points, go out and vote in huge numbers. So even though he's earned the delegates needed uh, to be the nominee for president, on the Republican side, we still want that wave. We want a tsunami, so keep it going, Ohio, and make sure you go out and vote on Tuesday. I want to turn the camera around because I always like showing people this because we talk about it a lot, the security measures in place. Uh, we always want to uh, give a shout-out and big thank you to the Secret Service, our local police department, sheriff's office. Um, do a great job in making sure everyone is safe here. But these are the mags that people go through, and it's kind of like going through airport screenings. Um, the Secret Service, they go through uh, your purses, your bags, um, your wallets, making sure um, everyone is following the rules. And so you can see there's uh, five today. And so when you have thousands of people here at a rally, with five mags to go through, it takes a little bit of time. And so uh, that's why people come early. They stand in line. It takes time for Secret Service to make sure uh, that everyone is safe and sound when they enter these properties. Oh, there's, there you go. I knew you would like that. What did, what did he say? FJB. Well, there you go. <laughs> Let, yeah, nicely censored. Thank you. <laughs> Let's go, Brandon, right? So uh, you're looking live here in Dayton, Ohio. Raise your hand. Who's from Indiana? Tennessee. Tennessee in the house right here. <laughs> Where in Tennessee? Nashville. Nashville. There you go. Always fun. Yeah, Nashville. Music City, USA right there. So, yeah, we got people from Tennessee, uh, obviously Ohio, Indiana. You're looking live here on Right Side Broadcasting Network. This is Matthew Alvarez and Vanessa Broussard. We're about to enter in to the... Uh, the stage area here in a little bit. One of us will go in. We'll see how that rolls. <laughs> we'll just, it depends on like who we interview to see who goes next. But uh, there is a, another great sponsor that we want to talk about. It's uh, Tax Network USA. The peace of mind that we can have going into, especially a tax season right now, uh, Tax Network USA, you see that information on your screen, go ahead, reach out to them, get that, that help, especially if there's any back taxes or any issues that you're dealing with, go ahead and just reach out to them. Uh, it's a great, great service. And they've actually brought back uh, about a, bill, a billion dollars to help out with the American people. I mean, uh, a great group there, Tax Network USA. Yeah, go to TNUSA.com. Uh, you can get all the information there. They are specialized, and they do uh, cover all 50 states. So no matter where you live, they can help you out. So make sure that you give them a try. I know a lot of people are dealing with um, finances right now. How am I going to pay my taxes, back taxes, whatever the case may be. Tax Network USA has helped save its clients over $1 billion in back taxes. That's a billion with a B. $1 billion in back taxes. So they can definitely help you out. Give them a shout. That information, that 1-800 number is on your screen. Also, TNUSA.com. TNUSA.com. Get with the experts at Tax Network USA. I was just thinking, uh, Vanessa, as I'm looking at the, the people here, that uh, there was somebody I met in Pennsylvania. His name's Jay. If you're watching, what's up, man? Uh, he is a big Right Side Broadcasting Network viewer, uh, you know, big Trump supporter. So, Jay, if you're watching, hello. Uh, yeah, so let's see if we can talk to some people here. What's up, guys? Come on over. All right, anybody else? Well, that's happened sometimes. Come on over. How you doing? What's your name? Hi, David. David, nice to meet you. Where are you from? Uh, 
Union, Ohio, okay. just just next town over. Awesome. Uh, what was it like for you under the Trump administration versus the Biden administration? The man did great things for this country, and um, I miss I miss that. We need to get back to that again. And so, but I just know God is in control of the leaders in our co- country, and uh, I'm, I know what what He's going to do is going to be the best for us. And God, Biden has put us down and into a destructive, and we don't know who's pulling his strings anyway. So, but we're looking forward to a turnaround back to uh, Trump turning us this country back to where it was. Yeah, definitely, definitely. yeah. thank you, sir. Good, good to talk with you. All right, Vanessa's going to head inside. We're going to talk to some more people here, but that's a great point uh, the guy just made. Obviously, uh, people you know say all the time, you know, God has it under control, but we also know that we have a balance, right? It's like you know, you work as hard as you can, like it all depends on you, but pray as hard as you can, like it all depends on God. So it's a it's a good balance to work hard, pray hard, and, and believe that great things uh, will uh, will happen. As we know, Romans eight twenty eight, all things work together for the good to those that love God and are called according to His purpose. Anybody. Uh, like that verse right there come on over and talk to me about it <laughs> come on over guys so uh, t- let's talk about that I mean at the end of the day it seems like it's 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 cool to be uh, Trump and it's awesome to be a Christian let's be real right absolutely yes so, can you expand on that a little bit of, of why those two things are important for people uh, you know judeo-christian values here in the United States of America because that's what our country is based upon is God and you know Right now, that's what it's lacking completely. Yeah, completely lacking. Jesus is king. Amen. Yep. Amen. Your thoughts, man. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> you know it's coming to you, especially with those shades, bro. <laughs> uh, what are your thoughts in general? Just the fact of what the country's dealing with now versus what it dealt with, uh, you know, under Biden, uh, under Trump. It was much better then, wasn't it? Absolutely. Yeah, we lost a lot of morality that I think we need to gain back. How important is a prayer life plus also a voting life? Very yeah, exactly. Important. Get out and vote. Get out and vote. Every what vote is, counts. What is life without Jesus? Yeah. Amen. 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 All right. Thank See you guys. So good stuff there. Um, we got lots of people here, a long line here in uh, Dayton, Ohio. So four o'clock, President Trump expected to take the stage. Uh, Trump Force One will be landing here at the airport. Really awesome stuff with all the history of the Wright brothers and and all of that is pretty awesome. Uh, did buy, actually, I want to show you something real quick. Uh, let's see here. I uh, bought this at the uh, United States Muse- National Museum of the Air Force. Bought that a little bit earlier. So once again, I'm going to take, I'm going to post some of those videos and photos on uh, Truth Social. So at Matthew Alvarez. And now that I'm in the pocket here, let's see what else I bought. <laughs> was flying through Philadelphia, and I thought it was cool since that is. The founding, you know, of freedom since 1776. So to my wife, you know, I buy stickers all the time. So these, this one's for you. <laughs> but anyway, so uh, what's going on, man? How you doing? What's your name? Steve. Steve. Nice to meet you. I like that sweatshirt. I like that hat. Thank you. <laughs> what are your thoughts about uh, what's going on today here in Dayton? Great day in Dayton. Uh, we're here to see Mr. Trump, see him come back, yeah. let us know what's all going on. Awesome. What industry are you in? I'm a retired truck driver. All right. Tell us about that industry in the sense of your buddies now. Are they complaining left and right about it? Yeah, there's a lot going on in the trucking industry right now that's really slowing things down. The biggest thing is the illegals coming in down south. I've worked the southern border for years hauling meat back and forth, and I watched it go from a trickle in the 80s and 90s to a steady stream, and now it's just an outright flood. It's not safe down there anymore, and not to mention the fact a lot of those people are ended up driving trucks on our highways. They don't speak our language, they don't understand us, they don't understand the rules, and they depend on the GPS. It's a risk to everybody. And President Biden, or uh, I I, I don't like to always call him President Biden, the guy that is uh, in the White House right now uh, said uh, that uh, something about being uh, illegals, right? He said the word illegals at the State of the Union. He He, phrased it correctly. That time he he said it right. He, He said out loud what we all know. They're illegals. When you start your time in my country by breaking the law to get here, you shouldn't be here. I got no problem with legal immigration. I'm living in a house that my grandparents bought for Ill- or for people who came here after World War II. They were survivors of the Nazi concentration camps. I'm living in that house now. My grandparents sponsored them. They came here. They got their citizenship. 
They learned our language and they led long, productive lives in the United States. What they're doing now isn't that way. They come here illegally, start their time here with a felony. They need to go. And it's not only, you know, there has been illegal immigration, you know, over the years. Under every president, there have been people that are trying to cross the border. Obviously, under President Trump, it wasn't even a big issue then because it was secure at that point. Now we see something. Let's, let me ask you. How old are you, by the way? 56. All right. In 56 years, have you seen anything like the amount of illegal immigrants coming across? Sure. Nothing like this. What Nothing. do you think they're trying to do with that? They're trying to replace the, the voter base. They're trying to by the voter base. They figure if they let them come here, they'll feel upholden to them somehow, and they'll vote their way. I think they're in for a surprise because the the people that came here the right way, the illegals that did it, the, I mean, the immigrants who came here the correct way, they don't like it either. Yeah, I was seeing that in Chicago and New York, and even illegal immigrants that are sent to those cities, you know, just going through the winter time, it's, it's gotta be just, uh, they, they, what do they have there, right? they've come from a tropical area all of a sudden they're faced with chicago weather of course they're suffering but you know what they bit the bullet on this one they came up here deal with that at least until we can get them back out what's your name sir steve steve thank you again thank you. nice to talk with you all right, moving along here uh, in Dayton, Ohio, for uh, President Trump's rally that will be uh, starting at 4 o'clock. The pre-program starts at 2.30, and that will be uh, very soon, actually. We're looking at, I think we're at uh, 145 about at this point, 140. What's going on, guys? How's everybody over here? Good, good, all right. You guys don't seem very excited to see President Trump. All right, any USA chance or anything going on? Anybody? <laughs> No, all right. Well, hey, uh, what's what's your name? Come on over. I'm Riley. Hi, Riley. Uh, where are you from? I'm from Ohio. Okay, cool. What part? Um, Eaton, Ohio. All right. First time to see the president, yeah. Mm -hmm. uh, what are your thoughts about uh, the country right now, and and the fact that freedom? Right? Are you are you genuinely concerned about freedom, or or is that just something you've heard? I, oh, sorry. Uh, yeah, I am pretty concerned because, like, I <laughs> I'm sorry. It's like no, hard no, to okay. explain. Okay. Um, like. <laughs> um, I'm scared, sorry. That's all right. Um, it's hard to explain like how people like like freedom of speech, like some people don't get that that often and um I think America needs help right now. Yeah. And I feel like he's the only one that can help us right now. Right. It doesn't seem like anybody else is really wanting to fight for the American people. He's the uh the people's president, isn't he? Mm -hmm. Yeah. Uh, good stuff. Thank you so much for talking with us. Thank you. So as we pan the crowd all the way to the left there, we can just see uh, still thousands of people in line. They have to go through the security uh, checkpoint. This is an outdoor rally. There's been many indoor arenas, and those are awesome because, you know, it's cool to be inside the basketball and hockey arena and you hear the echoes, but there's something about on a, on a beautiful blue sky day to see Trump Force One uh, make a landing here uh, in Dayton at the Dayton International Airport uh, at the Wright Brothers Arrow. That's the specific courier uh, in this area for uh, fixed based operation, kind of an FBO, right? Where there's uh, corporate jets that land, you have like a, a different kind of uh, area for them to land. So that's what uh, President Trump will be landing in this area. And right over uh, the fence there and over that checkpoint will be where President Trump uh, is uh, speaking. And then of course, a uh, number of speakers starting earlier than that uh, you're watching right side broadcasting network go ahead and send this link to your friends and your family out there let's let right side broadcasting network continue to spread like it is uh, not only across this country but around the world i remember seeing people from costa rica watching england uh, australia uh, a lot of people from around the world uh, watching uh, obviously more in this country because we're based here but the point is people love freedom and they also love someone that uh makes you laugh and, and President Trump does that but he also shares uh, serious points like peace through strength and that kind of thing so uh, we're gonna walk uh, around this other area uh, through the media thing so let's go for a little bit of a journey here <laughs> together on right side as we take a look at those flags to the right you can see the winds just ripping through uh, it's not always this windy uh, here in this area I know we're more in a flat area in the Midwest but uh, it wasn't that windy this morning, so this actually just picked up within the past couple hours. Uh, so we're gonna show you what it's like, you know, just live going through the area. Ma'am, are you a Ohio State Buckeye fan? I am. Come on over, let's talk to you real quick. 
Uh, the, I'm a graduate, actually. Oh, you are? Yes. Okay, okay. <laughs> awesome. Let's stand r right up here, actually. Uh, so, OHIO. OHIO. <laughs> good job. So, you've been to the shoe in Columbus, yeah? I have season tickets. Okay, cool. Yeah. Cool. G good seats good upstairs? Seats. Oh, okay. Yes, very good seats. Right. Yeah, I graduated at Aeon ago, so I've been a season ticket holder since I graduated. So, we've cool. got good five, five years ago, right? Oh, yeah. Five. <laughs> Maybe six. Okay. Cool. Uh, so, what about this event here? Uh, how close are, are you going to be in there? Are you a volunteer or something? I, I, I um, run the GOP, uh, Montgomery County GOP events. I'm the coordinator for them. So, yes, I, yes uh, this is a great event. So, to let people know what is it like to to put together something like this um it's taxing and especially on short notice because it was very short notice but i have a great group of people who help and get everything coordinated and it's it's works out really well awesome. yeah so what are your, some of your thoughts about uh the president being here in dayton and and does ohio need to hear from president trump right now they do um i think he's got ohio pretty well locked in according to our office the people we get but um he's got to come and make a great statement he's got to really appeal to some of the people who are on that right to life side and figure out where that he's going to get them to journey over and some of that. So I think Ohio does need to hear from him. Yeah. So uh, your thoughts about Governor DeWine? <laughs> um, governor DeWine, I got to be careful. Um, <laughs> governor DeWine is a is a is a is a great governor um, in a lot of ways, but there's some things we have had disagreements on. Um, recently, uh, veto that he vetoed a bill that I was really a proponent of and kind of discouraged that he vetoed it. But it's okay. The state took care of it. So. Thank you so much. Sure. First name? Jody. Jody, nice to meet nice you. To meet you too. O H. I O. There you go. <laughs> if you've never been to a, a Ohio State football game, right? The whole one side chants O H. The other side I O. I used to work in Columbus uh, as a local reporter. Much better on the conservative side, trust me. <laughs> anyway, we're going to take a live look here to the left. We're going to be getting uh, ready to throw it to Vanessa Broussard here any second now. She is live inside. And we are live right here outside on Right Side Broadcasting Network. Let's send it over to Vanessa Broussard right now. All right, thank you, Matthew, reporting for us outside of the gates here at Wright Brothers Aero Inc. in Dayton, Ohio. I am now inside the gates, and you can see all the people inside behind me. The seats are filled. They're pretty much filled right now, and there's still thousands of people outside the gate. So we're expecting an overflow crowd today. Hey, we want you to get prepared for the next pan pandemic in case we have one or the next sickness that takes over your house. And you can have that preparation in place if you have the wellness company's emergency medical kit. Remember when Biden denied our access to life-saving medications during the pandemic? Well, you can have those life-saving medications on hand and not have to worry about waiting on a doctor, a drugstore, or whatever the case may be. Even the most prepared Americans found themselves and their families looking uh, and lacking critical medications essential for protection. So whether it's a global conflict causing drug shortages, which can happen, supply chain breakdowns, other health care crises going on, or anything Biden is doing at the border, now more than ever, we need these life-saving medications on hand. They aren't just remedies, they're lifelines. So make sure that the medical emergency kit from the wellness company is in your pantry, in your kitchen. Save one of these. I have one. Everyone should have one in America. It's one of the best things you can do for yourself and also your family. The prescription kit contains eight life-saving medications, including ivermectin, amoxicillin, and a Z-pack, plus a guidebook to tell you exactly how to use the medications. Every American, again, should have at least one medical emergency kit in their house. Order your kit today. Go to MakeCareGreatAgain.com. Type in the RSBN code at checkout. You will save $45 and also get free shipping on your medical emergency kit. So it's an election year. Remember that. After all, anything can happen. We just don't know, but we can be prepared. We know we can be prepared. Go to MakeCareGreatAgain.com. Type in RSBN at checkout and save some money on your medical emergency kit and have some ease knowing that you have the medications needed in case your family needs them. 
You never know what curveballs are going to be thrown at us as we get ready for November 2024. Hey, I'm Vanessa Broussard with Right Side Broadcasting Network. So good to see you here in Dayton, Ohio today for President Donald Trump making an appearance to stomp for Bernie Marino for Senate. Uh, he's a MAGA first candidate. President Trump has been a big supporter of Bernie Marino. Bernie Marino has been a big supporter of President Trump. And look, as President Trump continues to gain momentum going Going into November, he needs the state reps and the senators on hand to back him when he gets into the White House. And Bernie Marino is just one of those candidates that we need to make sure gets in office for Ohio. So, Ohio, if you're watching right now, make sure you go out and vote on Tuesday. Bernie Marino, uh, it's a tight race, three-way race uh, for the Republican nomination going into November. And then they'll go up against a Democrat and an incumbent who is looking for their fourth term uh, in office. We need to nick, knock him out of the seat, get him out of there and put Bernie Marino in there. So when President Trump gets in office, he'll have a great MAGA first, America first candidate uh, here in Ohio representing the state. All right. So uh, we are outside. As you can tell, it's windy. I have a hat on my head. Everyone does here. Uh, Thank goodness there's a lot of vendors outside because we are um, at an airport and we're expecting Trump Force One uh, to be landing here pretty soon. And what a sight to see it is when President Trump comes in on Trump Force One. So make sure you stick with Right Side Broadcasting Network. We'll have live pictures for you uh, as President Trump makes his way uh, to Dayton, Ohio, and will land Trump Force One, we're told, right behind us. So that's all coming up here on Right Side Broadcasting Network. A lot of uh, behind-the-scenes photos and videos, too. You can follow me on Instagram, Vanessa Broussard News, Truth Social, Vanessa Broussard. And I'm also on X, formerly known as Twitter, uh, Vanessa B News there. But if you type in Vanessa Broussard, you'll definitely find me. Also, Matthew Alvarez, who's making his way in right now. He's on Truth Social at RSBN, of course. Make sure that you go to rsbnetwork.com, rsbnetwork.com. Sign up for our newsletter. Make sure you sign up for our newsletter, and uh, that way you'll be in the know as events are happening as we continue on the campaign trail heading into November. So uh, a lot of things happening in the news, especially in the last week. I'll, I'll wait for Matthew to get up here so we can talk a little bit about what's been going on in the news this week. But also uh, what's really uh, exciting to see is the shakeup in the RNC. Lara Trump, now a co-chair of the RNC, uh, new chairman as well, and um, they're Making big moves there already. Uh, people were kind of fed up with the RNC and, and the way that it was being handled. But uh, there's new leaders in charge and and a lot of good things happening. Uh, one of the announcements that just came down this week is that uh, they are bringing in Scott Pressler, who's been a big advocate outstanding phenomenal job uh, getting people registered to vote in different states. And he um, We'll sit at a Starbucks restaurant, for example, and just sit there. And as people come in, he'll ask them, are you registered? No. Okay, well, here's a, a registration form for you to fill out. So he's uh, definitely doing a great job uh, across the country. That's what he does day in and day out for hours a day, making sure people are registered to vote, getting them out to vote so we can um, turn this country around and, and make it for uh, the good instead of the evil that's running our country uh, right now. So the RNC bringing Scott Pressler on board, huge news there this week and uh, people are really excited uh, to hear that so we're eager to see what the RNC will be uh, doing in the couple in the next couple of months and also um, what changes positive changes will be made in the next couple of months also uh, speaking of the RNC the July convention is coming up and that's where representatives delegates from all over the states uh, will converge in Milwaukee that's in July and then they'll officially vote on Donald Trump who has the 1,000, I believe, over 1,000 um, delegates needed to secure the nomination. So he has uh, well passed that uh, mark, and he'll be voted on for a definite answer in July at the RNC Republican National Convention, and then he'll be facing Joe Biden in November. So still get out and vote. Still make that red wave known. And Ohio, if you're watching, you're up on Tuesday. Make sure you vote. President Donald Trump and also uh, make sure you make the correct pick for Senator as well. We are 
Looking at the crowd now, I'm going to step aside to show you the seats are filling up. And just to give you an idea of how windy it is, check out the flags. If that doesn't give you an indication, the American flags are... Blowing in the, I would say breeze, but this is more than a breeze. My hat's falling off my head. It's flying off. And that's another thing we've seen. We've seen people chasing their hats all day today because the wind is atrocious out here. But it's okay. We're having a great time in Ohio. Ohio is America first. They vote on March 19th. That's Tuesday. So make sure... Uh, you get out and vote Ohio. So yes, just a couple of more uh, seats open here and then the overflow crowd will start. We're expecting J.D. Vance to be here today. J.D. Vance, an American patriot who has done a wonderful job for Ohio. He'll be here stomping for Bernie Marino as well. Great lineup of speakers coming up. That's here within 30 minutes, if not sooner. Letting you look in and listen in as people make their way. We showed you earlier they have to go through tight security with the Secret Service before they're allowed in. And there's five mags today that they have to go through to be cleared and thousands of people outside. So just think, do the math. There's thousands of people and only five security mags for them to go to. It takes a little bit of time. Let's talk about what's going on in Georgia. I was just there last week uh, stomping for uh, President Trump in the Georgia primary and we were in Marjorie Taylor Greene's district and that is definitely a MAGA first district. A lot of Trump supporters in her district. It was great to be in Northwest Georgia last weekend. President Trump was there and uh, the big topic, which is very heartbreaking, is illegal immigration because one of their own lost her life, life in a murder to an illegal immigrant. Lakin Riley was a beautiful college student, a nursing student who was out for a morning jog when an illegal immigrant who should not have been in this country murdered her, beat her head in, murdered her. And President Biden won't even say her name. Now in the State of the Union, Marjorie Taylor Greene wore uh, a shirt that said, say her name. She handed the president a button as he walked into the State of the Union, asking politely to please say her name yelled at him during the speech to say his say her name and the president held up the button and said I know her name it's Lincoln Riley so the president didn't even remember her name doesn't know her name and refuses to even talk about it because he knows deep down it's because of his policies that Americans are being murdered they're being raped we had a two-year-old murdered by an illegal immigrant in Washington DC not long ago we had a handicapped little girl raped by an illegal immigrant last week. The crime is real and it's taken over and the people of Georgia know it. And it was great to be there and see that they are seeing just how bad of an issue, issue the illegal immigrants are causing in this country. Now I talked to you a little bit uh, a while ago with Matthew that I was in an Uber last night and the man who drove me was from Pakistan. And he was very nice, very kind. We had a great conversation. He actually cracked a few jokes at me and said he loves joking around with the people who ride with him. And then he tells me, I just earned my citizenship yesterday. I said, you did? I was so excited for him. He says, I've been in America for nine years. I've worked hard. And it's taken me nine years to get my citizenship. And I couldn't congratulate him enough. Told him, great job. Welcome home officially. That's great news. Because he's coming here to better the country. He's coming here to work. He's coming here to live the American dream and he did so for nine years and proved that he can do it and he wants to do it and now he's an American citizen that's the way it should be done it's not hard it's not hard it's really not he's a great law-abiding citizen it's these illegal immigrants coming through with crime and drugs and fentanyl and marijuana and cocaine 
and meth and giving it to our kids in school and murdering our college students and our two-year-olds in Washington, D.C., and raping our children and doing all of the things that are illegal. That's what we have a problem with, and that's what needs to end. And President Biden has blood on his hands because he could sign a piece of paper today and say, we're putting an end to this. But you know what? If he did that, it would prove that Trump was right. And oh, no, Joe Biden, the Biden administration, and the Democrats can't say that Trump was right. So they refuse to sign that piece of paper, and shame on them for doing that. It's going to cost more Americans their lives, either by murder or by drugs. Almost 9 million illegal immigrants have crossed our borders, northern border and southern border, since Joe Biden has taken office. Disgusting is what that is. All right, we are going to talk about what is wonderful. We're going to switch gears real quick and talk about Birch Gold. Birch Gold is a great partner of ours, also of Donald Trump Jr. Donald Trump Jr. is a big fan of Birch Gold Group. Whatever you want to invest, whether it's big or small, contact the Birch Gold Group. They can definitely help you out. Invest in your IRA, 401K, turn to gold. If you're confused about it, how to do it, that's okay. That's what the experts are there for. They'll send you a free information kit. Someone will contact you from from the Birch Gold Group, and they will make sure they get you on the right path. Real easy to do. All you have to do is text the word Trump to 989898. Again, text the word Trump to 989898. That's the Birch Gold Group, and they'll get you on the right path for saving for your future. Again, I'm Vanessa Broussard, live here in Dayton, Ohio. Matthew Alvarez joining me as well. We're waiting on President Trump here in Dayton. Don't go anywhere. We have a lot of coverage coming up, exciting coverage coming up here from Dayton. We'll be right back. On. Welcome to the Right Side Broadcasting Network. We're not like the other media outlets out there that cut and edit what other people say. In 2015, we were created by our founder, Joe Seals, to cover President Donald J. Trump's speeches and rallies, to which we continue to do to this day. We've also covered important conservative events like CPAC, TPUSA, March for Life, and many other important events and hearings around the country. We were made for people like you, everyday Americans who are tired of the mainstream media, who are tired of being lied to, manipulated, and fed an agenda. Our goal here at Right Side Broadcasting is to allow you to see the truth giving our correspondents and commentators a wide latitude to speak their minds. You won't find anything like this in the mainstream media. Your support through your donations, locals, and supporting our advertisers allows us to continue to cover important events around the country each and every day. So, from us here at Right Side Broadcasting, thank you for supporting us and the right side of history. Looks like you've been sleeping well. Megan, he's back. The My Pillow guy. And you're looking good. I'm still feeling good. Well, just when you thought it couldn't get any better, we've got the best pillow ever, My Pillow 2.0. <gasps> when I invented My Pillow, it had everything you'd ever want in a pillow. Well, now there's new technology that makes it even better. My Pillow 2.0 has my patented fill combined with a cooling fabric with temperature regulating thread. My Pillow 2.0 is truly the next generation of My Pillow. Now's the time to go to mypillow.com or call the number on your screen. Use the promo code to save 50% on your My Pillow 2.0. Not only that, for a limited time your entire order ships absolutely free. You're sleeping even better and cooler too. And you're looking good. Feeling good. I knew you would. MyPillow.com. Parents and grandparents, the 2024 Kids Guide to President Trump is here and it's free. As a bonus, your child gets a free issue of Everbright Kids Magazine and Activity Book and a free video lesson. Order now at FreeTrumpBook.com. That's FreeTrumpBook.com. What's up, guys? My name is Jaden Hurd, and I have a Christian show called Let It Be Heard, where we analyze culture and current events from a biblical perspective. I highly recommend you guys check us out. We now have episodes every Monday, Wednesday, and Friday. 
And basically what happens is we react to videos, we have talking points, we have on guests, and it's very exciting. Come check us out on Rumble on the RSBN channel. God bless you guys. Good afternoon once again. I'm Matthew Alvarez alongside Vanessa Broussard here in Dayton, Ohio, waiting for Trump Force One to make a landing here, Vanessa. I'm excited about it. You can see the stairs are already there in place, and Trump Force One will be landing here momentarily in Dayton, Ohio. The crowd is here. They always show up for President Trump, and uh, the seating right behind us is almost full, and there's still thousands of people outside the gates waiting to get in. So it's going to be a packed house today. The sun is out. The sky is blue. But as you can see, it's very, very windy today. The wind is atrocious, but we're here. I would bet that President Trump is wearing a MAGA hat today. Yes, absolutely. I think he will as well. And so the people here, uh, I don't think I see anyone without a hat or a scarf or a hoodie on right now because uh, we were talking earlier, remember the trolls where your hair sticks up? Yep. That's what we would look like if yep. we did not have a hat on our head today because we are here at the uh, Wright Brothers Arrows, and it's a, a beautiful place where I'm sure there's beautiful private jets. Yeah, exactly. Stationed here. Corporate jets. You have a couple parked over there, I'm, yeah. I'm pretty sure, right? Yeah, yeah. So, well, there you go. Nice place. <laughs> Definitely. So, yeah, so the uh, wind has picked up, but we know that uh, Trump Force One will be able to make it here. Uh, we were talking about the steps. Why don't we take a live look at them real quick, okay. just for fun, and then we'll get to the uh, Rasmussen poll, uh, one of the latest ones. Now, that is where President Trump will walk down, showing Joe Biden how to properly walk down the steps, of course, and then walk right back up. So Trump Force One right there in the middle uh, will be a great backdrop. Great to be uh, around the corner uh, when it comes to the next season up here in the Northeast slash Midwest, the um, springtime uh, around the corner. So an outdoor rally, an outdoor event, a lot of people here uh, waiting for the president, waiting for that program to start, uh, which should be around 2.30. Then the president will speak around 4 o'clock. So Vanessa, I was mentioning the uh, Rasmussen poll earlier. And, you know, there's a lot of, obviously, there's a lot of polls out there. And uh, President Trump is leading uh, on, on two major polls. Of course, the one against Joe Biden or a Newsom, that kind of thing. Uh, but he's also leading in the swing states. Yes. That's Very awesome important. to see, yes. you know? And, and all the swing states. And right. so if you look at some of these poll numbers, uh, I haven't seen one yet where he's not winning in a, a swing state. One of the ones that's really popular on Truth Social and President Trump, you'll see him posting this a lot, comes from interactive polls. And the latest one for Ohio, right here in Ohio, is Trump is leading 50 percent to Biden 38 percent. This is a swing state in the general election. And so looking very good for President Trump there right now, according to interactive polls for this swing state of Ohio. Again, President Trump 50 percent, Joe Biden 38 percent. One of the surprising numbers I saw was the fact that some of the polling places are putting other Democratic candidates in against President Trump as many it's like, you know how they say it's uh, what's unspoken or saying the quiet part out loud, right? It is the fact that Joe Biden, I don't think, will be the nominee or the president uh, trying to have an incumbency, right? So the fact is 17% is the lead right now for President Trump over uh, Gavin Newsom. So there's 17% already. So they're trying to pull everything at this point. Right. And there was no, there actually has been no uh, press release or news that says that Gavin Newsom or Obama or whoever, Michelle, of course, would run. Uh, but it's just, you know, polling is polling. So they go with it. Right. And I think there's a lot of speculation right now against, uh, you know, Joe Biden and if he's going to run, if he's mentally capable to be president, which we obviously can tell that he's not, hasn't been. But who would take his place? Would it be Gavin Newsom? Would it be Michelle Obama? Michelle Obama's team has come and said she has no interest in running for president, but who can trust the Obamas? They say one thing and do another. Will it be Hillary Clinton again? We don't know, but there is speculation, but it's kind of getting late in the game. Uh, president Biden has already won the delegates needed to be on the ballot in November, so um, we'll have to see how that plays out. But um, I think, in my opinion, we as Americans know that he's incapable and he's not in the right state of mind to run a country. But at the same time, he's a puppet on the string. And so he's exactly what the Democrats need. He's not running this country. Someone else is. And so 
That's exactly what they they need is someone like him who they can tell what to do and just be the mouthpiece behind him telling him what to say and do. So um, for them, he's great. For the American people, not so much. Exactly. And President Trump brings up the deep state and globalism at every single event. You'll hear it here today uh, at the end. You know, he'll, he'll talk about it. And that is what Vanessa's referring to. I mean, we're not... We're, we're not in the mainstream media anymore. We're in a, a media that is a new conservative media that almost has hats blown off our heads <laughs> at the same time. But the point is, uh, we know that uh, we want to resonate with you, the American people, and speak truth. We know that uh, those, those puppet strings, as you said, uh, are being pulled by the deep state and globalists to take away freedom, to take away our country, and to, in, to install a uh, globalist uh, world order regime into our nation. I mean, that's really what uh, a lot of people have said. That's not, I'm not just saying that, obviously. Uh, so uh, let's switch gears real quick, though. On uh, March 19th, there are five states for the primary, right? So we've got Ohio, Kansas, Florida, Illinois, and Arizona. A lot of big races there as well when it comes to Senate and, and congressional and even local races. Still, though, go out there for President Trump to show support, right? Right, absolutely. And then also, uh, you spoke about Arizona. Carrie Lake running for Senate. Huge MAGA first candidate there. Carrie Lake draws a crowd everywhere she goes. Um, so she is running for Senate in Arizona. Make sure you get out and vote. And, of course, here in Ohio uh, as well, Bernie Marino. We need all of the America First MAGA um, patriots in office, whether it's the Senate or the House. We need those people. We need to do away with the rhinos and put these great patriots in office to help President Trump when he gets in office. I do want to go over another poll number real quick just to give you um, an, another one other than interactive polls. Uh, Polly Market. The 2024 presidential election winner, uh, this just came out this week, Trump 52%, Biden 37%. So ignore uh, the mainstream media and what you're hearing and that it could be close and this and that. We know that it's not. I mean, it's uh, when President Trump was rallying in Georgia last weekend, Biden was there as well. President Trump had a sold out crowd inside the arena and thousands of people outside watching on a big monitor because it was overflow crowd. President Biden was in another part of the state and couldn't even fill up a small little like hole in the wall bar is right. what it looked like they were in. But um, maybe a couple dozen people like the numbers don't lie. And if you think for one second, this man had the most votes and the history of presidential races more than any other president ever. I mean, we're not dumb. America's not stupid. <laughs> so um, there's just absolutely no way. And so going into 2024, we just need to make it too big to rig, go out and vote. But also, you know, we talk about President Trump all the time, but it's also very important to get these MAGA first, America first patriots in the Senate and in the House. Because that's a reflection of the uh, we the people. The American people, you know, that are uh, loving freedom and just double checking. Anytime you hear a crowd like that, you, you want to see maybe if uh, you never know if Trump force one's up in the air or something. Or it depends on maybe one, one of, of the dignitaries that yes. may be here. Uh, speaking of that, uh, you know, for President Trump, he, he's, he's trumping or stumping for... Uh, I like it. He's trumping. Yeah, he's trumping <laughs> for Bernie Moreno uh, for U.S. Senate. Yes. So, uh, you know, he'll be here as well. Um, now, if if Mr. Moreno want, Moreno want, wins uh, for the Republican side, he'll take on the incumbent uh, Sherrod Brown, a wonderful Democrat over there in Ohio. Yeah, he'll be going for his fourth term, and so we want to make sure he is kicked out and uh, Bernie Moreno is uh, put in. Because if you look at Ohio, the swing state, and the representation that we have, you do have a Democrat uh, like you just mentioned, how great would it be? You have J.D. Vance, you'd have Bernie Marino, and you'd have President Trump in office. Ohio, you would be sitting pretty. Yeah. You know, like that would be great. So that's the goal. That is the, um, you know, that's the America we want. That's the America we need. So out with the Democrats, out with the rhinos, bring in these America First patriots. And it's our turn, Ohio. It's your turn. So get out and vote on Tuesday. Exactly. And also, 
you know, let's, I was just thinking about the education, uh, you know, industry, you know, stop brainwashing the youth, right? I mean, if you go to the free Trump book.com, Mike Huckabee, uh, he's, he's putting these books out there with truth and correct information about the Trump administration. So you see that information there on your screen, Trump, free Trump book.com. I was talking with my buddy about this the other day too. Why do so many, uh, deep state or globalists or, or, or really extreme left wing people work Work in education, or why do they work in uh, some other industries that have to do with the youth? Right. Right. It's because adults aren't going to just listen to somebody and say, you know, Marxism is the right thing to do, or right. Nietzsche and, and Darwinism and all that. No, they're going to try and brainwash the youth. Thank God for Mike Huckabee. Oh yes, actually, uh, he, he's doing great. We have one at the house, freetrumpbook.com. Uh, so make sure that you get one for your child, freetrumpbook.com. And look, it's great for the adults to read as well. Uh, all you have to do is pay for a small shipping and handling fee, but that's it. But uh, yes, thank God for these people who put out uh, the positive uh, of what President Trump has done, and and learn about our Constitution, learn about our, you know, Declaration of Independence. And the news last week, Matthew, was the TikTok bill. And, look, I, this might be a, a, an unpopular opinion, but it is what it is. That's my opinion. I'm torn on the TikTok bill, and here's why. I get that there are other social media outlets that, you know, they go against your First Amendment right. Like people go to Facebook jail, they call it, if they put something about Trump or put something against Joe Biden or Kamala Harris. I get that. But at the same time, this is a China-run app. They do have, even though they deny it, you know they have access to our information. And so while other, other social media platforms like Twitter, before Elon Musk bought Twitter, which is now X, they did censor Americans, YouTube, they all did. And so the, the argument is, well, what about these other ones? We'll get to them next. You gotta start somewhere, right? So that's my argument on it and opinion on it. But here's another thing, going back to what we were saying, that's part one, here's part two. Children know more about the latest trends on TikTok and the latest TikTok dances than they do what's going on in their classroom and their history books and also their math lessons and science lessons. And that's another reason I absolutely cannot stand TikTok. These kids are being brainwashed by the latest trends that can cause injuries, the latest dances that they all do. But do they know the Declaration of Independence? Do they know our Constitution? Do they know who our founding fathers are? Do they know what is going on? You know, you want to keep them to where they're kind of in a bubble, and you don't want them to know all the negativity going on in the world. I don't want my son knowing. I am keeping him in a bubble. But at the same time, do they know about patriotism and all the wonderful things? Do they know about all this? Because they know the TikTok dance. So that's why, look, if they got rid of TikTok, I wouldn't be mad about it. From a 30,000 foot view, I mean, at the end of the day, big tech can share in t intelligence with governments mm -hmm. and those other governments that are connected can talk with other governments. And there's just all this, this whole thing going on. Obviously, if social media is left wing, which it is, and, and big tech, uh, I'm just glad that Truth Social is, yes. is out there. I'm glad that Rumble is out there. I'm glad Right, right. Side Broadcasting is out there, among others. You know, you got to have a comeback story. Right. And I think that's what, what's happening here uh, for President Trump, but also for uh, conservative media and conservative industry. We're seeing that happen left and right. We're seeing a lot of great podcasts coming out. We have a lot of great uh, hosts on, on various conservative networks. Uh, you know, I'm thinking about Brian Glenn right now. You know, Brian, uh, you know, leading the way uh, here at Right Side Broadcasting Network. You know, it's people that just are like, hey, we, we were in mainstream. We want to get out of it. And now we're here on the conservative media side. So I was actually looking up the definition. Now, this is very, um, very intellectual of me to do this. Uh, looking at the definition of a patriot the other day. You were mentioning about being a patriot. So a patriot is a person who loves, supports, and defends their country and its interests with devotion. Isn't that true? I mean, our interests are nothing but positive and great, you know, peace through strength, right? And so I was just, you know, you look at some of the basics sometimes. Sometimes you don't have to go so deep into things. Uh, sometimes the deepest things are simple, actually. So uh, the, the, the point to all that is that's what we are in this nation, right? 
we're devoted to God, we're devoted to the Constitution, we're devoted to leaders that are going to speak up for freedom and to continue that here in this nation. I mean, the world, Vanessa, as you know, is watching right now. Oh, yes. They're watching. They're seeing what, what, what's going to happen in the United States. We're less than eight months from the election. Less yes. than eight months. Yeah. And it's not, you know, yes, the world leaders are watching, but the people are watching, too, because they're really tuned in to what's going on in America because it could affect their country. It's a it's a domino effect. And we get messages and emails and, and social media um, tags from people all over the world. So if you're watching from England or wherever, the U.K., I've received so many messages from people. Um, thank you for watching. Good to see you here on Right Side Broadcasting Network. Make sure... Uh, you stay with us because we do love uh, talking about our great country and how much we love our country, but we want the best for you as well. We want the best for the world. And so, uh, you know, there was world peace under President Trump. Uh, everyone seemed to be a lot happier, but right now uh, the world is going into chaos quickly and so we need to stop that and we can only stop that at the ballot box in november and then hopefully uh have a big change of events on president trump's first day you know it'll be a lot of smiles on on the faces of the people and uh a, a lot that that heavy burden that we sense now will be lifted uh not only through our faith but also through someone that is a leader that is an outsider as we mentioned remember those guys that we talked about there before i mean Bernie it, Marino is an outsider. He's a businessman. Exactly. He's not your typical politician. And so that's the people we need, the people who they run a business. They get it. They know how to succeed. And so um, they just have that mindset, and, and they know what it's like. Um, you know, even though President Trump's worth billions of dollars, he can relate to the American people. He wants the American people to succeed. And so these politicians, a lot of them, not all of them, but a lot of them are in it for themselves, and, and they leave so much more richer than than the, when they went in and it's not because of their salaries yeah it's the undercover money that's coming in and so they're in it for themselves and we need to just get rid of those people and bring in the people who want to better this country and uh they love the american people and they want us to succeed as well exactly two words term limits yeah right yeah term limits and also people that are bought and paid for those are the people we like the we the people you know as a journalist whether I'm on camera or whether I'm just you know shopping at the grocery store, we want people that aren't bought and paid for, that aren't in it just for themselves, but are in it for the people to continue to, to protect the Constitution of the United States. Let's take a live look right now. Yeah, uh, we'll at step the up the side so you can see there's a small plane that just landed. So. Yeah, so you got that corporate jet as we were talking about before. Um, that fixed-based operation, FBO, is uh, Wright Brothers Arrow. So that's where this is being held today, this rally. The wind actually... Is calm down. Thank a little goodness. Bit. Now I, I don't know how I'm going to have to comb my hair now if it's uh, <laughs> if I take off the hat, you know. Bad <laughs> hat hair, but that's all right. Yeah, it's okay. Truth Social, Right Side Broadcasting Network <laughs> yep. at RSBN. Go ahead and give Right Side Broadcasting Network a follow on there and also Telegram. And then if you'd like to donate to Right Side Broadcasting Network, you know, obviously we're not bought and paid for from any uh, negative, terrible corporations or anything like that. This is all about we the people, and that was the, that is what this network was founded on: America first, and the Constitution, and freedom of speech, and the lights, the camera, the the uh, correspondence in the field, the studios, all that. Obviously, it takes uh, a few bucks to do it. So, if you can donate, if you have a few bucks, please go ahead and do that. R S B N. Uh, rsbnetwork.com slash donate as we take a live, live look here in Dayton, Ohio. Yes, so having a great time. Um, you know, we talked about the TikTok bill that was forefront this past week. Also forefront, Matthew, was the funny Willis uh judgment coming down from the judge there i don't know what to say about that i, I do know what to say <laughs> yeah. about that but how can i say it nicely um that's the, that's the problem you watch this trial and the lies that came out of the the witness stand from fawny and her lover nathan wade and how the judge just ruled okay fawny fanny fawny you can stay on the case but your lover's got to go so the next day the lover resigned nathan wade 
that Fannie can still go after President Trump. No, this case should be dismissed. This case should be dropped. It's election interference. She ran on, I'm going to get Trump. She paid her lover tens of thousands of dollars to go after Trump. They got called out. America knew. We watched it live on TV as they told lie after lie on the stand. So the judge just says, okay, well, Fannie can still do it, but the lover's got to go. No, both need to go. And they need to be investigated because they lied on un, under oath. And the judge, by the way, who made this decision is a funny Willis fan. He contributed to her campaign. Corruption all the way around. In the madness in Georgia, stop the corruption. Get rid of Fannie. Get rid of Nathan Wade once and for all. I know he stepped down, but he needs to go. And get rid of the judge. Fannie Willis fan. There you go. I I'm mean, not a Fannie true. Willis fan. No, I know you're not. No, I know you're not. I, you're talking about the judge. I'll tell you something funny, though. When I went to Georgia, it was right in the heart. It was last weekend, so in the heart of uh, the Fannie Willis controversy going on. I almost wore my dress backwards that day in honor of Fannie. <laughs> but I, I did, and I just couldn't do it. Yeah. That, that would have been funny. Yeah. The, uh, the Democrat Party seems like they're turning into the projection party. They're always projecting what they're doing onto us saying that we're doing these terrible things, but they're the ones really doing it. So that's what we're seeing. I mean, the cat's out of the bag, as they say, more than ever before. Like the, the, the amount of awareness and knowledge that we have on what the left-wing leaders are doing to this country uh, is, is quite large at this point. Uh, there's a, a statement that I wanted to, to talk about uh, when it comes to praise, right? We, we do praise President Trump a lot, and we praise you know uh, athletes a lot, and and there's just a lot of great things in, in, in I don't know, in, on earth, right? You have beautiful scenery, food. So where I'm going with this is the praise for God. God's the one that made all this, right? God made President Trump. God made uh, all of us. And I think that we have to come to a point that, yes, we have to vote. Yes, we have to do all of our, si our, our hard work on this end. But isn't it something that you get encouraged when you start encouraging yourself in the Lord sometimes, right? So just keep praising God through the midst of the storm. We're obviously dealing with a huge storm right now. So how important do you think that is, Vanessa, uh, for just seeking God, praising God, to be able to have a breakthrough and, and really uh, make it to the next level of just encouragement, I guess? Oh, absolutely. Look, I've been through some troubled waters in my life, and my faith got me through all of it. And uh, as my prayers to God and, and knowing that he got me through, and I think that's the case, too, for what's going on in this world right now. Uh, God sees. He knows who the true... Um, his servants are. We're all children of God. And it's up to us to just um, pray and hope for the best and um, he'll prevail and he'll come through. Look, there's a lot of evil in this world, but I firmly believe there's a lot more good than bad in this world. And so the evil will never prevail. It never does. And it may look like it is right now, but it never does in the end. So it's up to us to keep praying and keep doing godly things in our everyday lives and just be good people, good people to one another. And it starts with a smile. It starts with kindness. And um, just be good, faithful servants out there in this crazy, chaotic world because there's more of us than them, and God's army will prevail. That, I mean, that's very true. There are a ton more of the people, not only in this country, but if you look at Brazil or you look at Italy or you look at anywhere in the world, right? Uh, China, the people, they don't want to be under a communist regime. They, they're afraid to talk out against it, right? So uh, yeah, there's a lot more people that are on the side of freedom than, than those few that are trying to control the masses. Uh, this is a comeback story. This is a heroic story right now that is unfolding before our eyes, literally, with President Trump. I don't think uh, there's been a president that's, what, won the three nominations, right? Obviously, because right. there's Historic. only two two terms you can do. Mm -hmm. So isn't that something? It is. Breaking all these records and, and a heroic comeback that we're watching right here in Dayton, Ohio. And won three times in a row. Look at there. So, uh, that's true. Yeah, so here, Great point. Yeah, so leave it to President Trump to make history there as well. But. Um, it's great to know that we're living history, too. And you see so many kids out here. Parents are teaching their kids this history. Like the little boy we spoke to earlier. It was his birthday. He's spending his birthday here to see President Trump. And so that's a birthday he'll always remember is that, hey, I spent my birthday with President Trump. And that's what it's all about. It's teaching the kids and just, um, you know, leaving them a world that our grandparents and great-grandparents lived in because it's chaotic for us but we can definitely make the change it's up to us to make the change and leave it better for our children 
Right, and uh, homeschooling seems like yeah. it's uh, going off the charts right now. I mean, huge percentage increases over the years. And now that we see what's been going on in, in a lot of the school systems, yeah, people are just saying, you know what, no, 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 go on a, go to homeschool their children, or go to a you know a religious school or you know Christian or Judeo school, Jew, Jewish school, uh, Catholic. So it's just like, yeah, you got to have different options. Yeah. But it's really cool, as you mentioned, to see the amount of parents out here with their kids bringing them to this event. Absolutely. And as you're talking about that, I'm looking over to our right. The overflow crowd has already started. So the seats are taken. They're full. And so now it's uh, on both sides. The overflow crowd uh, has begun to take shape with thousands of people still uh, waiting outside the gates, hoping to get in. So it's going to be a packed house uh, here today in Dayton, Ohio. So glad you're joining us. I'm Vanessa Broussard, along with Matthew Alvarez, awaiting President Trump as he'll be here stomping for votes for Bernie Marino running for Senate on Tuesday. Uh, so make sure if you're in Ohio, you get out and vote. Bernie Marino, a wonderful America First Patriot candidate, MAGA candidate on the ballot in Ohio. We got J.D. Vance in uh, as well in Ohio. President Trump endorsed him, came to Ohio and stumped for him as well, and uh, he ended up winning his race. And so now we need uh, Bernie Marino to uh, take that seat in November. So uh, make sure you vote down the ballot for those uh, America First Patriots. Also, uh, you know, President Trump has a great team around him. Um, uh, Dr. Peter McCullough was uh, one of his doctors, maybe still is, but he is uh, getting with other doctors, and they have come up with the wellness company, and it's an emergency and medical kit that you can own in your home. The, these emergency um, uh, medical kits are phenomenal. Uh, I've had to dig into mine once, unfortunately, when the bug struck my house. Um, so uh, it, it came in handy. You know, sometimes when you call in your doctor's office and then you have to go in to see them and you have to wait for the prescription and all this stuff and it t may take a day or two or three. That medical emergency kit was right there at my disposal. So I had it right there and I could immediately start using it. So um, get your medical emergency kit today. It has ivermectin, it has a Z-Pack, it has amoxicillin, and it has eight life-saving drugs in there. Eight life-saving drugs. You can uh, read the information uh, packet that comes with it. it, tells you all about them and how to use them. Go to MakeCareGreatAgain.com. MakeCareGreatAgain.com. Use the RSBN code for $45 off your order plus free shipping. RSBN code, $45 off, plus free shipping. That's MakeCareGreatAgain.com. Peter McCullough and his team are making sure Americans are prepared in case they need anything when sickness strikes. Yeah, exactly. I mean, Ivermectin, the Z-Pack, great to have that uh, on standby. I yeah. was going to ask you about what it's like to have one of those emergency kits. I don't have one yet. Yeah. Uh, but it would be great to have one at the house as well. I mean, I have also have hydrochloroquine. So, I mean, you know, uh, whatever. You know, whatever works to, to you know, get everything taken care of when it comes to doctor-approved, like, Peter McCullough. Yeah. And, and it's, you have to go through the same process as you go through if you were going to a new doctor. You have to fill out a form and tell what your allergies are and, you know, give all of your medications that you're currently taking before they send it to you. So you, get, you go through the same process. They don't just ship everybody a kit, right? Like right. you have to uh, be approved and give them all of your information. So uh, yeah, go to makecaregreatagain.com and those doctors will definitely take care of you. Now, if you were watching earlier in the broadcast with Vanessa, we were walking outside of this uh, venue uh, with a lot of the patriots out there, of people that love the country, right? And there's a lot of vendors and there was a uh, cowgirl hat. Now, now that, uh, is this Jason Aldean, right? No, this is Luke Bryan. Luke Bryan's playing. You should have. See, you should have I the know. Hat. I just. It's hard for me right now to keep this hat on my head. Oh, okay. So that that cowgirl hat would have just just been gone. Yeah, it would have been. It would have been quite the sight here on the media riser. I'll be if real. I was chasing I think, after I my think hat, even yeah. CNN would have looked over yeah. and been like, "Oh, look at that." <laughs> yeah, I would have definitely made CNN. Yeah. Well, who they, cares they if we make CNN? That, to yeah. be honest, uh, the the lying news network over there. Uh, Jake, Jake Tapper and those that crew. I mean, those, those guys are ridiculous. Anderson Cooper, all of them. Anyway, <laughs> just being real, right? Being real. Uh, I want to read a couple quotes to you. We're going to step off camera, give you a live look here in Dayton, Ohio right now uh, at the people here uh, waiting for President Trump, a packed house. It will be awesome when President Trump 
is uh, in Trump Force One and makes a landing here at the Dayton International Airport and taxis over to this uh, FBO, the Wright Brothers Arrow. Now, Thomas Jefferson said, educate and inform the whole mass of the people. They are the only sure reliance for the preservation of our liberty. Not only does President Trump and a few others do that for us, members of the true conservative media do that as well. So it's just great to see a whole support system for liberty in this country, for freedom, and for the Constitution of the United States. Waving to a few people here, having a good time, a gorgeous weather, the, the wind. Everybody's kind of getting used to it now, but uh, to my point with Thomas Jefferson, what a awesome uh, person uh, in the sense of all of the history that we've learned over the years of a founding father that wrote the Constitution, the Declaration of Independence, was able to take a trip uh, pretty recently when I was coming back from Richmond uh, with my wife to uh, Jefferson, the Jefferson Memorial. It's my first time there. It was great to see that. Again, it's it's a whole renewed kind of uh, love for the country, and uh, it's just much deeper than it was before because we weren't dealing with what we're dealing with now as we were dealing with it back in, what, the 90s, the early 2000s. We didn't know it was a slow process to, you know, trying to infringe on the rights of the American people. So, obviously, President Trump Ladies will be... And gentlemen, let's go right to the stage to the right stage, now. Pastor Dan Wolven to lead us in today's invocation. To paraphrase 1 Timothy 2, the Bible says that we as believers are encouraged to pray for our leaders so we can be left alone, so we can follow the book as best as we can and have the opportunity of telling others about our precious Savior, Jesus Christ. I believe that Mr. Bernie Marino and President Donald Trump, their policies and their leadership will provide me an opportunity to practice my faith the best that anyone else who is running for office can do. To that end, let's please pray. Our Heavenly Father, we thank you for the sunshine. We certainly would trade the, uh, glad to trade the wind for the rain. And we do pray for those that have been devastated by the tornadoes in our communities that, Lord, you'd bless them and help them. I pray first of all, that I'm so thankful that Jesus Christ died for a wicked wretch like me. And as we look forward to Easter Sunday morning quickly approaching, how we're excited that Jesus has the power over death, hell, and the grave. I pray for these candidates today and others like them that, Lord, you'd help them to be victorious this Tuesday and ultimately in November. I pray for every resident of Ohio that they would fulfill that great obligation they have as citizens and go out and vote. And Lord, we do pray that you please would bless our nation. I feel like it's in Isaiah 59 where judgment has turned her back and justice is afar off and truth is fallen in the streets. Dear God, I don't know how much longer we can endure another four years like this. So please deliver us, dear God. And I pray that you'd give each and every one of us a, a spine to stand and protect the innocents in our nation from the womb all the way through the classroom. In Jesus' name, amen. Ladies and gentlemen, please welcome to the stage Greene County Sheriff Scott Anger to lead us in the Pledge of Allegiance.
great honor to be here today at this great American event. I'm very honored to do this, and would you please join me right now with honoring our country with the Pledge of Allegiance. I pledge of allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Thank you. Ladies and gentlemen, please welcome to the stage Maddie McFarlane to sing our national anthem. stripes and bright stars through the perilous fight or the ramparts we watched were so gallantly streaming and the rockets regular the bombs bursting that our flag was still there. Oh, say, does that star-spangled banner yet and wave or the Ladies and gentlemen, please welcome to the stage author and businesswoman, Elena Cardone. I love you people. Ah, I'm finally with my people. Ladies and gentlemen, patriots and fellow advocates for a brighter, stronger future for America, my name is Elena Cardone, and my purpose in life is to empower women, protect children, and restore the family unit. of which is under assault in this country. Today I stand before you, not just as Elena Cardone, a wife, a mother, and someone deeply committed to the empowerment of women, but also as a proud American who understands the weight of the choices we make at the ballot box. Why do my husband, Grant Cardone, and myself residents of Florida not only endorse but also contribute to the Bernie Marino campaign for the Republican Senate seat in Ohio. <laughs> Why it's simple. 
Grant and I have always believed in the power of the American entrepreneurial spirit. The idea that anyone from any background can achieve greatness with determination and the right opportunities. Bernie embodies the principles of leadership and integrity that are essential for our nation's progress. Bernie's commitment to cultivating an environment where businesses can thrive, where our families are supported, and where every American can pursue their version of success is why we stand with him today. His journey as an American, as an immigrant, excuse me, his journey as an immigrant from Colombia to a successful entrepreneur in the United States is a testament to what makes our country great. His commitment to legal immigration and ensuring that Americans remain the land of opportunity for those who come here legally seeking a better life. It's crucial for today's conversation on immigration. This Senate seat is more than just a position of power. It's a platform to influence the future of our country, to shape policies that will determine the opportunities available to our children, and to ensure that America remains the beacon of hope and the freedom of the world. In endorsing Bernie Marino, I am also endorsing a vision for America where everyone has the opportunity to succeed, where the American dream is alive and well, and where our children can grow up in a nation that values honor, integrity, and the pursuit of happiness. As we stand here today at this rally, I urge you to consider the importance of this election. It's not just about one seat. It's about the direction of our country. It's about the future of our children and the preservation of the American dream. Together with Bernie Marino in the Senate, we can build a future that empowers women, strengthens families, and honors the legacy of all who have come to this great nation legally in search of freedom and opportunity. I endorse Bernie Marino for Republican Senate of Ohio because I believe in America. Thank you all. God bless you. God bless Bernie Marino and God bless our great president, Donald Trump. God bless America. Thank you. Ladies and gentlemen, Please welcome to the stage, Governor of South Dakota, Christy No. Hello, Ohio! <laughs> Woo! Whatever it takes. Listen, you all know who I am, right? And my name is Christy Nome. I am the governor of the great state of South Dakota. Yeah. And you are wondering why I'm here today, aren't you? Because I have 
I wanted to bring my very good looking husband to you so you all could meet him. He's sitting right over here. Wait, Brian. This is my husband, Brian Nome, as well. Made the trip with me today, but I came today to speak to you about how important Tuesday is. Tuesday is an incredible, powerful day here, not just in Ohio, but in the United States of America. And I want to tell you why. Now, I think you all know what has happened in this country the last four or five years and the dramatic changes that we have seen under this Biden administration. And listen, this is a fight now that, in my viewpoint, is about shirts and skins. It's literally about people who love America and people who hate America. And I'm here endorsing and supporting Bernie Moreno for U.S. Senate because he loves America. He really, he really is the American dream. He's a man that came to this country, worked hard, built a business, and then used it to serve people. The very first time that I met him was years ago in Iowa when we were campaigning. And I remember meeting him, and at that time he was CEO of a very successful company. But then I watched as he served other people. He drove people and candidates around in cars. He picked up garbage, cleared off tables, was doing things that I didn't often see CEOs doing. He was serving and being humble and doing everything that he possibly could to help the candidates that really fought for America do the very best that they could and that they could win. So he was all in, and it was years ago, and I thought from that time, I'm a fan of Bernie Moreno. He's my kind of guy. He works hard, and he understands that leadership has consequences. It matters who's in charge, doesn't it? You didn't have to look anywhere these last several years, and especially during COVID, to look from state to state to see that it mattered who was in charge. And we, we watched as Democrats used fear to control people. They used fear to promote an agenda that was socialist, at times it was Marxist, and they told people they couldn't gather in gatherings like this, and they took away people's freedoms of assembly. They said people couldn't go to church, so they took away their freedom of religion. We've got Democrats saying what social media platforms can say and what they can't say and what people can voice and can't voice, and therefore they're taking away our freedom of speech. If it ever mattered ever before who's in charge, it matters now. And this is why I'm supporting Bernie, because I've met all three of your U.S. candidates. These Republicans, that all, I met with every one of them to give them all fair game to try to tell me what they stood for and what they believed. I'd known Bernie for years, but I wanted to meet the other two. But the reason that I'm endorsing Bernie is because he's honest. He told me the truth on every single position that lined up with what Donald Trump wants to do when he's back in the White House. And I'll tell you 1,000 percent, he's the only one that can beat Sherrod Brown this fall. He is the only candidate that can go in and beat Sherrod. He'll beat Sherrod, and he will beat him bad, and it'll be amazing, it'll be fantastic, and Donald Trump's going to win Ohio, and you're going to make the difference in turning this country around. It is going to be you. You're on the front line. So there's two things that I want to ask you to do before you leave here today, and you're going to promise me, every one of you, I can see you all the way in the back here, promise me two things. You ready? Number one, say yes. yes. The very best advice I got in my life was from my grandmother. She was a tough German lady. And I remember I was pregnant with my first daughter, and we had a baby shower, and they were going around this baby shower. And by the way, can I just tell you, I went to a baby shower the other day, and when I got there, there was men there. Yeah, they should not do that. It totally ruined the baby shower. So men, if you get invited to a baby shower, just don't go because it, it, the conversation changes, it gets weird, and so that's just my advice to you, is don't do that, okay? Just let, let women have baby showers. But anyways, it came to my grandmother, and she said to me, and she was tough, it was hard to get a compliment out of my grandma. Most of the time, she gave me a list of work to do. But she said, Christy, my advice to you is to be a mom who says yes, because there's so many times you have to say no. And it shocked me and surprised me so much, so I decided that I wanted to be somebody who said yes. Not just a mom who said yes, but somebody that when people asked me to do something, that I said yes to it. And I would say that the reason that I'm governor of South Dakota, the first female governor of South Dakota, every opportunity that I've had, is because when somebody asked me to do something, I just said yes. 
I didn't have to go kick down a door. I didn't have to go create an opportunity. People asked, and I said, yes, you're going to have candidates that are going to ask you to do something that you don't want to do. You're going to have somebody on Bernie's campaign or President Trump's campaign, they're going to ask you to go knock on doors. They're going to ask you to go have awkward conversations. They're going to ask you to go out there and drive people around or whatever you have to do. And I want you to decide right now with me today, whatever you get asked to do, even if it's to write a bigger check or to write a check for the very first time that you're going to say yes. Will you all say yes? yes. All right, number two, last thing. I want you all to get over yourselves. Okay, I've given this advice before, but we are a country that is addicted to being offended. We love to be offended by each other, don't we? We're just like, oh my gosh, I can't believe that they said that. That's a horrible thing. I'm never speaking to them again. It's, I want you to stop and I want you to get over yourselves. I had a pastor years ago tell me, Christy, people are going to throw offenses out at you all the time. You're the one who decides if you want to pick up those offenses and carry them around with you. And then you're the one who's carrying the burden. So make a decision that when somebody says something to you, that you're just going to let it lie and walk by it. You've got people that you work with that you stop talking to because you disagree with them politically or on a position. You've got people that maybe you go to church with that you stop talking to. You've got people in your family that you don't have conversations with anymore because they've offended you so badly. I need you to get over it. Go start having those conversations with them when you leave this rally here today. Today is a very different day for our future. Bernie can't win this race on his own. He is all in and his family has gutted themselves to serve. They do not have to do this. They are doing this because they love Ohio and they want to go to Washington, D.C. and back up President Trump. And President Trump wants Bernie. So that should be enough reason for you to go out there and start talking to people you've never spoken to before and start telling them why they need to vote on Tuesday and why they need to vote for Bernie. You can tell they lie about people who are fighters. Look at what they've done and how they've lied about Bernie and Bridget and their family this last week and spent millions of dollars to do it. They lie about Donald Trump. They lie about me and my family. They lie about Bernie. That's exactly what they do. They're a bunch of liars. Let's hold them accountable on Tuesday and make sure that you're the one. It's not just Bernie's responsibility. Every one of you has a responsibility to go out there and start talking to people you've never talked to before and say, who are you voting for and why? Why are you voting for them? Question the policies. Question them about, do you really think that they'll dig in and fight when it really matters? When they really come for your Second Amendment rights, your First Amendment rights, for your constitutional rights, who's going to fight for you? Do you think it's somebody that maybe created a business, ran it, started it out of nothing, and then decided to continue to serve and fight for America and back a, tr a president that is a freedom fighter? That's Bernie Moreno, and he's the only one in this race. Sherrod Brown needs to go away. Like, you legit, you legit have the power to make him go away. I've never seen anybody that's such a hypocrite as he is. Comes home and says one thing to Ohio, and then he goes to D.C. and votes completely different. So let's get rid of him, and the only candidate in this primary that can beat him is Bernie. And you're going to want President Trump in Ohio a lot, and he's going to come here a lot if you get Bernie to be the victor on Tuesday. So you've got your job in front of you. Number one, you're going to say yes. Number two, you're going to get over yourselves. And we're going to bring this thing home, and, and we're going to have a great victory, and we're all going to make America great again. God bless you. Thank you. Hey! Okay. Is this what you wanted? Woo. Okay. Let's go. Maybe I've been searching, searching through this. To make me find someone who knows what I'm about Yeah All these excuses to go to settle down So it's crazy what you got me doing now Yeah Hold up, baby You know you drive me crazy And I Governor Christy Nome giving an amazing speech here today in Dayton, Ohio, getting the crowd pumped up for Election Day on Tuesday, where they will vote.
Bernie Marino, the candidate of choice. He's a MAGA candidate. He's a businessman. He's an outsider. Sound familiar? President Trump has endorsed him. And Bernie Marino is a fighter for the American people, so we need to send him to the Senate. We are awaiting more speakers to take the stage here in Dayton, Ohio. I'm Vanessa Broussard. So glad to see you here with us on this very windy day. But a beautiful day. Packed house. No more seats left. And the overflow crowd is massive right now. If you follow me on social media, I'll make sure to post some of these pictures. Go to Truth Social X Instagram. Search Vanessa Broussard and I'll post some of these pictures. We want to thank one of our sponsors, Birch Gold, with the Birch Gold Group. Make sure you invest with them. Text the word Trump to 989898. They will get you on the right path to securing your finances for the future. Birch Gold Group, five-star rating with the Better Business Bureau. Text the word Trump to 989898. And here is Jim Jordan. Good to see you all. Sit down, sit down, sit down. I, 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 I always tell every... Yeah, thank you, thank you. I always tell everybody, don't... Yeah, well, it's kind of cold and windy if you haven't noticed. I got the jacket on, yeah. Uh, first of all, it's, it's, uh, I always start with this. It's a great country. It's still the greatest country going, and I got to see a little bit of this yesterday. Uh, some of you know, may, we may even have some people who came down, but we had this terrible, terrible tornado in... Uh, up in Indian Lake, which is part of our district. And I was up there. First of all, pray for the family. There's a few people who lost their lives. Let's pray for their families. But you talk about the American people and how they can, people in Ohio, and how they can rally around. I, I went to uh, Indian Lake High School yesterday afternoon, and within 24 hours, that high school was already full of supplies for the people who've been hit by this, by this tornado. So it's, it's a, just, yeah, it's a testament to the kind of people... The great people we have in our state and the great people we have in our country. Now, uh, how about last week? Did any of you watch that? Any of you watch that State of the Union? I mean, think, th think about it. He was he was twenty. He was twenty minutes late. Took him ten minutes to walk down the aisle, and then the first thing he talks about is a foreign country. I mean, it's unbelievable. Truly unbelievable. And three. Think about this. In three years now, in fifty-six days of the Biden administration, we've went from a secure border to no border. We've went from safe streets to record crime. We've went from $2 gas to $4 gas. We went from stable prices to record inflation. We went from a president in the White House like President Trump who projected strength and confidence to the world to Joe Biden, right? I mean, it is, it is scary what we have, what we have seen. I was, uh, it's kind of funny. Last month, Polly and I were, were, we were in Florida. We're at this hotel, and uh, we get up in the morning. We go to get a cup of coffee, and we're at the little coffee shop there. And as we're walking in line, waiting in line, kind of walking up to the front, we finally get to the front, and there's a, there's a gentleman there who's taking care of the, the coffee shop, the barista, I guess you give them the, the name they have. And, and he, he sees me coming, and he kind of looks at me. And you can tell he's a, a, an immigrant from Central America. And he looks at me, and he says, Jim Jordan. Says it kind of funny, and I kind of look at him, and I thought he was friendly, because nine out of ten times people come up to you, they're friendly. There's always some, there's always some crazy lefty who wants to yell at you, but I thought he was friendly. He looked at me again, and he says again, he goes, Jim Jordan. He says, you keep fighting, we need Trump. And I thought, that, I mean, literally, and, and Polly and I are standing around, and, and, it, and, it, and it struck me, like, those three words, we need, and he, and he explained that, you know, he came from a country where there was socialists and communists, but we need Trump. Those three words, what we had under President Trump, a guy who did what he said he would do. I mean, you think about what he accomplished in his first term as president. I mean, it's amazing. He said he would cut taxes. He did. He said he would reduce regulations. He did. He said he put conservatives on the court. He did. Gorsuch, Kavanaugh, Coney Barrett. He said he would build a wall. He did. He said he put the embassy in Jerusalem. He did. And a whole bunch of other things. And what's amazing... What's amazing is he did it with everyone in that town against him. Every Democrat was against him. Everyone in the mainstream press was against him. Half the Republicans were against him. All the bureaucrats were against him. 
But in spite of all that, he got it done. And I love the line he uses. I'm, I'm, he probably uses it today when he gets here. But I love the line he uses. He says, they're coming after me because I'm fighting for you. And we were, we were out in Iowa with him during the caucuses. And uh, he changed that line a little bit. I like it even better now. He says, they're coming after my freedom because I'm fighting for yours. And that's really what's at stake. You think about how these agencies have been turned against we the people. The weaponization of government against we the people. It's scary. President Trump understands that and he's going to keep fighting for us. And the other guy we need, the other guy we need is Bernie Marino in the United States Senate. Same kind of attitude. Same attitude as President Trump. That attitude that says, I'm going to go fight for the things I told the voters I was going to do. Do what you say. I always tell folks, we make the job too complicated. What did you tell the voters you were going to do when you ran for the office? If they put you in that office, go do what you said. President Trump did it better than any president we've ever had. Bernie Marino will do the same thing in the United States Senate. That's why I'm for him, and that's why I hope you'll go vote for him here on Tuesday if you haven't voted already. Finally, let me just finish with this. It is a great country. I don't know if you knew, I, I, I think I said this a couple years ago. We did a similar rally here at the same location. But any of you, some of you may have read some of David McCullough's books, historian, he passed away a couple years ago, wrote a number of great books. Wrote about 1776, John Adams, he wrote about, he wrote about the, the Johnstown flood, but he wrote two on Ohio. One was The Pioneers, great book about the settlement of Ohio and the, and the Northwest Territory. But the other one, and probably my favorite, is the book he wrote on the Wright brothers. Something we know a little, little about here in this, this, part of the, this part of our great state. But in the opening paragraph of that book, chapter one, first paragraph, David McCullough says this. He said, someone once asked Wilbur Wright what it takes to be successful. And he said, pick out two good parents and be born in Ohio. Stop and think about it. I think what he was really getting at, what Wilbur Wright was really saying is, if you have a supportive pe group of people around you, family, people who help you, and you're willing to set goals and work hard in this country, the sky's the limit. This is America. You have a goal. You have a dream. You want to go make it happen. You can do it here. That's what Bernie Marino did. That's what President Trump did. That is the American story. The scary thing is, if the left continues to have control of our government, positions of influence and power, I think that dream, that thing that's always characterized our country, I think it's in jeopardy. That's what's at stake in this election. Again, that's why we need Bernie Marino in the Senate. President Trump in the White House, and, that, and we need to make sure the House of Representatives stays in Republican hands so that we can do the things that need to be done. And our attitude is real simple. I say this probably every, every speech I give. I think our charge is real basic. It's what Paul told Timothy, my favorite scripture verse. 2 Timothy 4, 7, Paul says this, fight the good fight, finish the course, keep the faith. And I tell people I love that verse because it's not a sissy, wimpy verse. It's a verse of action. Fight, finish, keep. Words that characterize, we're not timid. Americans are tough people. We're not timid people. Words of action. Fight, finish, keep. If we do that, we're going to win in November. If we do that, we'll get this country back on the right path. We'll continue to be the greatest country ever. That's, what we, that's what's at stake. That's what President Trump believes, and that's why he is fighting so hard for us. God bless you all, and God bless our great country. Thank you. Jim Jordan had everyone on their feet here in Dayton, Ohio, as we await President Trump and also hear from Bernie Marino as he uh, works to claim the Republican nomination for senator. And the music's dying down, and so we'll see if there's going to be another speaker coming out. Ladies and gentlemen, please welcome to the stage candidate for United States Senate, Bernie Marino. Travel on this one day here and the next day 
What do you guys think? Is this the greatest country on earth or what? Yeah. That's right. So there's something you need to know about me. I am one of the luckiest people you'll ever meet. Because 35 years ago, I won the lottery and got to marry that woman right there. I'm a husband, but I'm also a dad. I've got two of my children here, Kevin and Emily. Thank you for being here. Three grandkids. Can you believe that? Three grandkids. You know, this is um, a special day for me, obviously. Imagine that in your wildest dreams that a kid born in Columbia, South America could stand in Dayton, Ohio and run for the United States Senate. That is something that is unique to America. And that's why when I watch this country, who I love like you do, allow almost 10 million people to invade our country, break our laws, and then be rewarded for doing so. And I ask myself, how does this happen? How does it happen that what we understand to be common sense, legal, but zero, zero, not 5,000 a day, not 2,000 a day, zero illegal immigration. How does this happen? None of us here vote for Democrats. Right? Am I right? No? We vote for Republicans. But then what happens is something magical happens, and magical in a bad way. These guys get to Washington, D.C., and their spine is metaphorically removed from their body. They get down there and they cave, and they become reliable votes with Democrats. Look at what happened in 2017. President Trump took office and fought Republicans just as much as he fought Democrats. Over and over again, they've let us down. And I understand, I got to understand why that is. They care more about the job and their advancement in their career and making money, being a public servant, instead of taking care of this country. This is what, this is the issue in this election. This is the last gasp of breath of the swamp rhino establishment in Ohio. And I need you on Tuesday to stab it right in the heart and make it clear that in Ohio, we put America first. We don't put the interests of foreign countries first. We take care of our own. We don't take care of people who break our laws. One of my opponents has said the following words. And I'm not often shocked, because in politics, let me tell you, there's a lot of crazy stuff. He says to the Cleveland Plain Dealer, who endorsed him, by the way, is that embarrassing? Is that embar Can you imagine being endorsed by the Cleveland Plain Dealer? Yikes. He says to them, we have to stop being distracted by the problems of our border to fulfill our obligation to Ukraine. This flag on my lapel pin says that I have an obligation to the United States of America.
I see these. I see these cowardly politicians merge with Democrats, get covered by the media, and betray us. So for one, my wife and I never imagined that we would at this stage in our life decide to run for public office to serve. Now I'll tell you, about a month ago I turned 57 years old. Well, so part of me is excited about going to the Senate because I'm going to feel like a child. <laughs> and they're going to look at me and say, he could take the stairs by himself. <laughs> right? You don't need a wheelchair. Right? They, they'll have extra pudding available. Not that there's anything wrong with that. But look, this is about the agenda for this country for our next generation. I see so many young faces out here today, young kids. I think I met Red out here, little five-year-old boy, other young kids. Look at the country that we got. And it's our responsibility to give this country better to that next generation. And that's what the America First agenda means. So let's summarize what this means. It means we have legal immigration that benefits us. You learn the language. English is our official language. We don't need to vote in five different languages. We vote in English. It means you assimilate. You become part of America. America doesn't become part of you. The melting pot. It means you come here to benefit our economy, not to lower wages. It means we're an energy dominant nation. We will no longer bend the knee to foreign countries for energy. We will have them bend the knee to us for energy. And if you're in this country illegally, if you're in this country illegally, listen clearly. Listen very clearly. Starting in January of 2025, you will be deported. And if you work in Washington, D.C., and you're part of the deep state swamp, get your resume ready. And if you happen to work for the Federal Department of Education, have it early, have it ready real early. Because next year it's gone. It's gone. We're going to put parents in local communities in charge of their schools. And to any of those squishy Republicans that think you're going to infringe on our Second Amendment rights, never on my watch. And to the WEF and the World Health Organization, if you think that you can fool us ever again by unleashing a virus on America, locking us down, forcing us to get vaccinated, forcing us to get masked, you're wrong! We got a lot of media back there, so I'm going to say this really carefully and slowly. I need all of you to do the following for me. Listen carefully. I need you to vote 11 times. That means you go vote, 
You go vote. You can do that today. You can do that tomorrow, or you can do that on Tuesday. But find 10 other people. Find 10 other people who say to you, I'm sick of this, I'm sick of that. I'm sick of going to McDonald's, buying two large fries and a strawberry milkshake and paying 15 bucks. That used to be seven bucks. I'm sick of going to the grocery store and having to return groceries because the groceries are unaffordable. So tell them, well, you know what? You're going to do something about it. And you're going to go vote on Tuesday and send a clear message to the swamp rhinos that they're done and we're taking over this country and putting America first. Now, all of us here, all of us here love this country. We deeply, deeply love this country. We're also, I would venture to guess, all people of faith and believers. So let me just tell you something that's going to happen. All of us here, one point or another, will be dead. And we're going to get to, we're going to, get to go to heaven. And I want you to imagine that moment for a second. You get to heaven. And imagine what that's like. What that feels like. And imagine who you get to meet. You get to meet the 55 people that signed our Declaration of Independence. You get to meet James Madison, Abraham Lincoln, John Jay, Alexander Hamilton, George Washington. And you're going to talk to them and you're going to say, they're going to tell you their story. They're going to tell you what they did when this country, which is a gift from God, what they did for their country when their country needed them. Imagine what that moment is going to be like where you think, my God, these are some pretty incredible people. But then they're going to stop talking. They're going to look to all of you. They're going to look at me. They're going to look at each one of us and say, what is your story? What did you do when your country needed you? You know what? You know what, you know what starts today? We're going to build a pretty damn good story. Because when our country needs us right now, our country needs us. It's being taken away from us, and we're not going to let that happen because the best American years are in front of us and not behind us. We're going to make America great again. We're going to make America strong again. And we are going to give this country to our kids and grandkids better than the way we got it. Thank you. God bless America. from Bernie Marino running for Senate here in Ohio. Trump-backed candidate going against two others in the Republican primary. The winner of that will face the incumbent Democrat in November. Ladies and gentlemen, please welcome to the stage United States Senator J.D. Vance. <laughs> Wow, what a crowd. What a crowd of patriots ready to elect Bernie Marino to the United States Senate, aren't we? Well, I should correct myself a little bit. We've got a crowd of patriots, and we've, of course, also got the fake news media in the back there. Hello, friends. Welcome. Welcome to MAGA country. There, it's okay, it's okay. I'm sure there are a few good journalists back there, about 30, a few of them. 
Look, I, 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 I got to be quick here um, because the man of the hour is about to land. I think in about five or ten minutes. And are we excited to have Donald Trump back in the Buckeye State? You know, I, I was thinking about this, this election. <laughs> And I was thinking to myself, you know, that uh, we got the Calvary coming in November, ladies and gentlemen. We're going to reelect Donald Trump, President of the United States. That's the good news. The good news. Now, here is not the bad news, but the open news. We don't know the answer. The answer, the question is, are we going to send America First fighters to Washington, D.C. to help the Trump agenda? Yes. Are we going to send a bunch of rhinos? No. So we got to send Bernie Marino to the United States Senate to help me out and help everybody else out. Look, I, 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 I got to be honest with you. This election in the state of Ohio, it's funny how it always comes down to the state of Ohio, doesn't it? But what the national media with their slime jobs and their slander and their disgusting con content. And what the establishment rhinos are doing to Bernie Marino is disgraceful. I'm sure you've seen the TV ads. I'm sure you've seen the money pouring into this state. Ladies and gentlemen, the rhinos don't determine who our senator is going to be. The media doesn't determine who our senator is going to be. We determine who the senator from the state of Ohio will be. And we're going to choose Bernie Marino. you got to ask yourself, why are they throwing everything at him in this final few days? Why are they throwing everything at Bernie Marino? Because they know he answers to you and not to them. It's that simple. Do we need a senator who answers to the people of the state of Ohio? Yes, we do. Do we need a senator who will not compromise with the D.C. swamp but will fight the D.C. swamp? That's Bernie Marino. Do we need a senator who will tell the criminal migrants who have come into this country, broken our laws, and killed our citizens, get out of this country, we don't need you, we need Bernie Marino. Now, it, 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 is, it is the craziest thing to me with this crazy border crisis that you have Republicans in the state of Ohio still saying that we need to give amnesty to illegal aliens. And then you've got a president who called the murderer of Lake and Riley, refused to call that person an illegal, apologized for calling that person illegal. What disgraceful conduct, conduct for the president of the United States. Well, I, I don't know about you, but I'm a lot less worried with what we call people and a lot more worried that we have illegal aliens killing people in our country. Let's get them out of this country. But, 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 but you all know, you all know that as lucky as we are to have a fighter like Donald Trump, and I'm excited to hear what the president's going to say. Are we excited to hear what the president's going to say? If we send rhinos, my friends, to Washington, D.C., people who are stabbing him in the back and fighting him at every step of the way, yes, it will be good to have Donald Trump as president, but they will stab him in the back and they'll make him less effective than he would be with real allies in Washington. I am proud. I am proud that I have been an ally of Donald Trump's in Washington, D.C. I'm proud of the fact that I haven't tucked tailed and run like so many politicians have. But I... But I have got to tell you, there aren't that many good ones in Washington. You all know that. I know that. But you know who one of the good ones is? Bernie Marino. My friend. A great supporter of mine, but a good guy. Because you send Bernie Marino to the United States Senate, he's not going to collaborate with the people who are destroying this country. He's not going to bend the knee to the people who are destroying this country. Send Bernie Marino to the United States Senate. He'll fight for you. He'll fight for the agenda. And he'll fight to take this country back. God bless you guys. Let's get Bernie Marino elected on Tuesday. Thank you.
speaking to the crowd here in Dayton, Ohio. You know, uh, we'll talk a lot about what they discussed here in a little bit, but I want to remind everyone, all of the viewers uh, at home, that uh, the wellness company... You can never be too prepared when it comes to uh, another pandemic or a sickness or the bug striking your height, your household. The medical emergency kit is a must-have for every American. It should be in every household. I have one. It came in handy for me. Go to MakeCareGreatAgain.com. Type in RSBN in the code, and you'll get $45 off plus free shipping. It comes with ivermectin, a Z-Pack, amoxicillin, eight life-saving drugs that can help you in case you need it. And I love just knowing that I have an emergency medical kit in my kitchen. So go and get yours today. Be prepared just in case uh, Dr. Peter McCullough, who was Trump's uh, doctor uh, and his staff, did a great job in, in putting together all of these kits for the American people. MakeCareGreatAgain.com. Add some of those emergency kits to your cart. Type in RSBN in the code, and you'll receive a huge discount plus free shipping. Before we get to our next sponsor, I am floored by Bernie Moreno. I've never heard him speak live. I haven't really heard many of his speeches. But talk about an outsider, as you mentioned, Vanessa, a businessman that is doing it for the right reasons. You can tell when somebody speaks with that kind of... Uh, fervor for lack of a better term but also with the content that was so bullseye i was standing over to the the right of the camera over there and i, I literally uh, teared up just a little bit because of when he was saying you know when you go to heaven and you talk to you know the some of the founding fathers and 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 he, he asked the question what will you do with your story powerful moment there huge fan of bernie yeah. i followed him on two social just now you know what i mean like have you heard him live at all? Have you interviewed I've never him heard or? him live. I do follow him, and I know that he's America first. I know he's a great patriot. I know the entire Trump family is friends with him, and they uh, advocate for him, and they support him, and they've endorsed him. So I know that he's definitely MAGA and definitely loves this country. Never seen him live. This was the first time, but I do follow him on social media and follow uh, what he's trying to do, and that's, of course, get into the Senate uh, to help back President Trump when he gets into office. And so Ohio, you're up next. Tuesday's the day. Please vote and vote for Donald Trump, who has already secured the delegate counts needed to win the nomination, but also Bernie Marino as well. He's up against two other Republicans. Whoever wins that primary goes against the incumbent who is seeking a fourth term uh, Democrat in November. So Ohio, pay attention. Knock out the Democrat. We don't need him anymore. Get Bernie Marino in and that way we can have another MAGA first patriot. No rhinos in uh, the Senate come exactly. January. President Trump pulling out the stops today. J.D. Vance, Jim Jordan, Christy Nome. Uh, you just heard of course from Bernie Marino and then Moreno, and then we will hear from President Trump, as we know, yeah. uh, coming up when uh, Trump Force One lands. So that will be awesome. We have a two camera shoot here, so you're going to see some great pictures live of Trump Force One uh, landing here at the Dayton International Airport, Vanessa. I'm ready for it. I keep trying to listen for the sound because uh, JD Vance said it'll be five to ten minutes, and no pressure, President Trump, but we're <laughs> waiting on you. We're patiently waiting here with thousands of People from Ohio, we've met people from Tennessee. Uh, people have driven from all over. And also what's good to see are the kids. I've seen so many kids here today, even a little boys here with his family celebrating his birthday. You know how kids are, they wanna be with their friends, they wanna go to Chuck E. Cheese, they wanna go to all these places and do all the fun stuff for their birthday, but not this little kid. He wanted to come celebrate with President Trump. The mom, the dad, uh, that kid, and then the brothers and sisters all had Trump sweatshirts on. It was just a really cool sight to see the family doing what the family's made to do, right? You know, uh, that's what we're called to do, and it's, it's great to uh, support that here in our country. Now, uh, one of our other sponsors, Tax Network USA. As we mentioned earlier in the broadcast, remember, you know, obviously we have April 15th just around the corner. So if you have any issues there with any back taxes or need a little bit of assistance with filing and, and just have questions, that information you see right there on your screen, you can reach out to the Tax Network USA, Vanessa. 
Yes, absolutely. TNUSA.com, that 1-800 number is on your screen. They are uh, licensed in every state, so no matter where you live, make sure that you get uh, in touch with them, and they'll definitely help you out. Hey, I'm from Texas. You know we love our beef and our meat and all of the good things. Uh, season it. You know, it's just oh, we have some good cooks in Texas. Good barbecue. Hey, but I want to tell you about uh, this company, really great company. They're based out of Texas, and they can ship you boxes of food that can last as a shelf life, Matthew, of 25 years. Yeah, and it's something that isn't like you know that these people are the patriot owned you know believers that are doing what's right for the country right no MR mrna injections that's a big question now you wonder what's what's going on with our food well you can trust these people right there you can see that information right there on your screen as well you know when i was looking through all of the uh items that they are selling from ribeye to new york strip sirloin and tenderloin makes me pepper, hungry beef, i know <laughs> right so i mean might as well. I mean, I might as well order this uh, as soon as we get off the air here. I was actually looking at the website last yeah. night in the hotel room and thinking, okay, which one, which which packet do I want to, uh, or box should I put in my cart? Because, you know, we have been told, be prepared for anything. The Democrats will pull out any stop uh, yeah. to try to stop President Trump from being in office come November. What if we have another pandemic? What if we have a terror attack of some sort with all these illegal immigrants um, coming into our country? What if prices skyrocket at the grocery store and you just can't afford food any longer because most Americans can't now anyway? Have this food ready and on standby. Um, my family and I were just talking about this a couple of weeks ago, Matthew, that um, what are some good meals that we can have that would last us, you know, a couple of weeks in case we need it. And here you go. Here's your answer. Yeah. And, and there are people that are out there wanting to freeze dry food. I mean, anything that could have that backup plan. Uh, one of the things that I wanted to point out before we uh, stop talking about these great, uh, uh, our great sponsor is it says, don't settle for freeze dried beef crumbles. It says, get premium cuts of steak from an un unabashedly America first company and use that promo code RSBN. You'll get 25% off. So there you go. Good stuff right there. Yes. I think I'm going to walk uh, over to the side there yeah. and, and see if we can talk to some patriots down there. Vanessa, as you take it over from here at the main stage. As we yes, get I will right stay now. right here. President Trump coming on stage here at 4 o'clock Eastern time. Uh, so that's about uh, 24 minutes from now he should be here. But we'll see his... Trump Force One flying around here and coming into view here shortly. So everyone is on their feet. They're waiting. And this is usually what happens when we are at an outside event. They start painting the skies looking because they can spot Trump Force One way in the distance when it's just a little dot in the sky. And so that's what everyone's doing right now. They have their phones on standby uh, waiting for President Trump. We talked a lot about illegal immigration. J.D. Vance talked about it. Uh, Bernie Marino talked about it. It's got to end. And that when you start asking Americans what's their number one concern right now, Americans are struggling financially. And that's not their number one concern. It's a huge concern. It comes in at number two. But the number one concern is illegal immigration. It has to stop. It has to end. And I firmly believe that Joe Biden will not put pen to paper today and put an end to it. Because if he does, that is proof that Donald J. Trump was right again. And he can't do that. The Democrats can't do that. So they'd rather put America in jeopardy. Have us worried about the next terror attack. Have drugs flooding into our country. Fentanyl, cocaine, meth, marijuana flooding in, providing them to your kids. And then causing all this chaos just so they don't have to say Donald Trump was right. We should continue the wall. We should shut down the borders. They just won't do it. So they'd rather put Americans at risk and also not call them illegals. They can't call them illegals either because they'd have to correct themselves if they called them illegals. Well, guess what? They came in the country not legally. So what's the word that goes against legally? Illegally. So they are here illegally, Joe Biden. Just for clarification there if you were confused. So 
illegal immigration a huge issue, and we, we need to put a stop to it, and we know that President Trump will do that day one in January. Of course, the economy, uh, another huge issue. People can't save. People are struggling. They can't afford the grocery store. They can't afford gasoline. They can't afford to pay their rent. I saw on the news headlines just yesterday that foreclosures are hitting all-time high. People cannot afford the basics under Joe Biden. And you know what I have to say about this, too? Looking at the polls, President Trump is doing very well against Joe Biden in a head-to-head -head matchup in November, especially in the swing states, doing very good here in Ohio as well. He's up 20 points in some of the polls I saw uh, just today. Interactive polls, poly market showing President Trump over 20% up in the uh, Ohio polls, which, again, is a swing state. But there are never Trumpers out there, people who we, we call never Trumpers. They will go against Trump for whatever reason. They just don't like him or they don't like his tweets or they don't like whatever. So you would rather wonder from night to night how you're going to feed your family. You'd rather wonder what kind of criminals are running through your neighborhood. You'd rather have our police officers, our brave men and women, take salary cuts and not get the backing they need that you'd rather our military go woke the list goes on like christy gnome just said get over yourselves get over yourselves go with someone who loves this country and will put america first look i'm here to say it i'd rather see mean tweets all day yeah some tough love there and that's what these people need so I think President Trump should do more of it actually to be honest with you do more of it being you know my feelings are hurt and I'm offended those days need to go away I'm sick of it I'm over it the world needs some tough love and President Trump is the one to hand it to him so um, like Christy Nome said great governor get over yourselves get over your pettiness and uh, make sure you go with a, the candidate who is America first. And also, you know, it was mentioned today as well, the State of the Union. I think part of my jaw is still sitting on my living room floor. I could not believe the President of the United States in his address to the nation of the great United States of America starts off by talking about a foreign country. He starts talking about Ukraine straight out of the gates. I was in complete shock. Shouldn't be surprised, but I actually was. Because never in the history of the State of the Union has a president got up and spoke to the American people talking about the problems in another country. Because that's his concern. Ukraine is number one to him. China is on the forefront for him. America is last for President Biden. He doesn't care. He wants this cookie to crumble. And President Trump wants a successful bakery. Okay, so we got to get over it. We got to get done with him and move on to November. And today, we got to get America First candidates in line as well. And that's why we are here for Bernie Marino. Ohio, if you're watching, make sure you vote for him, Senator of this great state. I'm Vanessa Broussard reporting to you live from Dayton, Ohio, as we wait for President Donald J. Trump to take the stage, stomping for Bernie Marino for Senate. It's a beautiful day, a bit windy, and when I say bit, I use that term loosely because it's really windy out here today. Everyone has hats on. We're having a great time, though. All right. On the ground with the people is our Matthew Alvarez. We're going to go to him and see what he has to say as we wait for President Donald J. Trump. Thank you so much, Jim. How you doing, Senator? Uh, we have uh, Jim Jordan right here. Sir, what was it like to hear from Bernie Moreno up there? I mean, that was a fat, passionate speech. Yeah, no, I mean, Bernie's lived the American dream. An immigrant family came here. It's one of the reasons I'm supporting him. Uh, I think one of the reasons President Trump's supporting him and had a goal, worked hard, made it happen, successful, and now he wants to give back to our great country. He's the kind of guy we need along with J.D., who's already there doing great work, uh, the kind of guy we need in the United States Senate. And finally, Representative Jordan, can you tell us about that Bible scripture once again? 
Second Timothy 4 7. Fight the good fight, finish the course, keep the faith. I love it because, as I said on the stage, it's, it's, it's words of action, words of energy, words of fit, fit America. I um, almost feel like Paul was writing to all us Americans when he, uh, when he wrote, that, wrote that scripture to Timothy. Representative, thank you. You bet, thank you. All right, uh, just live action right there. Obviously, him walking right by. We also heard word, word that Trump Force One uh, is arriving in about 10 minutes, so we'll be looking to the skies for that here in a second. Before we talk to some of the people here, uh, let's talk about that free Trump book. Uh, you'll see that information right there on your screen. Uh, from Mike Huckabee down there in Hendersonville, Tennessee. Gorgeous area, uh, a part of uh, Middle Tennessee there, north of Nashville, about 35 minutes. Uh, so let's stop the indoctrination of the youth, right? Let's get them uh, learning the truth under the Trump administration. When it comes to when he was president between 2016 to 2020, the freetrumpbook.com. Get that information. You see it right there on your screen. And go ahead and order that. Now, before we ask a few people their thoughts here, we're going to see if they're going to do some USA chants if they want. I got about 100. Ready? One, two, three. Let's go. Obviously, as you can see, just having a good time here, waiting for the president. You know, it's funny, a few of the people to my uh, right or left were starting to chant USA. I said, not yet, not yet. We're about to be on, but that was awesome. Eddie, let's go, Brandon. <laughs> anyway, just having fun with them here. How you doing, man? What's your... Well, there you go. Uh, go ahead and listen. All right, good stuff, good stuff. So, um, ma'am, you were saying, is this your dad? or it's my father. Okay, can you tell us about your father? Um, this is Richard Stump, and he is a Vietnam vet, and he is the loyalist Trump supporter you will ever find. Sir, your jersey, first of all, says number 24, Patriots. On the back, it says Trump, doesn't it? Yes, it does. Yes, it does. Your thoughts about uh, President Donald Trump? I mean, sir, thank you for your service. Oh, yes. I mean, I... I really believe he's still my commander in chief because I think we had that election stolen in 2020. And what the Democrats and Congress is doing to this country now is this I've, I've lost blood on foreign soil for this country. And what they're doing to this country is a slap in the face of every veteran that's ever served this country. I didn't say it better. Everybody, let's give them a clap, a round of applause right there. Thank you. And that jersey, by the way, is very nice. Can I buy it off you? Yeah. It's a, on, can it's, I buy that jersey off you? Yeah, you can have a price on that. I'm just messing with you. I'm just messing with you. Thank you for your service, yeah, though, okay. seriously. If you can get President Trump to sign it for me, I'd appreciate that. All right. Well, President Trump, if you're watching, there's a jersey right there that uh, this, this young man would like to have signed. So thanks again. Thank thanks you. again. USA, let's go. USA! All right, and now let's listen to uh, Trump Force One on the way. Trump right now. Tyler, if you could let me know if, uh, if I'm on or if Vanessa's on right now. Okay, we are live right now as we're looking up to the sky waiting for Trump Force One right now. And if you like Top Gun, which I'm kind of corny, I like the 80s movies, right? Back to the Future, Top Gun, that kind of thing. An awesome Top Gun song right now. So I'll be quiet for a minute. You guys listen in. And then uh, we'll be talking here as Trump Force One gears up to make a landing here at the Dayton International Airport. An awesome moment here where the Wright brothers were the ones working on the first airplane. And then, of course, in North Carolina, that first flight. Vanessa Broussard and Matthew Alvarez live here on Right Side Broadcasting Network as we're looking to the sky right now. Still don't see a sighting of the Trump Force One, but earlier today, before I get to that, let's just listen in live for a second. I'm told, okay, okay, I'm told we can go to the left right now, that it'll be to our left.
It's right there at the Wright Patterson Air Force Base. In there were American uh, military jets and also um, Air Force One was there with eight different uh, presidents that were on that Air Force One from JFK all the way up to Clinton. Uh, if you'd like to see that, uh, go to Truth Social. At Matthew Alvarez has that, uh, some of the video uh, showing that airplane. It'll be pretty awesome to see Trump Force One land here as everyone's looking out to the sky. As it's going to have to, you know, obviously if it's at 15,000 feet, it's going to, you know, circle and get lower and lower and make a stop here. It's been a while since we've seen uh, President Trump uh, deplane from Trump Force One at a rally. He'll walk down the steps. He'll show Joe Biden how to walk down the steps properly. And then, of course, when he departs, he'll make it up the steps and, and wave to the American people. And, you know, sometimes you see this uh, at sunset or at night, but right now we're Blue skies here in Dayton, Ohio. It's a beautiful day, very windy, of course, so it's a little bit of a bumpy ride, I'm sure, up there. You're watching Right Side Broadcasting Network. This is live from Dayton, Ohio. An amazing moment for the people here. Not many people really talking. They're just looking and looking to experience something pretty cool as we are just a few days away from the primary in Ohio. Bernie Moreno on stage just uh, moments ago. And we'll be throwing it up to Vanessa in a few minutes here, and we'll be hearing from President Trump very shortly. You're watching Right Side Broadcasting Network. Go ahead and send this to as many friends as you can and family and on Rumble, on YouTube, on the app, and on the website. Let's send it back right now to Vanessa Broussard, who's live on the Media Riser. Right Side Broadcasting Network back here on stage in the media risers. We're told Trump Force One has landed here in Dayton, Ohio. We are just minutes away from President Trump taking the stage, stomping for Bernie Marino for Senate. The people are on their feet. Their cameras are out. They're standing on their chairs. They're ready to see a first glimpse of uh, Trump Force One, which will be making its way taxiing over here momentarily. Secret Service is in place. Local law enforcement's in place. The Trump team on the ground is standing by. As Trump Force One taxis its way here to the crowd. You can also hear the sounds of Top Gun behind us. Playing over the loudspeakers. We want to thank the sponsor of our crowd cam today as well. If you're looking for delicious coffee to start your mornings, this is a patriotic company. All the information's on your screen. There is Trump Force One. We'll let you listen in as President Trump makes his way here before thousands of people in Dayton, Ohio. Well, as you're taking a live look right now at Trump Force One taxiing to the spot here, we do want to thank our friends at Birch Gold real quick. I mean, a great sponsor right there. Text Trump to 9898. Get that tax sheltered IRA. Gold, silver, precious metals. Our great sponsor, the Birch Gold Group, here right now on Right Side Broadcasting Network. There is Trump Force One arriving here in Dayton, Ohio. A lot of history in Dayton, of course, with the Wright brothers. And there is the absolutely gorgeous Trump Force One. Let's take a live listen right now as he arrives. So taxiing in here, then 
those stairs, of course, will be uh, driven over to the front of the plane and the rear. And then President Trump will obviously walk down and deliver a speech in front of a very eager Dayton, Ohio crowd. As I mentioned earlier, we're five days from the primary here. We know President Trump is the presumptive nominee, but still going out to vote in support of 45 on Tuesday. But also, again, you've got huge races in Arizona, Ohio, Pennsylvania. There's uh, Whether it's local, state, federal, we the people get an opportunity to vote our people in office hoping, praying, believing, and working extremely hard for a simple thing, a free and a fair election. That's what we're looking for in this country, and that's what the people here are standing in awe, to be honest, of someone that has done some great things, many great things for our country from 2016 to 2020. And still, even to this day, standing up for the American people. And he's not alone. President Trump has uh, We the People. He also has Matt Gates and MTG and Carrie Lake and Bernie Moreno and, and a number of uh, others out there that are running for office and a few in Washington that are on Team Trump. But it's not just, again, it's not just the glitz and glam of a great plane and a, a, a let's just be honest, a badass of a, of a person, you know? This is about standing for the actual Constitution, standing for the First Amendment, the Second Amendment, standing for our country. We are live here, Right Side Broadcasting Network, Vanessa Broussard along with Matthew Alvarez. If you'd like to follow on Truth Social, it's at RSBN. And if you'd like to follow Vanessa and I, it's at Matthew Alvarez and at Vanessa Broussard. And go ahead and follow, uh, follow uh, Brian Glenn, at Brian, uh, Liz Willis, Grace Saldana, a number of people. An awesome moment here in Dayton, Ohio. Pretty awesome that the plane, you know, even though it's these gusts and these the wind gusts are upwards of 20, 30 miles per hour out here, and the fact that you know the, still got to fly through that, obviously a, a bumpy ride, most likely for the, uh, the president and his staff who are on Trump Force One right now, and you can see the doors are open. People are starting to slowly make their way out. Vanessa, quite an awesome, awesome scene here. It really is. And, and getting some information about what President Trump will be speaking about today. He's going to talk about keeping his promise in his first four years of office to the workers of Ohio. Uh, he says that he has ended the disaster known as NAFTA, the worst trade deal ever made. He's going to talk to the crowd about that. He's also going to talk about Bernie, of course, one of the big reasons he's here. He's running against a, a rhino. Uh, he's going to talk about the other candidates in the race and why why Bernie is the top choice for Ohio. He's also going to uh, talk about rebuilding our cities into beacons of hope. Take over and take back Washington, D.C. Terminating Crooked Joe's electric vehicle mandate. He'll talk about that as well. So... President Trump is going to also address our veterans here. He loves our veterans, and uh, so he, he's got a, a packed speech today, Matthew, and we're excited and eager to hear from him as Ohio goes out to vote on Tuesday, just days away. President Trump here stumping for votes for Bernie Marino for U.S. Senate, a MAGA first candidate who uh, we know will do a wonderful job uh, working hand-to-hand -hand with President Trump when he gets back in office. Definitely. A lot of Agenda 47 policies and issues to be discussed here by President Trump to be shared with the American people. 
uh, while you're watching here and uh, waiting for the 45th president and uh, the one that won the 46th presidency, um, hopefully a third coming up, and waiting for that staff and waiting for the president to deplane, we want to thank our friends, our great sponsor, Birch Gold Group. Text Trump to triple ninety eight. Get that free info kit on gold, silver, precious metals. Get a tax shelter, sheltered IRA, and also, we know that the other countries, the BRICS countries, are trying to devalue the United States dollar. So you got to have a backup plan. Why not do it with something like gold, silver, and precious metals through? The Birch Gold Group, one of our great sponsors here at Right Side Broadcasting Network. A pretty awesome moment it's right now. Donald Trump running for president. He bought full page ads in three East Coast newspapers today stating his views on foreign policy, and these ads will win him a following. In the ads, he says, there's nothing wrong with American foreign policy that little backbone won't cure. And he says, we have no business spending ourselves broke in the Middle East protecting ships that are not ours and oil that we don't need. Rumblings in the Trump camp point as far as the presidency. Somebody has to help this country and if they don't, the country and the world are in big trouble because within a short period of time, as sure as we're sitting here, there's not going to be a country and there's not going to be a world. I have no intention of running for president and if it got so bad, I would never want to rule it out totally. Together we will determine the course of America and the world for many, many years to come. For too long, a small group in our nation's capital has reaped the rewards of government while the people have borne the cost. That all changes starting right here and right now because this moment is your moment. It belongs to you. The forgotten men and women of our country will be forgotten no longer. The Republican primary is over. Donald Trump has this nomination locked up. Everyone is listening to you now. I will fight for you with every breath in my body, and I will never, ever let you down. My fellow Americans, our movement is far from over. In fact, our fight has only just begun. A great, powerful video there by President Trump. So obviously a great moment there. And you know, it's, it's interesting. You have serious moments, Vanessa. You have, uh, you have fun moments like this right now with the YMCA, uh, the village people playing. Right. These are songs that we usually hear at events for President Donald J. Trump. Gets the crowd going. They're excited. They've been here for hours, some of them since yesterday or the early morning hours this morning. And so it's been long days for them, but uh, the music definitely helps the, the vibe here. They uh, get going as they start doing the YMCA right now. So we're uh, moments away from President Donald J. Trump exiting Trump Force One. You can see that the doors of the jet are open. Uh, President Trump is on board and he'll be walking down those stairs uh, momentarily to a crowd of thousands here in Dayton. That's awesome. I mean, it's it's great to see. It's a packed house here. Now, let's dive into Agenda 47. This is what the nation would look like under a second Trump administration. Uh, he would work to rebuild the greatest economy in history, fair trade for the American worker, unleash energy dominance. Uh, he would work to secure the borders and reclaim national sovereignty. War on the drug cartels, stop crime and restore safety. Care for our veterans, reject globalism and embrace patriotism. 
Can I, can I stop you at the care for our veterans? I want to thank all the veterans who are watching today and tell you, I was just thinking about you last night. And the fact that here are these illegal immigrants who are getting free health care, free housing. And I actually saw a man on the street looking for work who was a homeless veteran. And it makes me sick, Matthew, to know that our veterans are homeless. They're looking for jobs. They don't get the proper health care that they need. They have fought for our country, many disabled. And this is what they get is thanks but no thanks. The illegals come first. We're going to tend to them. Then if we have any extra resources, we may get to you next. I'm sorry this is happening to you. This is why President Trump is so important for him to get in office so we can put an end to all this craziness and put you back first because that's exactly where our veterans belong. Well said, Vanessa. I mean, we were just interviewing a veteran over uh, to the right of our uh, the stage here. And everybody was, you know, clapping for him. It was, and he, he spoke in perfect sound bites, you know, about what he's done for this country and that he couldn't believe that we're dealing with the things that we're dealing with right now. Think about it. It almost is like this, you know, the city shining on a hill, right? The, the country 247 years ago built on freedom. Yes, there were mistakes made early on, but things have been all turned around. We're trying to get everything back to the Constitution. And it's like these uh, the, the left-wing leadership is, is like this gnat or like, a, like a kind of something that's just on us that's just trying to mess things up. And it's like, guys, if you don't like freedom, if you don't like prosperity, a capital capitalism, if you don't like Christianity or Judeo-Christian values, please, please, God, please move to another nation. But by the way, that's for America first. But I, I don't even want, I don't even want to wish that on another country. I want, I, I mean, let's be real. All of, we want freedom. The whole world wants freedom. The people do, at least in my opinion. It's just that small group of people trying to control the masses. And these are the people who are in office. So we need to get these people out of office. And that's why, uh, you know, people like Bernie Marino need to be in because, uh, as long as you have these rhinos and leftists and, and Democrats and liberals in office uh, running the show, this is the country we're going to live in. So it's very important election uh, year. 2024 is finally here. It's our turn to shine. So let's rock and roll, America. It's time for us to uh, take back our country. Amen. And we're less than. Here we go. And gentlemen, please welcome the next president of the United States. President Donald J. Trump. And I'm proud to be an American, where at least I know I'm free. And I won't forget the men who died, who gave that right to me. And I gladly stand up next to you and defend her still today. Cause there ain't no doubt I love this land. From the lakes of Minnesota to the hills of Tennessee, across the plains of Texas, from sea to shining sea, from Detroit down to Houston, and New York to LA, where there's pride in every American heart, and it's time we stand and say.
Ladies and gentlemen, please rise for the horribly and unfairly treated January 6th hostages. flag of the United States of America. and justice for all. Thank you very much. And you see the spirit from the hostages, and that's what they are as hostages. They've been treated terribly and very unfairly, and you know that, and everybody knows that. And we're going to be working on that soon. The first day we get into office, we're going to save our country, and we're going to work with the people to treat those unbelievable patriots, and they were unbelievable patriots and are. You see the spirit just cheering, they're, making, they're cheering while they're doing that, and they did that in prison, and it's a disgrace, in my opinion. So I just want to thank you, and I want to say a very special hello to Dayton, because Dayton turned out to be a big victory for Trump, and that was good for all of us. But I'm thrilled to be back with the proud, hardworking patriots of the great state of Ohio. I won this state, and you won this state. But before going any further, I want to express our love for everyone touched by the terrible tornadoes that hit your state. They really hit it hard. Our hearts are with the families that lost a home or loved ones. and. Uh, it's a very, uh, very serious situation going on right now, so we are all praying for them. And uh, I know everybody here, this is a very big crowd, and I know everybody here feels the same way. As you know, this has been uh, something very important to us. We see pr people in trouble. They're really people in trouble. We're going to help people in trouble. Right now, our country's in trouble. And we're going to help our country that's in trouble, and we're going to make it great again, and we're going to do it very fast. So, as you know, this has been an incredible week for our campaign, unbelievable week. And on Tuesday, we won Georgia, Hawaii, Mississippi, and Washington. And we won them in record numbers, by the way. I mean, the numbers are crazy. What the hell is going on? Something's going on here. Because nobody's ever seen, they've never seen numbers like this. You know what it is? They see how bad these people are that are destroying our country. That's what it is. And that's, in my opinion, what it really is. And uh, we clinched a thing called the Republican nomination for President of the United States.
And to all Republicans, independents, and disillusioned Democrats, of which there are many, I invite you to join our movement to save our country. We're going to save our country. This is the greatest movement in the history of our country. And, you know, I was saying the other day that uh, in 2016, one of the biggest issues was the border. And I sort of won on the border, I guess, maybe. And we fixed the border. We fixed it so good that I couldn't even use it in 2020, even though we got millions and millions more votes in 2020. But we couldn't even talk about it. I'd say, I want to talk about the border. Tell them what a good job. They said, sir, you fixed it. Nobody cares. That border was a tiny fraction of what this border is. This is the worst border in the history of the world. There's never been anything. Millions and millions of people are pouring into our country, probably 15 or 16 million people. That's almost larger than any state we have in the union. And they're coming in from places you don't want to know about. So uh, we're going to fix it again. But boy, what a mess. What these people have done to our country, it's almost hard to believe, frankly. The fastest way to reverse every single Biden disaster is to very simply just put me back in office. We'll get it done quick. We'll get it done very quickly. And we want to have a rock solid majority in the Senate. We want to take over the House. We have incredible people here with us today, some great leaders and uh, leaders that have been warriors for me. And that's why we want to follow up our historic victory this week. That was a great victory, the biggest and the fastest ever. It's never been one that quick. We went, we moved very quickly. We got very tough in the end, didn't we? We had no choice. We wanted to get a little tough to get it over with. And we got it over with. But it's the fastest ever. And uh, that means we have the longest wait ever. Seven months is a long time, a little more than seven months. It's like an eternity when you have people that are incompetent running your country into the ground. But if we could, we're going to take that victory and we're going to add to it with Bernie Marino, who's a fantastic guy. <laughs> Bernie is a fantastic guy. He's getting some very tough Democrat fake treatment right now. And we're not going to stand for it because uh, I know this man. We all know this man. He's a hero. He's a winner. And uh, we're not going to let these people, these people are sick between Russia, Russia, Russia for two years and Ukraine, 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 51 intelligence agents. I went one after another. One would stop and then they'd lie again. And all the way to where we are right now, where we're leading Biden by numbers that nobody's ever seen before. And we have to keep it going. So, Bernie Marino, we want to... Where is Bernie? Is he around here? So, ah, there is Bernie. And a great family. And Max, we love Max. Max was with me for four years, our great congressman. And uh, Bernie, I heard you're doing really well. I heard you had a great poll today. You got to win, Bernie. Don't leave me alone. Don't leave me alone, Bernie. But Ohio needs to defeat your horrendous radical left Democrat, Senator Sherrod Brown, who pretends he's my best friend. He pretends he's my best friend until he gets in and then he goes radical left all the time. You know, if you listen to his commercials, he sounds like he's running with Trump. He's not. He's not. Now, I agree with the president on borders. I like the president on the economy and on if I like him, I think he's great. He's not with me. And the day he gets out, he votes with Biden all the time. And if you vote with Biden, this country is finished. I'll tell you right now. And we have to elect Bernie to get in there and to seal our border, stop inflation, crush the deep state. We started that when we got rid of Comey. Drill, baby, drill and prevent World War Three. And remember this. Remember this. Joe Biden is a great threat to our democracy. He's a tremendous threat to our democracy. His incompetence is the number one reason. Also, he uses the Justice Department, the FBI, to go after his political opponent. Happens to be me. How are we doing? And he's driven my numbers through the roof. Do it one or two more times. Let's, how about a couple of more indictments, Joe, you dumb son of a... A dumb son of a... Somebody said they're indicting this guy into the office and uh, office of president. But uh, they've never done that in this country before. That's never happened. 
But we're going to discuss that. You know the nice thing we have? It's a beautiful day. A little windy out here, I must be honest with you, but that's okay. You know, it's good when you don't have to use a teleprompter, because I can't read a word. And they're moving around. I don't know what the hell I'm doing up here, Bernie. These suckers are moving. My guys did a great job in planting them solidly. Thank goodness. We can do a non-teleprompter speech. It's actually much better. But these teleprompters. They're moving around. I'm trying to go. <laughs> I'm trying to follow. Oh, no, we don't need them. Isn't it nice to have a president who doesn't need a teleprompter? That night? These suckers are moving around. Great job, fellas. I appreciate it. With your vote, we're going to take back the Senate. We're going to win Ohio in November. We're going to win by a lot. You know, we're up like 16 or 18 points. I saw one. We're up 20 points in Ohio. And we're going to look at crooked Joe Biden, and we're going to say, Joe, you're fired. Get out of here. You've done a terrible job. You've done a terrible job. You've been a terrible president. He's a terrible president. He's the worst president we've ever had. There's never been a president so bad as this guy. There's never been anything like it. He's incompetent. He's crooked. He doesn't know what the hell he's doing. Can't walk off a stage. Can't put two sentences together. He's a disaster for our country. You know, I say it. I say it a lot. I used to say five worst presidents, right? Now I say, if you took and I say it, and I think I can go up further. What do you think? Another three or four? Add another three, four, or five? If you took the ten worst presidents in the history of our country, put them together, they will not have done the damage to our country as this incompetent, crooked guy has done to our country. And that's what he is. And, you know, to be honest, I treated him with more respect than I do now. I don't treat him with respect because he did this weaponization thing with the DOJ and the FBI. They raided my house. And once he did that, I said, well, I guess that game is over. Nobody thought it was possible. In fact, even the lunatics over at CNN and MSDNC, they would say, well, no, these aren't crimes. These aren't crimes. You know, you fight an election and they end up indicting you because you fought a crooked election. Think of it. You fight a crooked election and they indict you. They don't indict the guys that made the election crooked. They go, the people that want to have honest elections get themselves in trouble because these people are sick in Washington and we're going to change it around fast, I'll tell you right now. But among my very first actions upon taking office will be to stop the invasion of our country and send Joe Biden's illegal aliens back home. These are the roughest people you've ever seen. You know, now we have a new form of crime. I call it Biden migrant crime, but it's too long. So let's just call it migrant crime. We have a new category. You know, you have vicious crimes, you have violent crimes, you have all these. Now we have migrant crimes and they're rough. They're rough, and it's going to double up, and you see what's happening. You know, throughout the world right now, I don't know if you know this, crime is way, way down. You know why? Because they sent us their criminals. That's why. It's true. It's true. They sent, you know, Venezuela is down 66% because they sent us their gang members and their gangsters. They sent us their drug dealers and their murderers. They're all coming into our country. And Venezuela now, their crime is down 66%. And all over the world, crime is down because they've sent them to the United States of America. We have a stupid president that allows this to happen. Stupid. Thank goodness we have J.D. here. That's all I can tell you. Boy. Hi, J.D. Oh, we have Jim Jordan here. Whoa, we have the heavyweights. We have Jim. We have the whole group. Wow, that's exciting. Now, Jim Jordan doesn't mind the fact that they've sent us all their murders. He's very liberal. You know that. He thinks it's what... No, you know what? I'm looking at J.D. I'm looking at these guys. They're like seething as I talk. Seething. They're so angry. Think of it. All over the world, they're smart people. You know, I know many of the leaders. I got to know them very well. They're smart. 
They're tough. They're streetwise. You know, we have a man that can't, he can't talk. He can't even talk. He doesn't know where the hell he is. He can't find his way off a stage like this. Well, this one's tougher because we only have four. We only have four stairs and a, and a long ramp. So this one I can understand. But he can't find his way off a stage, can't do anything. And he's in charge of dealing with Putin and Xi and Kim Jong-un of North Korea. The whole thing is crazy. It's crazy. But when these guys, who are incredible, when these guys hear the stories about crime, to me, that's one of the worst of all. And this is all over the world. They're sending from all over the world, not just South America, Latin America. They're sending them from Asia. They're sending them from Africa, the Congo. Last night, 22 people arrived from the Congo. Now, the Congo is a very nice place, I would imagine. But they arrived from the Congo and they came from prison. Where are you from in the Congo? What's your address? Prison. Now, these are rough people. They're coming from Africa. They're coming from Asia. They're coming from the Middle East. They're coming from Yemen, all over the place from Yemen. I thought we were bombing Yemen. Here we go with the bombing again. You could solve that whole problem with a phone call if they respected you. But they have no respect for this guy. They have no respect for him whatsoever. Viktor Orban, the prime minister of Hungary, very tough man, probably the toughest guy. There is, frankly, toughest in Europe. A lot of people don't like him because he's tough. He says, I don't want to have criminals in my country, if that's OK with you. They asked him, what's going on with the world? What's happening? This is three weeks ago. They interviewed him. What, what do we do? The world is blowing up. Israel, Ukraine, the whole place is blowing up. What do you do? He said, you get back President Trump. When President Trump was president, we had none of this. Ukraine wouldn't have been attacked. They wouldn't be fighting with Russia. Russia wouldn't have attacked them for a lot of reasons. Number one, I said, don't do it. And number two, the oil prices were too low for them to do it. They couldn't have afforded it. October 7th, Israel would have never been attacked. Iran was broke. I say it respectfully. Iran was broke. They had no money because they weren't allowed to sell oil. I told China, if you buy one barrel of oil from Iran, we're not going to do business with you. We're going to put tariffs all over the place. We're going to raise your tariffs to 100 percent. I already raised them to 50 percent. We took in hundreds of billions of dollars from China. No other president took in 10 cents from China, not 10 cents. We took in hundreds of billions of dollars from China and others and others. Unbelievable when I see it, when I see it going. But I got to know all these people. They're very smart, very streetwise. And I would do the same thing. If I had prisons that were teeming with MS-13 and all sorts of people that they've got to take care of for the next 50 years, right? Young people, they're in jail for years. And if you call them people, I don't know if you call them people. In some cases, they're not people, in my opinion. But I'm not allowed to say that because the radical left says that's a terrible thing to say. They say, you have to vote against him because did you hear what he said about humanity? I've seen the humanity and these humanity, these are bad. These are animals, OK? And we have to stop it. We can't have another Lakin. We have so many people. We have so many people being hurt so badly and being killed. They're sending their prisoners to see us. They're sending and they're bringing them right to the border. And they're dropping them off and we're allowing them to come in. And these are tougher than anybody we've got in the country. These are hardened criminals. And we've got hundreds of thousands of them. And uh, we're not going to take it. We're just not going to take it. We're destroying. They are destroying our country. I'm telling you, he's the worst president we've ever had and the most incompetent president we've ever had. And he's also the most crooked president we have ever, ever had. Now, other than that, I think he's doing an excellent job. Do we agree? Other than that, quite good, right, J.D.? Those few things. He's incompetent, he's crooked. He's a dumbest guy. How the hell this happened? What a fake election that was. He ran from the basement. We got more votes than any sitting president in history, but we lost. I was told if we got 63 million votes, we couldn't lose by Fabrizio, great pollster, John McLaughlin, great pollster, 
Sir, if you get 63 million, you cannot. We got 75. We got much more than that. We got, they report, almost 75 million. They report, not 63, 75. We lost by a whisker, just a whisker. You know, with their mail-in ballot hoaxes. You better go quickly to paper ballots, voter ID, and one-day voting, or you're not going to have... You're not going to have anything. One week ago, I met with the family of 22-year-old nursing student, incredible person, Lake and Riley, who was brutally murdered in Georgia last month while out on a morning run. She was so badly beaten up, unrecognizable. Can you believe it? Lakin's killer was set loose into the United States through Joe Biden's program of releasing military-aged males into our communities after they've illegally crossed our southern border. And that's what happened. And this animal came in. Lake and Riley would be alive today if Biden had not unleashed a savage attack on America. And that's what he's done. But instead of apologizing to Lakin's family, Joe Biden apologized to the killer for calling him illegal. I shouldn't have done that. Oh, oh, I'm so sorry. I shouldn't have called him illegal. Oh, I'm so sorry. I'd like to apologize to, to the killer. They are po He's more concerned with the killer. He couldn't even pronounce her name right. He's more concerned with the killer than he is with Lincoln. And that's the problem. They're more concerned with criminals. They are with the people of our country that are that built our country, that are keeping our country afloat, because that's all. With the policies they have, all you can do is keep it afloat. And you'll be lucky if you do that. And let me tell you, seven months is not a long time in one way. In another time, it's eternity, because these guys can do damage like nobody's ever. I don't know. They either hate our country or they're grossly incompetent. And anybody that can cheat on elections the way they do is not incompetent, okay? I think they hate our country. So now they have a new term for people like this. They call them neighbors. Neighbors. They want to call them neighbors. So they're people coming into our country illegally. Hi, neighbor. How you doing, neighbor? How's everything? And they punch you in the face and whack you. What a group of idiots we have. This country is, this country has never seen anything like what's happening to it now. And it's true. There's, we have never seen what's happening to our country right now. They're destroying our country. They're ruining our country. In the Republican Party, we believe that Lakin's killer is an illegal alien criminal. He is an illegal monster. He should never have been in our country, and he would have never been in our country. Never, ever would he have been in our country if the election weren't rigged because we didn't allow people like that into our country. We didn't welcome them, and they knew it. You know, does anybody like the snake? Do you know the snake? I don't know. I can't even hold this. I, I can't even hold this sucker in this wind, but we'll give it a shot. Do you mind? Let's do it. Because you know what? It's As I'm discussing this, and on the uh, understanding that we have no teleprompters, at least let me read one little thing here. But this is um, a metaphor. Most of you have heard it. People love it. It's a very accurate metaphor. And it's about our border. It's about the people we have coming in. And don't be surprised when bad things happen, because bad things will happen. And we're going to get them out fast. We're going to have the largest deportation effort in history. But with all of that, with all of that, we've got ourselves a problem. When you have 15 million people, many of them, many of these people are people that should not be allowed into our country. On her way to work one morning, down the path along the lake, a tender-hearted woman saw a poor, half-frozen snake. His pretty colored skin had been all frosted with the dew. Poor thing, she cried, I'll take you in, and I'll take care of you. Very innocent, very innocent. Take me in, oh tender woman, take me in for heaven's sake. Take me in, oh tender woman, cried the tender snake. She wrapped him up all cozy in a comforter of silk and laid him by her fireside with some honey and some milk. She hurried home from work that night and soon as she arrived, she found the pretty snake she'd taken in had been revived. Take me in, O oh tender woman, take me in for heaven's sake. Take me in, O oh tender woman, cried the vicious snake. 
Whoa. Front row Joe got it. Look, I can't believe it. That's you're unbelievable. They've come to 127 rallies. I don't know what the hell they do, but they must have a lot of money because there's a stand up front row, Joe's. I can't believe it. And that play, it fell right at, look at it, fold up. That's incredible. There's nobody more deserving of it than you guys. You guys are amazing. Thank you very much. This is number 127 for them. And I don't like to say it in front of them, but we have people that have actually come to more. You know, our, our wonderful women from North Carolina, right? Trying to figure out about their husbands, how they can handle it. But they seem to be handling it. She clutched him to her bosom. You're so beautiful, she cried. But if I hadn't brought you in by now, you truly would have died. She stroked his pretty skin again and kissed and held him tight. But instead of saying, thank you, ma'am, the snake gave her a vicious bite. Take me in, O oh tender woman. Take me in for heaven's sake. Take me in, O oh tender woman, sighed the vicious snake. I saved you, cried the woman. I saved you. I saved you. And you've bit me, but why? You know, your boy is poisonous. Your bite is poisonous. And now I'm going to die. Shut up, silly woman, said the reptile with a grin. You knew damn well I was a snake before you took me in. Now that's what we're going through right now. We're taking in snakes. We're taking in snakes. Yeah, maybe this one gets to you too. We're taking in, <laughs> we'll get it to you. We got to smile about this. Look, if you don't have a little bit, uh, you know, it's just so crazy. There's not much to smile about, but we have to keep our chin up because what's happening to our country has never happened before. Nothing like this has ever happened before. There's a gentleman named Sean Hannity. He goes on every night. He says, the good man, he says, 100 percent certain that you're going to have massive attacks and big problems. And I have to agree with him. And, you know, I've been right about everything. They say Trump's been right about everything. Uh, I have to agree that it's going to be we have to work very quickly. But unfortunately, for seven months and now really for two months after that, you're not going to be working. You're going to be in the world of politics, and they'll be saying what a wonderful thing it is that they're destroying our country. How anybody can say what they say is unbelievable. Not one more American life should be lost to migrant crime. When I'm president of the United States, we will demand justice for Lakin. On day one, my administration will terminate every open border policy of the Biden administration. We will begin the largest domestic deportation operation in American history, larger than that by far of Dwight Eisenhower. You know, Eisenhower had a similar problem, but peanuts by comparison. It's like the border. I did a great job in the border. The border was terrible, but it was peanuts by comparison to what it is now. It was like a little tiny, a small percentage. Now, I mean, nobody's ever had to go through this. Nobody ever. No one has been hurt by Joe Biden's migrant invasion more than our great African-American and Hispanic-American communities. You know that, right? Because they're taking your jobs and they're creating lots of problems. And you know who else are hurt? People on Social Security, because your Social Security will be destroyed by the people coming in. There's too many of them. It's not sustainable. Joe Biden is costing you Medicare and he's costing you your Social Security. As sure as you're sitting or standing, look at the group of people. This was supposed to be a little thing for Bernie. That is a Bernie, if these people all vote, which they will, you're going to win. Man. Wow. That's a lot of people back there. Wow. That's very impressive. They said, this is just a little rally for Bernie. That's not a little rally. I can't even see the end of the crowd. Well, get out and vote. Good man, get out and vote. With his open border policy, Joe Biden 
has repeatedly stabbed African-American voters in the back, including by granting millions and millions of work permits taking their jobs. The African-American community, the Hispanic community, are going to be the ones that suffer the most. And you know who else? Unions. Because unions are getting good, solid, high pay. And guess what's going to happen? Those unions are going to go out of business because people are owning trucking companies and carpenters and people that employ electricians and a lot of trades. They're not going to be able to do this. They're not going to be able to do it. The unions are going to go out. The Teamsters are in trouble. I'm dealing with the Teamsters. They should endorse me. I don't know if they will or not. I know the Teamsters are going to vote for me. The Teamsters, the real, the Teamsters that do the work. The head team says, Sean and everybody, they're good men, they're good people, and I hope they're going to endorse Trump. I think it would be nice. It's been many decades before that's happened. But if you look at the United Auto Workers, what they've done to their people is horrible. They want to do this all-electric nonsense where the cars don't go far, they cost too much, and they're all made in, they're all made in China. And the head of the United... Auto workers never probably shook hands with a Republican before. They're destroying. You know, Mexico has taken over a period of 30 years, 34 percent of the automobile manufacturing business in our country. Think of it. Went to Mexico. China now is building a couple of massive plants where they're going to build the cars in Mexico and think they think that they're going to sell those cars into the United States with no tax at the border. Let me tell you something to China. If you're listening, President Xi, and you and I are friends, but he understands the way I deal, those big monster car manufacturing plants that you're building in Mexico right now, and you think you're going to get that, you're going to not hire Americans, and you're going to sell the cars to us now, we're going to put a 100 percent tariff on every single car that comes across the line, and you're not going to be able to sell those cars. If I get elected, now, if I don't get elected, it's going to be a bloodbath for the whole. That's going to be the least of it. It's going to be a bloodbath for the country. That'll be the least of it. But they're not going to sell those cars. They're building massive factories. A friend of mine, all he does is build car manufacturing plants. He's the biggest in the world. I mean, honestly, I joke about it. He can't walk across the street. In that way, he's like Biden. But for building a plant, he can do the greatest plants in the world, right? That's all he cares about. I said, I'd like to see one of your plants recently. I said, I'd like to see, where can we go? Well, we have to travel to Mexico. I said, why Mexico? He said, because that's where the big plants are building. China's building really big plants in Mexico, and Mexico's building. What about here? Well, we're building much smaller plants here. Can you believe it? Can you believe it? So what they're saying, Jim Jordan, is that we're going to make cars in Mexico, and they're going to do it. You're not going to stand for that, Bernie. J.D., I have a, I have a feeling J.D. is not, JD's not big into that policy. 100 percent tariff. They won't sell any cars over here. And I'll tell them, if they want to build a plant in Michigan, in Ohio, in South Carolina, they can, using American workers. They can. They can't send Chinese workers over here, which they sometimes do. But they, if they want to do that, we're welcome, right? But they're not going to build them in Mexico, and they're not going to do that. We're going to tariff them at 100 percent, just like I've done. I saved the steel industry. The people that like me the most are the steel companies. But now I've been out for a little while, and guess what? United States Steel, 50 years, 60 years ago, maybe the greatest company in the world, was just sold to Japan. How do you like that? U.S. Steel owned and controlled by Japan. I wouldn't have allowed it to happen. Hopefully, they won't allow it to happen. When I'm president, we will end this Biden betrayal of the African-American community. We will stop the theft of American jobs and protesting and all of the things. We have to protest. We have no choice. We, you know, today, people that protest get arrested in this country. We never had that before. They can rip down Portland. They can rip down Minneapolis, and they can do whatever the hell they want, and nothing happens if a Republican or a Christian, frankly, and what's happening with the Catholics? The Catholics are under siege. Any Catholic that votes for this numbskull is crazy, because you are being persecuted. You are being—now, I'm being persecuted, I think, more than anybody, but who the hell knows? 
You know, all my life, you've heard of Andrew Jackson. He was actually a great general and a very good president. They say that he was persecuted as president more than anybody else. Second was Abraham Lincoln. This is just what they said. This is in the history books. They were brutal. Andrew Jackson's wife actually died over it, they say. Died of a broken heart, but she died over it. He was never quite the same. But they say Andrew Jackson. They say Abraham Lincoln was second, but he had a, you know, in all fairness, he did have a civil war. So you would think that would cause a problem, right? So you could understand it. But nobody comes close to Trump. And now even the wonderful historians, the fake historians they have in CNN. You ever see these guys? Biden makes a State of the Union speech, one of the worst speeches anybody here has ever heard. And at CNN, they said that was one of the greatest speeches I've ever heard. That was one. That was one of the great MSDNC, MSNBC, a bunch of fakes. They go, that was one of the greatest speeches I've ever heard. You know that CNN turned off. When, uh, here we are. We campaigned for a year. And I obliterate my competition, you know. And they said, sir, please don't talk about these people that way. They're Republicans. I said, I don't give a shit. They're, they're terrible. I said, I don't care. No, my, my highly paid advisor, sir, you shouldn't talk to them about that. One of the people said, they said, are you going to run against the president? He said, uh, I have no comment. To me, that meant he's running. So I hit him hard. I hit him low. I hit him high, just like we did to ISIS. We hit him hard. We hit him low. We hit him high. We hit him in the middle. We hit him from on top. And we even came under the ground. We hit this guy so hard. By the time he announced, nobody knew what the hell happened. They said, what happened to him? He's a shell of the man. But we had other people, too. We have to hit hard. And the reason we have to hit hard is we have to win. We have to hit our enemies hard. We have to hit them and treat them with respect. But if they don't treat us with respect, we have to do things because our country's in trouble. We don't have the same country that we had three years ago. We were energy independent three years ago. Today, we're begging Venezuela for oil. Think of it. We're begging Venezuela for oil. And we're not going to stand for it. We're going to turn this around and we're going to turn it around fast. Somebody said, we really like this person or that person because they can serve for eight years. They can serve. I said, if it takes you more than a year to fix the problem, you have the wrong people. That was actually something. That was a political attack line, J.D. They said he could be here for eight years. I said, if it takes you more than a year, you got the wrong guy. I said, if it takes you eight years to set this thing up, you don't want to vote for him. So that's the story. It's my first term and we built the greatest economy. Think of it. In my first term, we built the greatest economy in the history of the world. We had the highest tax cut ever. Ronald Reagan didn't do anything even by comparison. We had the biggest regulation cuts and rising wages for citizens of every race, religion, color and creed. And we had a thing called no inflation. How do you like the idea of no inflation? Under Biden, the cost of rent is up 30 percent. Groceries are up 30 percent. Everything is up. Chicken's up. Bread is up. And I can't read this damn teleprompter. <laughs> this sucker is moving around. It's like reading uh, a moving flag at a 35 mile an hour wind. And then they say Trump's a bad guy because I'll say this. Don't pay the teleprompter company. Don't pay. Don't pay. And then he'll say Trump didn't pay me. And they'll say, oh, Trump's a horrible human being. He's terrible. They gave me a pile of crap that th this is the craziest thing. And look, look at all the television I have up there. I got all the television and they won't say that. They'll say, Trump made a speech. It wasn't so good. It wasn't so good. You know, it's funny. I was asking Jim Jordan about it because he was commenting that we have the largest crowds in the history of politics. Nobody comes close. If Ronald Reagan came to a place called Dayton, Ohio, have you heard of it? If he came to Dayton, Ohio, honestly, J.D., if he had three or four hundred people in a ballroom, that would be great. 
We get 25, 30,000 people for every, a small rally is 20,000 people. We had 88,000 people show up in South, South Carolina. There was no, there was no venue. We had no, so we used the whole town. You read it. We used the whole town. The whole town was flooded and, and it was unbelievable. And I said, you know, but nobody's ever had, we had one in Alabama. I call it the Mo Brooks speech. Because Mo Brooks got up, he asked me for an endorsement. He was an election denier, which is the right thing, because the election was crooked. And Mo Brooks got up, and he hired, I believe it was either Mitt Romney or John McCain's management team. But before that, he asked me for an endorsement. I gave it to him. He took a 54-point lead. Then he called me and said, I'd like to do a rally. Mo Brooks, a friend of uh, Jim, right? Mo Brooks. Legendary. Where's Mo? What happened to Mo? So he gets up. I said, you don't need a rally. You got a 54. Let me do rallies for people that need it. Sir, I'd like to have a rally. You have a 54 point lead. It's Alabama where I won it by 45 points. OK, I love Alabama, but they understand we don't have to be there. We have to be in places that are a little closer than that. Although I happen to think we won most of the country. You want to know the truth. If the voting if the voting were real, I actually think we won most of the country. I actually think we got a lot of Ohio's all over the place that you won't really recognize. But Mo Brooks got up. He said, sir, I'd really appreciate it. And we went to the state fair. 68,000 people showed up at the state fair. And an old guy came out. He looked like he was about 103. He said, you know, you did something I never thought would happen. Alabama. He said, this was the state fair. And I guess he owns it. He said, I've been at this place for 60 years, 70 years, a long time. And you just broke the attendance record of a man named Elvis Presley. Can you believe it? And he said, you just broke it, man. He said, I never thought that would be possible. We had 68,000 people. So Mo Brooks gets up and he says, let's forget about the election. Uh, the election was fine. Let's just forget. We have to get on to the future. He got booed. I was downstairs being interviewed by ABC Fake News. And what happened is I said, you couldn't hear anything. The place exploded with boos, boo, boo. He took a 54 point lead into that rally and he reduced it to he was losing by 20 by the end of the night. He dropped 74 points. And we have a very wonderful senator. I endorsed her the following morning, Katie, Katie Britt. She was doing a good job. Who liked the job she did the other night? I thought she did a very nice job. Liberals didn't like it very much, I guess, but I thought she did a very nice job. But we have another senator now because people don't want to hear bullshit. They don't want to hear it. They want, they want a country that's run correctly, that's run properly. And they want fair elections and they want borders. They have to have borders. If they don't have borders, you don't have a country. But if you don't have fair elections, you don't. And you know what I add to it more and more? The fake news. They should be the police of our country because if they were legit, they don't. You know, the biggest problem I have with them is the things they don't report. They barely, until recently, they would not talk about the borders. They wouldn't talk about the fact that our country is being destroyed at the borders. It's what they don't say that's a problem. And it's and they don't say a lot. And what they do say is fake news. So other than that, I think they're fantastic. I'll, I'll move this over. Great job, fellas. Don't pay these suckers, please. Don't pay. Whoever the hell did that, they son of a gun. These people. I think Joe Biden put him in. <laughs> With your vote, we will throw out the Bidenomics and we will reinstate a thing called Maganomics. Maganomics. <laughs> Crooked Joe Biden and his socialist thugs are looting trillions and trillions of dollars from the American people and giving it to radical left lunatics and friends. But Biden's reign of plunder and terror stops the day I take the oath of office. The hardworking American taxpayer will once again have a friend and a fighter and a champion in the White House. Biden's socialist spending 
His socialist spending is really what's happening is uh, your social security is is going to be gone. You know, they don't say it. They never say it. They will not you will not be able to have social security with this guy in office because he's destroying the economics of our country. And that includes Medicare, by the way. And American seniors are going to be in big trouble. I made a promise that I will always keep social security, Medicare, we always will keep it. We won't be cutting it. We have liquid gold under the ground. We'll be drilling like a son of a gun, but we're leaving your Social Security around. They won't, and they can't make that pledge because their economic theory is no good because they're taking in millions and millions of people in this country and they're spending. You know, I look at New York and New York is very low on money for years and New York State very, very low. And a lot of people want to leave because of the lawfare that's going. A lot of companies are leaving because they don't want to get caught up into the crap that I got caught up into, where they go after you for no reason whatsoever. No victim, no this, no that. They let violent criminals roam the streets, roam in the subways, but they go after Trump all the time. And uh, people get tired of it. P companies don't want to be subject to that. But if you take a look at all of the things that are happening, the money, the billions and billions of dollars, and I say, where did they get this money? California, the same thing. Gavin Newscom. Does anyone ever? <laughs> Gavin Newscom. S-C-U-M is his last. No, Gavin Newscom. He, uh, this guy, he's always talking about, oh, California, it's great, great. They're losing a fortune. People are moving out. I have property there. I love California. One of the most beautiful places. They're destroying it. They're destroying California. This guy is a horrible, horrible governor. In a certain way, I'd like him to run, you know, to be honest. I think it would, I just think it would be, you know, he's a, he's sort of a, he's just a bullshit artist. It's like, it's crazy. He's done such a bad job. But you look at what Democrats have done. Look at Illinois. I don't know how it continues. You have this guy Pritzker. I don't know. He's too busy eating. He wants to eat all the time. Would you like a hamburger? How many do you want? Five? I'll have five burgers, please. You go to his office. Would you like a hamburger? Yeah. Okay, I'll have five burgers, please. Who the hell orders five burgers? But look, our country, our country can't go through it, and we're not going to go through it much longer. You know, we play the song, you know that, Hold On, I'm Coming. Do we like it? Who liked the Rolling? Okay, you had the Rolling Stone, uh, Stone song, which we liked. That was for first. You know that song, right? You can't always get what you want, which made no sense, you know. But it was a good song, right? It made no sense. You can't always get. They asked me. I say no. They're talking about the Democrats. I said the Democrats can't always get what they want. So that way, I at least saved it. But it was a good song. Or the Sam and Dave. Who likes the second better? Uh, hold on, I'm coming. Yes. You like it better? More, do you like it better? Yeah, both good. The other does bring back some good memories, in all fairness. And no wonder, it's really no wonder that Joe Biden and his thugs are so desperate to stop us, they only know. And you remember this, we're the only ones, and they know this, that can stop them. We're the only ones. There's nobody else around. If this election, if this election isn't won, I'm not sure that you'll ever have another election in this country. Does that make sense? I don't think you're going to have another election in this country. If we don't win this election, I don't think you're going to have another election or certainly not an election that's meaningful. And we better get out or we better. I actually say that the date, remember this, November 5th, I believe it's going to be the most important date in the history of our country. I believe that. This country is weaponizing law enforcement for high-level election interference against Biden's top political opponent. Never happened. We're not going to let it happen. We're not going to let it happen. I'll tell you what, my numbers are much higher than they would have been had these idiots just, I have like, like deranged Jack Smith. Somebody said, why do you call him deranged? I said, because I like telling the truth. He's a, he's a deranged individual. They said, but why don't you be nice to him? Because if you were nice to him, he'd be much worse. He's a, he's a bad guy. They're all bad people. They want to destroy our country, and we're not going to let them destroy our country. We're not going to let it happen. 
All of the persecution is only happening because I'm running for president and leading in the polls. If I weren't running, I wouldn't have any indictments. I got indicted more than Al Capone. Does anybody know who Al Capone is? Alphonse Capone. He would even take a guy like J.D. and slap him around. He'd take J.D. Who the hell are you, Senator? Little dad slap you around. No, he used to kill people. If he didn't like their company at dinner, he'd kill them. He got indicted less than I did. My father's looking down, and my mother was such a beautiful woman. And she's looking down with my father, and she's saying, how the hell did our boy get four indictments? And not only that, all these local cases, like Fanny, Fanny. It's spelled Fanny. It's spelled Fanny like your ass, right, Fanny? But when she became DA, she decided to add a little French, a little fancy, Fanny. Fanny and, you know, Fanny and Mr. and Mrs. Wade, which his wife did not appreciate. His wife didn't appreciate. Can you imagine these two people trying to take down a very popular, I'm a very popular president. I mean, again, I got more votes than any sitting president in history. I, we have these two lowlifes trying to take down a president of the United States. But, you know, equally badly, they went after 26 people. They wanted to make it 48 people. They had some senators that these guys know very well who were indicted, who were ready to be indicted, and somebody stopped it. And they wanted to find out what the hell is going on in Georgia. What's going on with the elections? And it's so crazy. And they almost got indicted for that. Think of it. United States senators that were doing their job. These people are lowlifes. And they were sent here by the Department of Justice. This isn't a local Georgia thing. This was done. They would go in to Washington, D.C. and have meetings that lasted for eight hours on numerous occasions with the Justice Department and the White House. So it's all coming in from, it's all politics. It's all coming in from Biden. The same thing with Letitia James from New York. This is another real Lola. She campaigned on, I will get Trump. I will get him. I will get him. Then she goes to court. Oh, no, it's, uh, I'm not political. I'm not political at all. And then you have Bragg, the DA. So in the DA's office, they didn't trust Bragg. So they took their top person from the DOJ, his name is Colangelo, and they took him and they put him in the DA of Manhattan's office to get Trump. Think of it. Other than that, I'm having a lot of fun. I'm having a lot of fun. You know, it's like an unbelievable situation. But I think with time, it's become so discredited. Don't you think, Jim? It's become actually Jim Jordan had hearings on Bragg. And how did they turn out? That was what a mess. What a disgraceful. We can't let this happen to our country. In the latest Emerson poll, general election, I'm up nine points here in Ohio. In another poll, I'm up 14 points. And in another one, we're up 17 points. I only read polls when they're good, by the way. Nationwide, we're leading in every single swing state against Biden. The largest in the largest margins ever. You know what was interesting? Joe Biden won against Barack Hussein Obama. Has anyone ever heard of him? Barack Hussein Obama. Or as Rush Limbaugh would say, Barack Hussein Obama. He used to scream out the name Hussein. But he, he was, uh, think of this, just think of this. Every swing state, Biden beat Obama. But every other state, he got killed. You think that's an honest election? I could give you a hundred different things. We better straighten out our elections. We better get smart. Because the people of the country are not going to take it. We're not going to take it. We're not going to take it any longer. The radical left Democrats rigged the presidential election in 2020. And we're not going to allow them to rig the presidential election in 2024. I'm not going to allow it to happen. Every time the radical left Democrats, Marxists, communists, and fascists indict me, I consider it a great badge of honor. Great badge of honor. 
because I'm being indicted for you and never forget our enemies want to take away my freedom because I will never let them take away your freedom. That's what this is all about. They want to silence me because I will never let them silence you. And in the end, they're not after me. They're after you. I just happen to be standing in the way. Okay. Yeah. Uh, But if you want to defeat the radical left Democrats, you first have to get out. You have to vote and vote for Bernie Marino. These are great guy. They're, they're doing a number. You know, I didn't think I'd say this because, you know, you keep they're doing a number on him just like they've done on everybody else. That's all they do. Disinformation and misinformation. They're masters at it. They lie. They cheat. These people, they lie. They cheat. They make up fake stories like Russia, Russia, Russia. You know, they made up the Russia, Russia, Russia story. Then I won that. No collusion. After 18 angry Democrats said there was no collusion. They didn't have anything. They went through millions of phone calls, not one call to Russia. It was a fake deal made up by Crooked Hillary for losing. Although I don't call it crooked anymore. I've reversed it, right? No, it was made up by Hillary Clinton. And how about this guy? He may end up being a United States senator, right? Shifty Adam Schiff. Think of it. Can you believe it? He may end up being a senator. This is one of the most dishonest human beings. He made up my conversation that I had with the president of Ukraine. He made up the conversation. He said there were seven times quid pro quo. Remember that? Quid pro quo. Seven times. Now, think of it. That means you've threatened somebody seven times. I want money. I want this. And then you say it again. I want money. I want. I never spoke to the guy. He would think I'm a total lunatic. OK, but he said seven times he asked and he made the speech in Congress. I said, good, I'll sue this guy. Then I learned you can't sue any congressman because they have total immunity. If they say they can say whatever they want in Congress. But here's what they didn't know. The phone call, because it was a White House call. And for some reason, it happened to be on tape. So I let them go more and more. The stories got wilder and wilder. Then we re released the tape. And Nancy Pelosi, who's major sleaze, by the way, a major sleaze. Nancy Pelosi, she said to her people, what the hell did you get me into? You hear this call? He didn't do any of this stuff. And you know what they said? Let's just pretend he did and keep going forward. That's how, that's how that whole thing came. So she knew it was false because she heard it. But I will tell you this. After they made up the story and then after that they heard the tape, they died. They didn't know that phone call was taped. That was one good case of a phone call being taped. And they were taped and they got caught. And you know what they do? They took two weeks off and then they said, Ukraine, Ukraine. They went into a new scandal. They do it. These are bad people. These are sick people. And they're doing it here, too. They're doing it to a very good man. And we can't let it happen. I said on the plane. I'm not going to talk about it. I won't talk about it. But I didn't know I wouldn't have teleprompters. I have nothing else to talk about, to be honest. I have nothing else to talk about. But you just have to remember, these are, these are disinformation and misinformation. Slightly different. I won't go into the difference, but there is a slight difference. And they're masters at lying, essentially. And they make up stories about people. They made up many about me, and I fought them off. I want to tell you, if anybody else were the nominee, they would have done the same thing to them, and they wouldn't have been able to take it. I think front row Joes would agree. If those people that were running against me in the Republican primary, had they succeeded, and you have to say they didn't even come close, not even a little close, but had the, but you know why? Because you love the job I did for four years. For four years, you want to get back to the best economy that we've ever had. But had they succeeded, they would have come in with the same kind of stuff and they would have been hitting them and they wouldn't have been able to handle it. I can promise you. Bernie is a political outsider who spent his entire life building up Ohio communities. He's highly respected all over the country and he's going to be a warrior in Washington. Bernie's strong on borders. He'll fight to 
crush the cartels that are flooding our towns and cities with fentanyl and deadly drugs. Now, we're going to stop that. We're going to get it stopped, and we're going to get it stopped fast. We're essentially at war. You know, we lose — I believe we lose 350,000, not 100. You know, they keep saying 100, 100, 90, 100. I believe you're losing 350,000 people a year. And no war. You wouldn't lose that many of you were fighting a war. And fighting a war would be a lot easier than fighting this. And we're going to get it stopped. You know, I almost had it stopped, and then we had the bad election. I went to President Xi. I said, we're not going to do any business if you keep sending fentanyl, because it comes from China and it comes through Mexico. Sort of simple. But they're smart and they're, you know, not exactly uh, — look, they're, they're the enemy. When you think of it, they're the enemy. But it comes through Mexico, but it's made in China. I said to President Xi, if you keep doing this, we're going to stop doing business with China. You're not going to make your 500 billion a year. And we had it down, way down. Nobody has ever talked to China the way I did. No president. We never took in 10 cents. I took in $440 billion from China. They were not, they were not exactly unhappy with that election. But I said to President Xi, who I actually had a great relationship with, other than he likes China and I love the United States. And I said, you can't, you can't do this. You can't do this with what you're doing, sending fentanyl. And if you're going to continue to do it, we're not going to trade with you and we're going to charge you the highest tariffs of any country anywhere in the world. And it's going to be effective immediately. He says, no, no, you don't have to do that. We will put maximum penalty on the people that are making the fentanyl. I said, I know what your maximum penalty is, and you do too. Does that mean the death penalty? Yes. We will give them the death penalty if they send fentanyl into the United States. And that was all done, and it was all set to go into effect. And then we had a thing called the rigged election, and it never got done because when Biden came in, he can't talk that way to China because they've given him a lot of money. They give him a lot of money. Do you ever notice how timid he is with China? The reason he's timid is because they know much about him that you'll never know. He's a Manchurian candidate. He's a pure Manchurian candidate. They know things about him that you'll never know unless they want to reveal it. So all of a sudden, we have a very weak president on China. But I exposed China, and I'm very proud to have done it. Bernie will. Vote to save the American auto industry along with me. We're working hard and J.D. and everybody else that's working on it because our auto industry is going to be dead very quickly because of the head, the head of the, the head of the United Auto Workers. What the deal he made is so crazy. It's so bad. Short term, two years, but you're not going to have any cars being made here anymore. They're all going for him to allow an all electric mandate on cars that just don't go far. If I want to drive to Washington, D.C. from Dayton, I have to stop four times. If you want to drive on a, you know, tank of gasoline, you can drive there. It's not going to be acceptable. People aren't going to have it. You can't build that number of chargers. You know, the charging booths. If you were going to build the charging booths that are necessary, our country would be immediately bankrupt because it would cost trillions and trillions and trillions of dollars. And by the way, I'm a big fan. You can have electric cars if you want them, but you also have to have other forms of movement. You have to have other forms. You have to be able to have and use gasoline. Here we are. We have more gasoline. We have more oil and gas than any country in the world. You know, we have more than Russia, we have more than Saudi Arabia, and we're not allowed to use it. And you know that this guy is now getting his oil from Venezuela. Venezuela was the enemy. Venezuela is going to end up, this guy running Venezuela, call him a dictator, call him what you want, he's going to be the richest guy in the world. He's got all of his criminals leaving. And a lot of people are leaving. He's going to end up with Venezuela and about uh, 50 friends. And the United States, under a very stupid president, buying their oil. We're buying oil from Venezuela. You know where it's — you know where they purify the oil? A place called Houston, Texas. Houston, Texas. That's where they refine it. So they take out the oil, and Venezuela has bad oil. They have tar. They have tar, which is a very low level. And you have to heat it and heat it. And the, uh, if you're a big environmentalist, 
We do it in Houston, Texas. So we take it out there and think of it. If you believe in this, like a lot of people do, and I'm okay with it, those fumes are leaving the United States because the only refinery that could do that oil, the tar, it's not even oil, the only refinery that could do it happens to be in Houston. And it's not a pretty sight, I'll tell you what. And that's where we are now. Bernie will be tough on China, ferocious on crime. He'll be great on election integrity. He wants to get wokeness out of our military. We have a somewhat don't, don't worry too much about I watched our military knock out ISIS. You know, I did it in four weeks. I knocked out ISIS in four weeks. They said it was going to take four to five years. We have great generals. We have great military. They're going to be OK. But the, on top is woke. How about the changing? I get out. How about the changing of the names of we won Fort Bragg as an example? You know, the people in the area are going crazy. They changed the name of Fort Bragg. They changed the name of Fort Robert E. Lee. They changed the name of the different forts. We won World War I. We won World War II. We won everything we fought with, really, essentially, from those forts, if we wanted to win. A lot of wars we fight not to win. We fight just to fight because we have stupid people on top. We don't fight wars to win. But we won World War I, World War II out of these forts, and now they changed the name in disgrace. It's a very ter terrible thing. But Bernie will not let the radical left Democrats raise your taxes. They want to raise your taxes to a level that you've never seen before. And the, ta the tax cuts that I got you, the biggest tax cuts in history, they expire soon. And the Democrats don't want to renew them. That will go down as the biggest tax, e tax increase in the history of our country. And it's going to be very bad. But J.D. and Bernie and all of us, and we have a lot of good people in the Senate. We have great people in the House. And we're not going to let it happen, Jim. Is that right? We're not going to let it happen. So Bernie's running against a weak rhino named Matt Dolan. Now, here's what I know about Matt Dolan. I don't know much about him. He's trying to become the next Mitt Romney. I think Mitt Romney is his hero. Matt Dolan once ran for office as a Democrat, and he's easily pushed around by the woke left lunatics who renamed his family's baseball team. Now, think of this. You know, I happen to like baseball. I like sports, and I like tradition. So you have a team called the Cleveland Indians. Indians. They're Indians. Indians. And they took the name Cleveland Indians and made it the Cleveland Guardians. It's almost like they're in charge of a trust fund. They're in charge of a trust fund. The Cleveland Guardians. And my attitude is anybody that changes the name of the Cleveland Indians to the Cleveland Guardians should not be a senator, should not be a governor. I don't know Matt Dolan, but I just know that he's the guy that, I guess, owns the team in some form. Uh, he was in charge of changing the name. Who wants... Okay, we'll have a poll. Who wants to keep the Cleveland Indians story? Wait. <laughs> so much for that, Paul. Okay, ready? Who wants to see the name changed to the... And the way they did it to the Guardians? Who wants the Guardians? Okay, nice and loud. Now, who wants to keep it the Cleveland Indians? That wasn't too tough, right? So, this guy, Matt Dolan, who's weak on borders, weak on crime, he wants to vote a mass amnesty bill for illegal aliens. He cares more about spending your money to and sending it to Ukraine. And you know what? We gotta, we'll do things with Ukraine. We should loan them the money, not send them the money. We should loan them the money so that if they do make it, if they make it, they're against tremendous odds. But if they make it, they pay us back. Loan them the money. Give it to them as a loan. Let them be a little bit like they have to be a little nice. Loan them the money. Don't just hand them a check for 60 billion. I tell you, Zelensky is one of the greatest salesmen in history. Every time he comes to the country, he walks away with 50 or 60 billion dollars. I've never been able to do that. He's a better salesman. He's a much better salesman than I am. But think about it. Dolan wants to have left-wing gun control. 
He voted against a law to let Ohio citizens defend themselves from dangerous criminals. You're not allowed to have your gun, but the criminals are allowed because they're not going to follow the law. So they can walk into your place and you'll say, please, please don't do it. It's crazy. It's crazy. Matt, and I, there's nobody better to the Second Amendment than me. I am the strongest and the best ever. It, they never touched it. And it was not easy. Matt Dolan also strongly supported Joe Biden's $1.2 trillion Green New Scam. It's called the Green New Scam, which helped cause rampant inflation. It's not the biggest reason. The biggest reason for inflation was what they did with energy and oil when they closed up the oil. Now he's drilling like crazy. He went back to my policy. You know why? Because it was up to $6, $7, $8 a gallon. So now he said, just go back, just go back. After the election, we'll kill these people. And that's what's going to happen. They went back to my drilling policies. They allowed them to continue drilling. But the day after the election, it's over. I, they are sick. That's why this Tuesday, you need to elect America First champion Bernie Marino to the U.S. Senate. And Bernie, if I could, I'd like to have you come up and say a few words, please. Thank you. Ladies and gentlemen, the Republican nominee for 2024. And the future 47th president of the United States of America. You know, I want to clear something up. I want to clear something up for everybody here. I am so sick and tired of Republicans that will say, I support President Trump's policies, but I don't like the man. This is a good man. This is a great American. This man wakes up every day fighting for us, fighting for this country. He loves this country like no other leader of this nation has ever loved this country. And we have Republicans that say that because they'll bend the knee to the media and they want to be their best friends and so they'll dis they disparage this man. How does Ohio feel about President Donald J. Trump? Thank you, Bernie. Thank you. Thank you very much. Thank you. You know, there's, I, I have to say, so, we did, we did all of us, it's we, it's not me, it's all of us. We did great in 2016, we did great in 2020. There was tremendous spirit. There's never been spirit like we have now. There's never been. 2016, and we did much better in 2020. You see it, I mean, you know it. But, and we had unbelievable rallies, unbelievable. There's never been spirit like we have right now. And that's because you got a glimpse of what these people are doing to our country, which you didn't have before. So it's been really pretty amazing, I will tell you that. We're also pleased to be joined by a friend of mine and somebody that has really turned out to be great. You know, when you endorse somebody, you don't know. You think they're going to be good and they turn on you. I'll give you plenty of examples, but perhaps not now. But this guy turned out to be an absolute star. He's a young star and he's a great senator and a real fighter. J.D. Vance. J.D. Great job. Great job. You want to say something, J.D.? We have it to say. Come on up. Come on. He should say. I think we should. It's a, hey, it's a nice Saturday. What the hell? We have nothing else to do. Right? Hey, it's good to see you, man. Thank you. Thank you. Well, uh, first of all, I got to say, the teleprompter really does look like hell here. The president's telling the truth here. But look, um, let, me, let me say something. It's a real statistic, sir. And I looked this up. Do you know that all of the net job growth under Biden's presidency has gone to the foreign born? And Donald Trump's presidency, the job growth went to American citizens. Let's rebuild prosperity for America's citizens and reelect Donald J. Trump.
I know he loves this country. I know he loves the state of Ohio. And I know he loves Bernie Marino. Let's help, help Donald Trump out. Elect Bernie Marino and elect Donald Trump in 2024. God bless you, sir. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you very much, Greg. Now I'm telling you, there's never been there's never been spirit like this. This party has, and I hate when I listen to these people. You know, they say, while uh, Biden and Trump are extremely unpopular, I'm not unpopular. I got 92 percent approval rating with the Republican Party. We're not a. They like to say, Biden and Trump don't put me with him. This guy's unpopular. He can't talk. We have a very special woman who's hot as a politician. She's a. Uh, She's uh, doing an incredible job in South Dakota. She's the governor, Christy Nome. Christy, thank you, Christy. Thank you, very great job. Come on up. Thank you, thank you, thank you, Mr. President. Mr. President, when you were in the White House and I was governor of South Dakota, every single day I got to get up and be on offense. I could call this man in the White House and I would tell him what problem I had with the federal government or a foreign country or a trade agreement or helping a business be successful and he would say, Christy, let's do it. We will fix it. As soon as Joe Biden got in the White House, I went on defense. All I do now is fight to protect the freedom of my people. That is the difference that leadership has. That's the difference that this man has. Let's put him back in the White House so we can be on offense, we can make America great again, and we can do it with U.S. Senators like Bernie Moreno. Thank you so much for being here for Bernie. We're going to win. We're going to win big. Thank you very much. And you're not allowed to say it, so I will not. You know, you're not allowed to say she's beautiful, so I'm not going to say that. I will not say it, because that's the end of your political career if you make. If you make that statement, that's the end of your political So I will not say that. We also have a, uh, one of my favorite people in Washington, one of my favorite people anywhere, frankly. He's a fighter. He's a warrior like you've never seen. You know, people don't know about Jim Jordan, that he was a great wrestler. And in high school, and this is something it's almost hard to understand, because, you know, as a freshman, and if you're wrestling seniors, a freshman can't beat a senior. He went undefeated in all of high school. He never was defeated. So he was wrestling as a freshman against seniors. And someday he's going to explain to me how he did that, because that's pretty good. He then went on to be one of the greatest wrestlers in the history of the NCAA, I think. He also uh, became an All-American. And his sons are All-American wrestlers. And they're just a fantastic family. The family is so incredible. and. He's somebody, he just gets it done. He's a warrior. Jim Jordan. Jim, I got to get him. Come, come up here. Come up here, Jim. We got to get him up. Explain how, please explain how a freshman treats a senior. Well, I would just say this. Um, the left controls just about everything. The left controls big media, the left controls big tech, the left controls big corporations, the left controls big sports, I mean, watch the NBA, the left controls Hollywood, the left controls higher education, the left controls the White House, the left maybe most importantly controls the federal bureaucracy, but the left doesn't control we the people. And we the people, we the great people of this great country are getting set in November to put the best guy we've ever had in the White House back in the White House. And starting Tuesday, we're getting ready to put Bernie Marino in the United States Senate. God bless you all. Thank you very much. Thank you, Jim. Thank you, Jim. Great guy. We also have Ohio Attorney General Dave Yost. Dave, thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you, Dave. Great job you're doing. I hear great job. Indiana Attorney General Todd Rokita. Todd, thank you. Thank you. Nice seeing you, Todd. Great job you're doing. Ohio GOP Chair, where are you? Where are you? What a job. Where are you? Come up. Just come up. Wave to everybody very quickly, because you have done 
an incredible job, and thank you very much. I appreciate it. Thank you. Former State GOP Chair Jane Timken, a friend of mine and a wonderful woman. Hello, Jane. There you are. I'm looking for Jane. I called her before. How's things going? She said things are going good. Kareem Lanier and J.R. Majewski. Now, J.R., you know, they hit J.R. very hard, I have to tell you. These are friends of mine. Uh, J.R. was a hero and is a hero. And they hit him very hard with false stuff that he wasn't a hero. And after the election, they found out he was. And I, on behalf of our country, I'd like to apologize to J.R. Majewski because you were treated very unfairly. So, okay? Uh, you were treated very unfairly. The guy was a hero, and they came out with a narrative that he wasn't a hero, and I think it's a disgrace, a disgrace. I got to know him because he was carving the name Trump into farmland as I was flying over your state. And I'd say, boy, that's the biggest Trump I've ever seen. Those are the biggest letters. And I said, who did that? And his name is J.R. Majewski, and I just thought it was great. And I introduced him, and then he went into a primary with six very talented, good people, and he was not even thought about, and he ended up winning that primary because of one rally where I introduced him. Uh, but he is a hero, and everybody now knows it. Thank you, JR, very much. Appreciate it. From the very first day that we take back the White House from crooked Joe Biden, I believe we are going to have the four greatest years in the history of our country. In my first four years, I kept my promise to the workers of Ohio, to the workers of our country, we ended the disaster known as NAFTA, the worst trade deal ever made, and replaced it with the brand new USMCA, Mexico, Canada. That's the best trade deal they say ever made. Actually, the best trade deal I made was the deal with China, but I don't even talk about it. They have to buy $50 billion worth of our products. But after we all had to suffer through that horrible China virus or COVID, uh, I, don't, I don't talk about it, but this was a great win for Ohio farmers and for Ohio manufacturers. I took on communist China like no administration in history, bringing in hundreds of millions. Think of this. We started with hundreds of millions of dollars the first couple of months, and I said, this is pretty good. We ended up taking in hundreds of billions of dollars from China. Not one president ever took in 10 cents. They never asked him for anything. And we were rocking and rolling, and we were doing great. We had the greatest economy ever. And for our great veterans, we passed VA accountability and VA choice. We did something that nobody — and we had to get that because of guys like Jim Jordan. We had to get it passed through Congress, and we got it passed through Congress, and that was a big deal. We fully rebuilt the U.S. military, and we created Space Force. And I was the first president in decades who started no new wars except I brought our troops back home. We had no new wars, but we defeated ISIS. Everybody said couldn't be done. We did it very quickly. And we have a great military. I tell you, I saw that with ISIS. Once I let them go, I said, go ahead, fellas, do what you have to do. General Raisin Kane. What's your name, General Raisin, sir? What's your last name, Kane? I said, your name's Raisin Kane. I love you. This is what I've been looking for. I've been looking for a guy named Raisin Kane. And he knocked him out. Before I even arrive at the Oval Office, shortly after we win the presidency, I will have the horrible war between Russia and Ukraine settled, and we will restore peace through strength. That's what we need, peace through strength. And I will pass the Trump Reciprocal Trade Act if China or any other country makes us pay 100 or 200 percent tariff, which they do, we will make them pay a reciprocal tariff of 100 or 200 percent. In other words, you screw us and we'll screw you. It's very simple, very fair. We don't do that. And as tariffs on foreign countries go up, taxes on American workers and families will go very substantially down and will bring businesses back to our country because people are going to — they want to avoid paying the tariffs. It's very simple. It's what other countries do to us. And I had it going, and then we had the gift from China, the COVID come in. We did a phenomenal job in that. Never got the credit. Always got the credit for the military. Always got the credit for ISIS and so many things. Always got the credit for the economy and for no inflation. 
We did a great job with some unknown disease at the time. Nobody knew what the hell it was. And what we did was a miracle, and we led the world. And when I left office, our stock market was higher than it was just prior to COVID coming in, which is a tremendous achievement. We would have gone down the tubes. That would have been in 1929. And speaking of 1929, there are some brilliant Wall Street analysts, like Scott and some others, but a brilliant, very brilliant Wall Street analyst that say the only thing good right now about our economy is the stock market. And the only reason that that's good is because people think that Trump is going to be elected president. And if they ever thought that he wasn't, you would end up with a crash, the likes of which we haven't seen since 1929. So they can take that the way they want. But I happen to agree that uh, there's a lot of there's a lot of hope that we get back in. We had a great stock market. We had the most successful economy in the history of our country by far. We had really the most successful economy probably in the history of the world. And people weren't taking advantage of us. And China was paying up. Nobody could get away with what they were getting away with. I made new trade deals with Japan, with South Korea, with Vietnam. We made so many new trade deals. The deals were so bad. I used to sit back and look at these deals. I said, who could have negotiated these deals? They were so one-sided. We changed them all. On day one, I will terminate crooked Joe Biden's insane electric vehicle mandate. We will restore law and order to our country. And I'm going to indemnify all police officers and law enforcement officials throughout the United States to protect them from being destroyed by the radical left for taking strong action on crime. We're going to rebuild our cities into beacons of hope, safety and beauty better than they ever have been before. And we're going to be working with Democrat mayors and Democrat governors if we have to. You know, our dying cities, they're all run by Democrats. We're going to work with them and we're going to restore our cities. We will take over our horribly run, horrible, 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 the capital of the United States of America, Washington, D.C. We will clean it up, renovate it, and rebuild our capital cities so that it will be an absolute beacon of beauty and peace and prosperity and no longer be the crime capital virtually of the world. People are being killed there every single week. People are being killed. I lost a young man who was fantastic in the administration two weeks ago. He was going to pick up his wife and he was waiting for her. And a thug came along and said, I want your car. And he shot him and killed him as the wife is coming out to be picked up by her husband, who she loved. And he died almost immediately. And uh, we can't let this happen to our country. We can't let this happen. On day one, I will sign a new executive order to cut federal funding for any school pushing critical race theory, transgender insanity, and other inappropriate racial, sexual, or political content onto our children. And I will not give one penny to any school that has a vaccine mandate or a mask mandate. And something I can't believe I have to say, but I have to say it because the Democrats are pushing it. I will keep men out of women's sports, okay? I will fully uphold the Second Amendment. We will protect innocent life and we will re and we don't have free speech anymore. Today you speak and they want to put you in jail. Today you speak and they want to put you in jail. Even if you're telling the truth, they want to put you in jail. We will restore free speech to our nation, and I will secure our elections. We will have fair and honest elections again. But until then, you have to go and you have to vote. You have to vote like you've never voted before. And I said it before, and I'll say it again. This is all about November 5th, the most important day, I believe. I really believe this. You know, I used to say in 2016, this is going to be the most important vote. I didn't say that in 2020 because we had the country going really well. In fact, we had a statement, keep America great. It was going to replace MAGA in a certain way. I'm glad it didn't because MAGA is MAGA. It's always going to be MAGA as opposed to CAG. But it was keep America great. And America was great. We made it great. 
And then we had a bad election. A horrible, horrible thing happened because of COVID, but a lot of reasons, and they cheated like hell. They won't be able to do that again. They're not going to be able to do it again. We're not going to let that happen again. But you have to get out and vote. But I used to say that 2016 is the most important vote, the most important. And I actually meant it. This election, 2024, blows 2016 away. It's not even close. Our country is failing. We're a failing nation. Our country is failing. We're a nation in decline. We're going to turn this around. We're going to make America great again, greater than ever before. We're going to love each other again. We're going to unite as a country. We are going to create this country. We are going to have a country that's greater than it has ever been before. Go out and vote. We love you. I love being with you. This is a special place to me. We won every single time. And vote for Bernie Marino. He's a great guy. He'll be a great, great senator. Thank you very much, Ohio. We love you. Thank you. God bless you all. President Trump delivering a solid speech here in Dayton, Ohio, uh, ending there saying how important this election is compared to that of 2016. You know, we've covered a number of uh, Trump, uh, President Trump's speeches, but I've not heard that yet where he said how important this one is versus 2016, that it would blow 2016 away in, in comparison. Uh, it just shows the seriousness, Vanessa, uh, that we see here as we watch President Trump Board Trump for Swan. Yeah, and you know, every election is important. It's always important to go out and vote, whether it's local election, state election, national. But this one is historic in the sense that our country is dependent on it. We cannot afford another four years of Joe Biden or a Democrat in office. And so we have to get a, a Republican in office. We've got to get President Trump in office to save this country, put America back first, and also save the the everyday American who's struggling right now. And that's what we have to do. So this uh, Tuesday, go out and vote for President Trump and Bernie Marino, and then we'll send them to uh, the ballot in November. Exactly. And you know what's really awesome about the president today is the fact that it shows when if the teleprompter isn't working because of the wind, it really doesn't matter for President Trump because it's it's his core. The core of, of what he's talking about is there. He, he doesn't need to read something and, and then have no nothing smart to say or nothing funny to say or no story to say. He, he's got it all in his mind, and he's able to deliver regardless of the weather and, and the teleprompter. Absolutely. He's uh, spot on in everything he says. Does not need a teleprompter. It's there for him if he does need it. But, you know, it's when he makes those great points with the teleprompter and then he goes off and talks and gives examples. And that's when his true personality comes out. And that's what people love to see. So, hey, we'll take him with a prompter without a teleprompter. Uh, you're still going to get the truth and you're still going to get President Trump 
and and all his glory. So um, it's been a beautiful day here in Dayton, Ohio. The crowd's starting to leave. People are uh, cold, and I think we're wrapping it up right before the sun starts setting because with this wind, it's really going to start getting cold here. Matthew. Exactly. As we see President Trump uh, boarding Trump Force One here in Dayton, Ohio. What a great, great location for this. You know, as he was mentioning, as, as a few of the speakers were mentioning about the Wright brothers and all of the things that they did here in Dayton, Ohio with the first airplane. And then, of course, in Kitty Hawk, North Carolina, the first ever takeoff in 1903. For those of us that are airplane nerds like myself, <laughs> very cool to see Trump Force One here. All right, absolutely. And I mean, this jet is just amazing. And while President Trump was speaking, I'm actually looking back at the plane and thinking just how massive that is. And then also there's a museum here, too, that you visited today. So uh, the history here about, uh, you know, the, the airplanes and the aviation in general is just amazing. It's a hidden gem, this, this national... U.S. Air Museum in Dayton. That's a hidden gem over at the Wright-Patterson Air Force Base. Once again, 25,000 employees. That's the biggest employer in the Buckeye State. Yeah. You know, for anyone that's watching, thank you so much for watching Right Side Broadcasting Network. Vanessa Roussard, of course, I'm Matthew Alvarez. It's been quite, quite a day. It has been quite a day, but you know what? As always, no matter the answer everybody's bundled up it's so cold we have a great time we want to remind you to visit birch gold group text the word trump to 989898 they'll help you uh, invest your uh, iras or 401ks convert them into gold it could be a little bit it could be a lot whatever plan works best for you someone will contact you and also send you a free information kit all you have to do is contact the birch gold group text the word trump to 989898 and speaking of free the free trump book mike huckabee did a great job there this is it's kind of detoxing right for uh the younger generation where if they are brainwashed by saying that Trump is this and not all this negative material. We know that he did great between 2016 and 2020, really helped our country out and have the kids learn about the real President Trump, 2016 to 2020. So that information is right there on your screen, freetrumpbook.com. Well, if you're struggling with back taxes or unfiled taxes and tax returns, don't worry about it. That's where the Tax Network USA professionals come in. Don't let the IRS take advantage of you. With over 14 years of experience, Tax Network USA has saved their clients over $1 billion in back taxes. So no matter the size of your tax issue, they can definitely help you out. This is the season to do so. Contact Tax Network USA. The information's on your screen, 1-800-357-1415, or visit tnusa.com slash rsbn. And also the wellness company, that emergency kit is something else. I'll tell you what, I'm going to have Vanessa talk about it because she's she just got one recently. I did. I have my emergency medical kit at home. You should have one too. Every American should have one. Get your free, uh, not free, emergency medical kit. It is a huge discount today. Type in the word RSBN at checkout on MakeCareGreatAgain.com. That's MakeCareGreatAgain.com. Type in RSBN, you'll receive a discount today. Also, free shipping. This is Dr. Peter McCullough and his team of doctors who put together uh, the wellness company, and they want to just protect Americans, especially after COVID when it was hard to get any medications. And uh, there was, you know, hearsay about this medication and that medication. Well, this one comes with ivermectin, a Z pack, amoxicillin, all the things that will help you if you were to get sick. So contact Dr. Peter McCullough at the Wellness Center. Again, that's MakeCareGreatAgain.com. Type in RSBN, and you will get a discounted code. And also, uh, make, they have they actually have more than just the, the medical emergency kit. There's a lot to choose from on the website, so go check them out. Definitely awesome to have, whether it's in the car or at the house. But we also want to thank uh, one of our great sponsors, a new sponsor here at Right Side Broadcasting Network, a new partner, uh, Prepper Beef. You can get 25% off right away with an RSBN promo code. We know we don't want any kind of, uh, you know, bioengineering or mRNA, you know, injections into any of the meat that we eat, right? So uh, Prepper Beef are your go-to right there. There's President Trump waving to the crowd as he goes on to Trump Force One. But, yes, 
So definitely, uh, you see the information on the screen right there. So let's take a live look here at Trump Force One as we talk about uh, the donation uh, opportunity for Right Side Broadcasting Network as well, rsbnetwork.com slash donate. Obviously, a, a lot going on when it comes to uh, President Trump for events, and if you have a few extra bucks, please throw it uh, our way. Uh, and also, you know, purchase items from the sponsors and use those promo codes RSBN. And then we have got the newsletter, Vanessa. Yes, absolutely. RSBNetwork.com. Sign up for our newsletter. We will uh, definitely keep you posted as we gear up for a busy and crazy. And we're going to be on the road. So come along with us. Sign up for the newsletter on RSBNetwork.com. It's been so good. Be O U S S A R D Matthew. I'm always asked, how do you spell your last name? So I try to spell it. Yeah, A L V A R E Z. Yeah. So at Matthew Alvarez for Truth Social, as we take a live look at Trump Force One as it's refueling here once again the Wright Brothers Arrow. That's the uh, local fixed base operation, which is you know for cor corporate jets and others, as you see here, President Trump's huge uh, jet here. Uh, we're right here at the Dayton International Airport, right off of the major uh, runway over there. So uh, quite the scene here today uh, with thousands of people enjoying uh, just each other's company and then hearing from President Trump for, you know, he went for more than an hour. About an hour and a half. More than an hour. Mm -hmm. when, when even without a teleprompter that was working properly with the high winds and that kind of thing. So as we have Trump Force One behind us, we, you know, we can... You know, talk a little bit more just about uh, Agenda 47 and, and a number of policy issues uh, that he's working to have to come back for, you know, in 2024, less than eight months from the election. Right. And, he, and he hit on a lot of those today when it comes to immigration. Uh, of course, he mentioned Lincoln Riley, the beautiful Georgia student who was murdered by an illegal immigrant a couple of weeks ago. Uh, President Biden still has not mentioned her name correctly. He called her Lincoln Riley at the State of the Union last week. And so uh, President Trump has met with her family. Uh, they were actually at the rally in Georgia last week. Um, so illegal immigration, a uh, huge, and like here we are, in Ohio, and the people here stand on their feet and they yell and they scream and they applaud him. And he talks about sending these illegal immigrants back home to their respective countries on his first day in office. We're in Ohio, the northern part of the country. And so you don't just see the southern states worried about this anymore. Every state is concerned about illegal immigration. And Matthew, when you ask someone, what is the number one concern for you? That's what it is. People are sick and tired of these nine million now, nine million illegal immigrants have come across our border since Biden has taken office. Exactly. A number of issues that we're dealing with, but we know that peace through strength is one of the great ones that President Trump has. But we want to thank you so much for watching here on Right Side Broadcasting Network. If you're watching on Rumble or on the app or on the website or on YouTube, Thank you so much for joining us. It's been a, a fun, wild ride here in Dayton with the wind and buying some hats just before the, the event. But thank you so much. I'm Matthew Alvarez along with Vanessa Broussard. It's so good to see you. We'll let you look at Trump Force One as we close out the show. That'll do it for us here from Dayton, Ohio. Have a good night, America. Uh, Philip Patrick joining us here from the Birch Gold Group. Now, this is where we drill it down. What can they do to ensure that they don't get tangled up in this cobweb uh, of, of tragedy that's ahead and they can secure their financial future? That's what we at Birch Gold Group specialize in, precious metals in climates like this. They work very well to protect against the realities of a Biden economy. These things all drive gold and silver up. So it works as a very effective hedge against the problems we have. And like I said, the realities of Bidenomics. So I would encourage everyone to get educated, start reading. I think it's very simple. We've got to text Trump to 989898. We'll give a free information kit to the viewers. Get educated. And once you see the, the problems, 
the solutions will, will present themselves. Thank you. Philip Patrick, the Birch Gold Group. Thank you, Brian. The honor is mine. Parents and grandparents, the 2024 Kids Guide to President Trump is here, and it's free. As a bonus, your child gets a free issue of Everbright Kids Magazine and Activity Book and a free video lesson. Order now at freetrumpbook.com. That's freetrumpbook.com. What's up, guys? My name is Jaden Hurd, and I have a Christian show called Let It Be Heard, where we analyze culture and current events from a biblical perspective. I highly recommend you guys check us out. We now have episodes every Monday, Wednesday, and Friday. And basically, what happens is we react to videos, we have talking points, we have on guests, and it's very exciting. Come check us out on Rumble on the RSBN channel. God bless you guys. Looks like you've been sleeping well. Megan, he's back. The My Pillow guy. And you're looking good. I'm still feeling good. Well, just when you thought it couldn't get any better, we've got the best pillow ever, My Pillow 2.0. <gasps> when I invented My Pillow, it had everything you'd ever want in a pillow. Well, now there's new technology that makes it even better. My Pillow 2.0 has my patented fill combined with a cooling fabric with temperature regulating thread. My Pillow 2.0 is truly the next generation of My Pillow. Now's the time to go to mypillow.com or call the number on your screen. Use the promo code to save 50% on your My Pillow 2.0. Not only that, for a limited time your entire order ships absolutely free. You're sleeping even better and cooler too. And you're looking good. Feeling good. I knew you would. Mypillow.com. Welcome to the Right Side Broadcasting Network. We're not like the other media outlets out there that cut and edit what other people say. In 2015, we were created by our founder, Joe Seals, to cover President Donald J. Trump's speeches and rallies, to which we continue to do to this day. We've also covered important conservative events like CPAC, TPUSA, March for Life, and many other important events and hearings around the country. We were made for people like you, everyday Americans who are tired of the mainstream media, who are tired of being lied to, manipulated, and fed an agenda. Our goal here at Right Side Broadcasting is to allow you to see the truth, giving our correspondents and commentators a wide latitude to speak their minds. You won't find anything like this in the mainstream media. Your support through your donations, locals, and supporting our advertisers allows us to continue to cover important events around the country each and every day. So, from us here at Right Side Broadcasting, thank you for supporting us and the right side of history.